Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Visk and the 12 Hours of Sebring. We are just getting into the beginnings, or I guess I think we're about halfway through DPI and LMP2 qualifying. And we'll be uh, seeing the GTLM cars. But uh, yeah. I want to thank you for joining with us for this stream. We'll try and get you through the entire 12 hours. At some point, we'll probably have to switch over. And with me, to carry me through this uh, early morning intro, at least if you are in North America, is Kent Ramsey and Tob Tobias Bloomshin. Thanks, you guys, a lot for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me as well. Yeah. Whoa, why is it like that? Alrighty. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I guess the most interesting thing about having both you guys in the booth, I think you guys said the same thing for Tom as well, you all be driving in this race. So uh, what's your uh, 4D insights to driving around Sebring? Um, I'm glad about driving to Sebring. Well, this is actually one of my more favorite tracks on the calendar. I love Sebring. It's a lot of fun. Um, insights to driving the circuit, I just keep, <laughs> it's got a lot of, it's a very, got a lot of combinations of high speed corners and low speed corners, so there's a lot of high speed braking and a lot of, um, so like going from really high speeds down into very slow corners, so yeah, heavy braking is quite a norm here, so there's a lot of good dive bomb places, obviously not recommending it, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also a lot of nice sweepers, so it's quite fun. You've got a good combination of those, which makes it means it's a lot of fun. But uh, just drive it, really. That's my uh, the best I can say. <laughs> Feel that. Um, what classes are you guys going to be in when you're driving? I'm in the 87 LMP2 car for Iris. Okay. You're going to be in that uh, interesting, weird spot between where you got to worry about faster DPIs and uh, GTLMs that will be... Losing you all sorts of time. Yeah. And um, with the new BOP, which actually feels much nicer than the old one, I feel. Well, to my, in my opinion, the cornering is much more nicer to drive, however, I don't really care. Both mm. were nice. Um, it, it means that it's actually harder for us to catch up to them in the straight, which means that it's going to be vital for us to be very close to them on corner exit, which means our acceleration takes us past them instead of our pure top speed, because that's not that's the way we won't be able to get past That's the way we'll have to get past them now. Yeah. That's uh, very true. Very interesting having to drive the custom BOP. <laughs> it, uh, I don't mind it. I quite like it, actually. It's quite, it's very well done, actually, the new uh, BOP. It's quite fun. Um, although the gearing did take a little bit to get used to, it's fine. I don't I don't mind it. Yeah. But, yeah. No, everything's good. The BOP is fine. It's really well done by, um, by the team, so very happy with them. I just realized we actually aren't going to see the GT qualifying. That's happened. We're just on prototype qualifying now. So, let's take a moment then to look who won in GT qualifying. It was Martin Novak, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, hmm. That didn't work. Look at it here, then. That'll do it. There we go. Yeah, it's Martin Novak for Paul Street Boys getting on pole. That's pretty That's pretty impressive. Wow, a bunch of teams you, uh, in TGM, another team we've never seen there, doing quite well. Uh, the HSR, the Hexim Racing, the 360. Then we get to, wow, Fine Avant, who, uh, dominated at Daytona quite far down the order, you imagine they'll have to uh, get some work done to get themselves up to where I imagine where they'd want to be. That's how it goes. 
Max had a good qualifying, actually. P7, that's quite good in the um, GT field. Yeah. The competitive group of cars there. I do believe Hex does have a new driver. <clears throat> Italian driver. Mm -hmm. Seems to be quite quick. Fast Italians. <laughs> they always are fast. <laughs> yeah. Right now the rookie monsters. Whoa! Getting Ooh, held spin. up there. Um, imagine that's the triple nine is a car. I imagine. Wow, the triple nine and the triple six really, I think, are both cars that would like to be further up the order in DPI. Um, it's early doors, though. I mean, I think that's the thing we have to take from this. There's, there's still about ten minutes of qualifying to go, and we all know that all of these cars here have the potential to go quicker. Very true. As Sven Galehoed has solidified that point by going much quicker. Yeah. Uh, everybody, wow, a lot of people on outlaps right now. Oh yeah, they're saving their tire sets because they only have because of the new uh, regulations with the tires. Mmm. Adding a bit of strategy uh, to this. Yeah. Um, to explain quickly, um, what well, they've added. So the team have added um, a regulated amount of tires. So a lot of teams right now are, are only have one set. So it depend. It's a. It depends when you go out. Do you want to go at the beginning, get a lap done quick, like? lap down quickly or do a few laps on your tires or do you want to save them to the end of the session when your tires are at the best performance and you have the most out of them it's it means there's a lot more strategy involved in qualifying and the race in general so yeah no should mean the race is more exciting yeah i'll have to keep an eye on so tires how many strategy. how many sets do they have for the entire 12 hours let me check there I was a announcement i'm pretty sure dpi and lmp2 of 11th or 12 sets around there, and then GTS 10 in that range. Might be off. The thing that uh, messed me up when I read the regulations originally is I read it as, oh, you have 44 sets? Okay, so you basically don't have tire rules. And then it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> that means there's four, you have, it's 44 tires for four wheels. And I was like, oh, that does matter in 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this obviously means if there's one tire that's damaged, you only have to switch one out, so it means it's a bit easier for that, I guess. Yeah. Should make the entire race interesting, though, because we all know at the start, no problems. About the middle, no problems, but at the end, that's where it comes into play. Yeah. That's where all the strategy truly comes down to play. I'm, I'm going to be interested to see if um, some teams are going to go with some triple stints. I, I'd, I'd be interested to see if them. I'm not sure they will, as I don't feel that's the favorable strategy to go here. But I'd be in, I'm interested to see if some will will try it. I yeah. don't know why. Try to keep their tires fresh for the final yeah. run. Mm. I mean, obviously, it means that you have a, slow, a shorter pit stop. However, is it that big of a difference that it matters for none? Right now, uh, Jake Denahan putting the iris to uh, provisional pole. David Yund also improved on that lap, but couldn't quite match Jake Denahan's speed. Here we go, the uh, Frenchie in the 04 Mugen going very wide, taking out all the pullers. That will not, uh, not Yeah, help. That, that's something you have to be very careful about here in Sebring. Don't go too wide that you um, hit the uh, <laughs> that you hit the grasses. That's that's going to lose you a good second. Then if you get off bad enough on a lap time, that's why it's it isn't very rec recommended going on the grass. I mean, obviously, if you are on the grass, control it as quickly as possible, get on the track, and then you won't lose much time in the race. But in qualifying, it'll matter a lot. Yeah. So yeah, not recommended. Not the preferred route. Big lap from Felix uh, Nurberger, the bottling motorsports Orica. It's that car in the third with a 145, 818. We have uh, the top six cars. Well, really, the top seven, eight, nine. Really, the ten of the ten of the LMP2s are are within a second of each other. The top six are within about half a second of each other. So it's going to be very tight up there if that's going to be the uh, pace throughout the race. Over to the triple nine here. Are we expect to be further up the order, as I said? Improved in the first sector. We'll get to see at the timing line here if that carries through to the second. 
for Kashif Iftikhar. I have a feeling the rookie monsters will improve. Have a let's wait and see. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Purple in the second sector. See how far off the order he can take it. Ooh. Yeah. Passing by one of those LMP2s on the back straight here. Now let's see what line he takes through Sunset. This is a corner with about a million different lines for it. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, it depends. Do you want to stay with it on the tighter line? Or do you want to go on it very wide? My, my personal preference is to stay very tight on the beginning and then really go wide at the exit because it's quite an open... It, it opens up a lot at the end, which, is, which I quite like, actually. Sunset's one of the best corners on the circuit. Yeah. So, yeah. So there you go. That is a lap. A 144.027 or 022 it's saying there. Not enough. Not enough to move forward. Um, just to give you more context for how tight it is in DPI, he's within a second of the pole, and that's not enough. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Um... Oliver Erkian, a really strong first sector there. Only 64 thousandths off from the fastest time through there. He's improved. Currently fifth. LMP2 improves yet again in the second sector, a bit more off the pole time, but still improving. I mean, one of the rookie monsters cars is in third with Frith Bradley Sellers in the triple six car. Yeah. So yeah, what, at least one of them's up there. Um, Prime Chief Pico with Damio, Damio Carrasco in P4. Not bad from the Prime team. Not they're looking much stronger than they were last time, that has to be said, though. Yeah. It, uh, Sebring really uh, swaps out the fortunes for some of these teams, it's seeming. Mm. Oh, then again, we'll see what the race pace is like. That's uh, Qualifying in a good position is uh, helpful to avoid any first lap drama, but beyond that, race pace will be E here, so perhaps... Uh, some of the cars that are further down the order are running setups better suited to long stints than... Uh... Mm, that, that's something we have to also um, see. We also have to take into account some cars will be better in the race pay, on race pace than in quality pace. For example, um, a lot of the time when I'm driving and doing qualifying, I'm actually better than the race because I mean, I'm more I'm a more of a consistent driver. That's how that's me self-evaluating. It might not be true. Yeah. So yeah. Um, no, but from my self-evaluation, I think that I'm a better qualifying driver than a better than a race driver, so yeah. But just to point out, Monster Second Sector by Jake Denahan and the Iris. Half a second faster in the second sector. He's going to be putting down a... If he can keep it together, at least through Sunset, we'll see. It looks like he's going to be putting down an absolute blistering lap. And you can see he has a completely different line there. It does not bring it in deep at all at Sunset. Which sort of lets the car go... Through the middle of the corner carries the speed and he does improve 142 822 we're into the 142s and he did yeah, that by being slower in the first and second first that's and third a stomping sector. lap from jake denahan and obviously in the first two sec the first sector is mainly based on having good tire wear so and to be fair no the third sector is also heavy, heavily reliant on the tires it is impressive how quick he went through the um, final sector though so not and the second actually, I forgot most of the time. So, I have to see if anybody can put a challenge to him. Uh, David Yut getting out, try and get another lap in. Amir Karutko. Right now though, Bradley Sellers in the triple six still in the pit, so you got to imagine he's going to be calling it saving tires. Oliver Perkin, uh, getting in a. Blistering lap to put that car into second. Really good lap from the in to the points racing LMP2 car. Glad to see them up the order. Here's a, another person going fast. It's Sven Gielhold in the Iris LMP2 car. Proving in the first sector. Let's see what he can do for the rest of the lap. Yeah, 
he's taking good line through there. That was really well done through that corner. It's a very tough corner, as um, you have to be, you have to get the, the line through there is very sketchy. I feel because you have to take a very, very, you have to go very wide in and then not completely cut in till like right at the end of the corner until you're basically straight through there. That's the thing. Yeah. The corner you just took. He looks really clean on the lines, although there is a bit of traffic now. Fran did go a bit wide there. That that isn't recommended, but still, let's see if he gets. Make up, he make up and lose a lot of time in sunset here. Sunset looks clean. Power nice and early. Yeah, he's currently green in two sectors. Doesn't improve though. He's got one more chance though. Got one more chance. Keep an eye on it and see if he improves on the second go around. Here's David Yunt. Gonna be starting his lap for Epic. See if he can put a dent into Jake Denahan. Perhaps sneak away with Cole here for Epic. And if, is he on a flyer right now? Or not? Depends, I think, about that. No, most likely he will be. On the flyer right now. Here we go. On to quite a few straights at Sebring here. I don't know which one you'd define as the back straight. <laughs> I think the one um, Sunset goes. Yeah, that makes sense. But through the hairpin, nice and tidy. Didn't hear any wheel spin. Yeah, looking clean, taking it nice. Yeah, got a good braking line. Exit was good there. Yeah, that's a very tough corner to exit through, actually. So, yeah. If you get a good exit there, you've got, you're gonna have a good lap, to be honest. That's the yeah. thing that you have to watch out for. Breaking into, yeah, 300 meter mark. Nice. Taking the, cutting in early, taking as much cover as possible, exiting. Yeah, looks very, very clean. And here we go. This is gonna be critical because you can easily ruin the lap going wide here and getting a track cut. There you go, purple in the second sector, only off by a little bit in the first. It's all going to come down to this third sector to see who has pole. And the almond straight into sunset. You can see, he take, even he takes a different line from Danahan. He tights it, tightens it up a lot more. But here we go, race to the line now. 140, 141. And there you go. It's enough for David Yunt. Absolute blistering lap of 142.5. Um, yeah, that's impressive, especially with those old eyes. Yeah. Nobody else is out there. That will be it for qualifying. That's... There you go, folks. As easy as you like it. Epic Racing will take the pole. David Yint on fire. <laughs> Don't know if there's any yeah. other words to describe that. I gotta say, uh, the, the, this is a very competitive league right now. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at the timing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to our pole sitters, David Yunt for the 89 Epic Racing. Sophie Jones from the 38 Prime GP and Martin Novak from the number 753 Paul Street Boys. We'll be moving to warm up shortly. Yeah, that was a good qualifying session actually. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it's properly exciting. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the DPI and the LMP qualifying. Except I am sure you guys could understand. I don't know LMP and DPI, so <laughs> I sat there as if I was in the DMV. <laughs> no worries, um, Ken. I'll I'll take over for you in that in that, um, in that section. Uh, the challenges of uh, talking about high downforce cars. I gotta say, um, I have come to appreciate. I mostly run GTs when I do sim racing now, and I did not fully appreciate how little that prepares you. For running a high downforce car. What? Uh, jumping from a GT to into, into an LMP car? Yeah. I can't drive GT cars. No, no I, I, I actually can't. <laughs> well, no, it depends what cars. I'm not a big fan of the core, the C7. 
Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite car. However, I, I do like mid-engine cars more than front-engine cars. They're easier to drive, in my opinion. It's interesting. I mostly drive front-engine cars, so when I get into, thrown into a mid-engine, I'm like, huh. That might be why I'm... That might be the difference. Yeah. <laughs> that might be why I'm in LMP. But to be fair, I have been getting used to the um, Orica since last year, when I started driving that properly. Mm -hmm. So, I guess it's uh, just... Once... Once I started getting real into my sim racing, I decided on mid-engine cars, just like Tobias. And every GT car I drive is mid-engined. And then I tried to drive the C7 Corvette, mm. which the C7 Corvette is a beast. <laughs> it's a very quick car if you know how to drive it, which I sadly don't. <laughs> if, if, you, if you can drift it. Yeah. A uh, tough game. I don't know. I'm a. Uh... Oh, there we go. We didn't even note that qualifying was at night and the race would be starting in the day, but here we are. Yeah. I guess it adds to the realism. Yeah. I do like the realism on the top. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I. Uh... So, Ken, um, as you usually do GT, don't you? Um, can I ask you a question yes. about that quickly then? So in GT, wh where's your favorite place to be lapped by a prototype car, just so that I know for my stint in the night? So personally, I don't like getting lapped on a uh, on like a corner, because it removes time from both cars. On a straight though, since the car is just much slower than like an LMP2 or a DPI, they can just pass you on the straight like it's nothing, so it's best to pass there. And not create any drama and any penalties to be added on that. Yeah, as an LMP2 car, as an LMP2 driver, I think you know what my um, approach to this is. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> it's dive bomb it wherever you can and within a safe manner. I have dive bombed down hundreds of GT cars in my career, in my uh, sim racing career. But a bit yeah, over. Senna would be proud. I know. Or Daniel Ricciardo. <laughs> as he's, as Just for my... a heads up, ladies and gentlemen. Ty has used him once. Well, not to count towards your total, if you haven't realised. I mean, if you want them to count towards your total, we can happily do so, but they won't count towards your total for now. <laughs> no, um, I, um, I, I, I do like the... Um... I, 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 uh, my, uh, my, my mindset as an LMP2 driver is um, get past a car as fast as possible and... And as a German is to frantically sh swear at anything that slightly annoys you. Because <laughs> I get road then... rage quite quickly. <laughs> That's why in GT you have to drive as if, you know, the other guy won't know what you're going to... Like, they will definitely not know what you're going to do, so you have to drive in a manner that <laughs> they can expect. <laughs> yes, you have yes. To, That's you the have thing. to hold That's... a solid line. That's the thing about GT drivers. Obviously, nearly all the drivers I, I, I come I, I, I come up to are very predictable, which makes it quite easy to interlapping them. But usually if there's like a thing that surprises me, I, I will get a bit frantic. But obviously, it might not even be the, the GT driver's fault. It might just be my fault for going for a riskier move, which the GT driver doesn't expect. The art of lapping is is the LMP2 car has to signal very early on which, which way it's going to go. And the GT driver needs to notice that. It's 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 an art form in my opinion. <laughs> oh, hopefully we'll, we won't see any uh, bad overtakes by LMP2 or DPI on a GTE. I doubt we will. Yeah, right. I guess we'll continue the um, conversation about LMP2 and GT as I'm actually quite enjoying that. So you've driven um, P2, have you, Kent, or have you not? I, uh, I originally started on a LMP, actually, but then I proceeded to uh, try to learn how to drive in multi-class. So I then went to GTs to learn, and now I can't drive an LMP to save my life. <laughs> All right, it's a bit of the opposite with me, because um, I actually was... Um, I actually want this. Visk is the league I started my sim racing career in, uh, thanks to Same knowing Alec. 
Yeah, I, I knew Alex before Visk, so, well, before I knew Visk, but so he introduced me to it. And um, basically, I decided to go in with, like, zero preparation into a, um, into a, um, into a race on, um, here at Sebring, actually, so this is kind of fitting, in a Ferrari GTE car with no setup, and I didn't know how to fill up the, I forgot to fill up the car fully. So, um, <laughs> that was, it was an interesting experience. I decided to retire within the hour. I retired within the hour as it was a joke. Came back two weeks later for mid-Ohio and actually did okay in an LMP2 car. I cannot drive a GT car to save my life anymore. Obviously, I couldn't drive an LMP2 car back then as I spun a lot. But no, I think it's, um, especially with the LMP2 car, it's about getting used to the um, behaviors with the braking. And it, it can feel quite sketchy. So my thing when I started, my first actual league I raced in was actually Visk with one of the worst teams I believe most people remembered Team Falcon? last season. Or uh, just a mathic. <laughs> no comment. Wait, wait. Don't worry, I had to drive I, I drove for just a mathic and my car was banned after getting a fourth place at mid Ohio. It it, so it happened for me I too. I started in the Ferrari GTE at uh, Detroit, uh, that that circuit which most people did not like, as it did not. I did I not. I quite as well. liked it actually. I thought it was quite fun. My, my issue was uh, since I went in there as my first league race, of course I didn't know how to hold the line. So when LMP2 the DPIs would come to overtake me, I'd just instantly get out of the way, being like a like a scared puppy. <laughs> and then as that went on. I would notice, oh god, there's a DPI behind me, I can't brake too, like, too early. So I think, I'd brake really late and I would slam into a wall. I think what made that weekend worse was the rain, which just made the level of cartilage really, really, really high up. I, I just had so much fun with it, because I remember. Mm, god, I, I think I did lock like, up into a car by accident at the end of the race. I, I, I had a fun when the Alex would be like, let's go, we're going green. And then about 20 seconds later, we went to code 80. And then it happened over and over and over, but I ended up uh, having to retire. Mm. Yeah, Which... it's... <laughs> it, that was an interesting weekend. Obviously, it was an enjoyable track and, again, was really well done by the, um, produce, by the um, organizers of that race. But no, I enjoyed that weekend actually. I thought it was a good track to drive. It was a bit. It was fun for a street circuit. You had, you had a little bit of a flow there at least. That was a good thing. Only my thing is, I did not like it because I wasn't a good driver back then. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That then it sucks. Yeah, I think if I drove against my myself back then, I'd probably be at least two seconds quicker. Oh. If not quicker. Um, <laughs> Me against myself last year. I am definitely like at least. Three laps above him. Mm. The guy and also in, was in chat, slow. would you like to tell us about like how much you've improved in the past year of sim racing and how much quicker you'd be than your last year, your last year's variant? I think that's quite a good question to talk. That's quite a good question, actually, chat. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, it just shows how much you can improve in a year, especially if you're consistently doing races. You know, it also matters if you actually, you know, if you actually decide to get yourself better and not you know just go on to like forza <laughs> and just try yeah i mean no i think you can go on like forza horizon and just do a bit of chilling but i mean i think the thing with sim racing is that you have to be persistent and try and finish every race you can even though there might not be a point you have to finish them because that's the only way you're going to get last. experienced yeah exactly that's the thing don't give up Continuing to my, my current whole thing with uh, sim racing is to be consistent. I don't care whether I do bad or do good. I just try to, you know, make the same time all faster, try to keep the time. But as long as you're consistent, then you can win a race. You don't have to be uber fast because the faster guys pushing will make a mistake. Well, if you're consistent, you won't end up making a mistake. Please also remember that drivers in the prototype category will be allowed to leave the grid upon my instructions. 
This is for everyone. Drivers will leave the grid under my instruction. Ensure you listen to my instruction, otherwise you'll be smitten with a penalty. Thank you. So, I'm not really, uh, you know, up to speed on all these teams in VISC, but uh, who do you think will uh, be winning in DPI, LMP2 and GTE? Uh, okay, um, I, I'm going to just keep myself out of the prototypes as I have a clear bias towards okay. Team Iris, and I, well, they're on null class, so I'm just going to keep myself out of this. <laughs> I apologize for that, but um, I, I think I'll... Moving to the race session. I'll most likely. That's the one thing I don't like listening to before the race starts. Is who you think, uh, like... No, the... no, no, the, 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 the radio man saying, all drivers oh, leave the grid now, yeah. Kishon, in the 75 Georgia, you will be allowed to overtake the GT field for formation lap. You will be starting at the back of your grid, though. So that's hope this, the uh... M9 will be allowed to overtake the 38 on the formation lap. Both are the only provisos. You have 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. 30 seconds. 30 seconds till we get on the grid and then the formation lap starts. Should be interesting. Oh, for sure. Hopefully it is not like Daytona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be fine. I just remember the uh, run into turn one isn't isn't as heavy braking. It's quite a high speed turn one. Obviously that means dirty LB thing will be a thing, and there will be cars running wide. But I think we should be fine. Oh, but I do love looking down the the row of cars. Yeah. Prototypes begin formation lap. Prototype begin formation lap. Please utilize and the, the prototypes are going on to their formation. Please. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can quickly try and give you a run down the grid. Of... Keshawn, you are allowed to overtake the GT field. Go to the right-hand side of them for me, mate. I'll try and give you so a... Catch um, up with dead engage pit limiter. ...rundown of the prototype field. So in P1, for the Epic, Epic RSR team, we got David Yunt in the 89 car. GT's beginning in formation P lap. Single file pit limiter, please. Single okay, file one second. I'm, I'm going to restart that. <laughs> in P2, for the number seven, we got the team Iris. Uh, no, 07 with Jake Devonahan. In P3, the number four mutant with, driven by Tsonga Ferenczi. P4, the triple six um, rookie monster car with Bradley Sellers. In P5, we've got the number 69 Prime GP driven by Dami Karatko. P6, number 150 Hexim Racing driven by Alex Moore. Number 114, number S James Like starts in P7. In P8, we've got Kashif if Iftikar for the triple nine team rookie monster car. Uh, P9, David Caprizzi in the 160 Hex Sim Racing car. And in 10th and final position of the DPI cars is Bruno Sousa Ferreira in the number nine Epic Racing car. Onto the LMP2 field. Murphy Jones in the 38 Prime GP car leads that in number P2. Into the, the 46, into the point racing, Oliver Perkin. Very good qualifying from him. Starts P2. P3. Felix Neuberger for the 28 Bottling Motorsports car. Then in P4, we got the, the 77 Iris car, driven by Sven Gelhoed. P5, Akos Forgax, 66 Iris car. P6, Arda Erchan, 47 into the points racing car. P7, Fabian Ballet, 72 Reading Game Stadiums racing. P8, Heist Donnefeld in the number 11 Valet VMS San Edits Racing. P9 is Benz Horvath in the 87 Team Iris car. And in P10, we've got Andrew Halom in the 52 RLR Britsy car. And Dan Hutz is in P11 for the 06 Valet VMS San Edits Racing car. Eric Kudeme, Kumade is in for the number 17 car is in p12 and finally on the grid we've got Keshen hall in the 75 grg esports car now into the gt cars martin novak for the no, 100 number 753 psb car pole position very good from them very well done in the posture arta Shish, shishkula for t2 
TGM Simsport, 96, P2. Mia Rose, 777, Team Iris car with the Corvette. P4, which is the number 90 Global Endurance Racing Ferrari 488, 488 GTE, driven by Ben Corbin. 97, driven by Carl Newis. That is a TGM. That is a TGM Simsport car, driven by, yeah, sorry, which is a Ferrari. Jacques Vermeulen for 429 Logistical Nightmare by HSR. That's allowed to release pit limiters to close up the cars. Um, P6, we'll be going through the rest really quickly as the grid is starting soon. Alexan Alessandro per I apologize. Perducci. Perducci, thank you, for the 170 Hex Sim Racing car. P7, P8, we've got Keith Hemsoff, 360 Mode for Sports hash number 30. Holman, right hand side. Um, 445 Fina Vond in P9, very poor qualifying as mentioned early. P10, the 59 Prime GP dream driven by Chris Davis and in final place due to a disqualified equation from qualifying due to a, an incident in practice GP, please, driven by 75 on the is line. the 754 Paul Streets Boys by driven by Richard Chismania. As we get ready for the green flag, sorry it was very, this is very abrupt, the abrupt start. Here we go, Bye. then. DPI green flag. Here we go. DPI green flag. Here we go. Already looking to the inside is the Mugen. They're four or five wide down the front straight into turn number one. And man, oh, so David Yunt is all the way down to fourth already after just one corner. Iris in the lead. There we go. Big lockups. But there we go. All clean through the first few corners. Let's look back down to the LMP2s. Kofi Jones leading them. They're looking all clean, though. But here goes the GTs. Good jump from Martin Novak. Got the Iris just behind. Battle in fourth there. There's the gem car. Loses out, though, in that Ferrari. Wow, great work from everybody involved throughout the grid. Not... I am. Good job, everyone. No damage. Yeah, Jake Denahan got a flying start out there in, in the DPI field. Really got good ahead of that, didn't he? Sophie Jones under a little bit of pressure from Oliver Perikian. Sven Galehood got a position up on the bottling car from Felix Neuberger. Yeah. I think the most surprising thing in that opening lap, though, was how Gunter got absolutely murked. You have to do some fighting to get back to where he started. But a lot of reasons. Uh, well, that was to fight, so I believe he could do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, contact! Oh, Those are the two contact. leaders in GT. Paul Street and the Iris. I'll slide them quite a bit down the order. Oh, yes. Let's put Mia Rose down to P7 and Martin Novak down to P8. Not the best of starts for that. those cars, is it? A little bit clumsy a move there. From the iris but as all starts go you have to be aggressive try to get a position early before yeah. everybody starts you know going apart making it difficult mm -hmm. it would not um it wouldn't surprise me if one of the two teams launched a complaint let's see what the two stewards decide however it is really early doors it won't make much of a difference they're still right behind every car they just obviously also at a track position right now Sophie Jones, though, starting to really pull away from Oliver Perkin in the 46 and the points. He's not getting away from Sven Gaylahod. Is he? Not really. Yeah, Sven really staying to the back of that car. See another take soon. Those battles early on here in LMP2. Already see, though, Big Denahan already starting to put a bit of a lead. At least him and Sellers are. Yeah, him and Sellers really are starting to pull away from Tonga Ferenczi for the number four Mugen car. So here we are through, I believe that's Cunningham into Collier we're going into here. Nope, I am wrong. I'm very wrong. <laughs> I'm thinking of another part of the track. This is into uh, turn, 50, uh, turn 15, 16 complex, which is called Le Mans. Then we the have to be straight. There you go. And now we're going to Sunset. Jake Danahan, oh, really, really loose up there. However, it has, gained a, has got a second now on Bradley Sellers. That's very good to see for the Team Iris car, isn't it? 
there's uh, important moments at the beginning of the race, because as you said, I, there's a danger of people being aggressive, like we saw with Jones. Um, so if you're in the lead, you just want to try and build those gaps. Mm. Avoid any drama. Another person. Another close battle here between uh, Yunt and Ferenci. Ferenci was a little bit better, though, in the tight and twisty parts of Collier and out of Tower. But here we go. With a hairpin. I'm sorry, that was... Uh, man. I, this track map, the uh, orientation of it is completely confusing <laughs> to me. I'm so lost when I look at it. And Sven Gerhard still really close to um, Oliver Perikin. That could be a really good battle coming onto the into the um, into more of a state in, later into the stints. Yeah. Let's wait and see. Not looking like shaping like up to do a move yet. However, looking maybe later in the stint he might want to. Oh, Perikin goes a bit wider there. That Sven has really catched up to him now, hasn't he? Yeah. See what your favorite battle of the race is already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As all of them go a little bit wide there. Yep. Not the most favorite thing. As Oliver Perikian nearly looks at it. Oh my word. Oliver Perikian going into the com into this complex here. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, <laughs> it's just, was uh, thinking of it. It's the Le Mans they're out of right now onto the Almond Straight, which is leading to Sunset. This is the one part of the track I'm not lost in, apparently. There you go. They're all <laughs> going defensive all the way down to the white line. The slipstream trains, which you usually see at date, which, are, which is quite famous at, at ovals, isn't it? You can see the different lines they're all taking, can't you? Oliver Perikian really putting a lot of pressure onto Sophie Jones. Sophie Jones. Will he try move soon? Obviously a bit far, far away from here. No, it isn't. Looks, thinks of it, doesn't think of it, doesn't do it. However, he has had a good exit there. Will he try move down the inside, shaping up for it? Not trying it yet. Obviously, now Sophie Jones on to a lot of pressure due to this. Yeah, turn three, four, five, it's really hard, but this is the one you have to get right. Turn five on the big bend towards the hairpin. That is a very important point. It looks like Sophie got it right this time. Yeah. But again, going really defensive. This is one of the corners where you can actually dive bomb it quite easily. That's the thing. Gotta make sure you don't hit anyone in the process, so that's the hard yeah. part. I mean, a bit of rubbing is fine, but not too much that the other car gets spun out, I feel. Here we go. Now towards Cunningham. That's this corner. There we go. <laughs> this is Collier. And we're slowly learning this track. Yeah, this is how I'm going to learn all the corners from um, you, Christian. <laughs> Jones just missing some of the apexes here, but... Although, I think missing the apex there isn't the end of the world. It's one of the corners where you can have Sven Gailhood really close now. Will he try move down going into oh, here? Into Le Mans. Oh. Such a hard part. This is important, though, to get a good run here. Yeah, through Le Mans. Yeah. I have gotten that correct indeed now. Let's go. There you go. So a much Again. better run by uh, Erkian to get through uh, Le Mans there. Sort of spread out. I say Jones, that. Jones, not... Ooh, was there contact there? It was. It was slight enough that it didn't really seem to affect either of them. Man. I don't think we've had LMP2 provide the main battle in a very long time. Yeah. However, it is a good battle right now. Just quickly take Pur a look at this. This is the battle for the overall lead going on. Uh, traffic just getting into the way of these cars. Yeah, but the, but the HSR, the HSR, the rookie monster. I think in so. Yeah. Oh. The HSR logistical nightmare car. I, I love that name, HSR. <laughs> I, uh, I highly respect you for choosing that name. <laughs> well done. I, I love that name. As the PSB cars being overtaken quickly. Yep. Jake Danahan got him in a very good position. That's really tough. <laughs> yeah. For the look. Oh god, that that's a really unfortunate thing when you when you're not just not there and you have to get a, the uh, GT cars mid apex that's tough for an LMP car it's not bad for a GT cars you can just take your normal lines but for an LMP for a prototype car it's really tough as we can see it here it happens to Jake Danahan with the hex car you have to be really careful in overtaking them that you don't accidentally swipe them there in fact, I think there's a battle for the lead between Mia Rose yeah Mia Rose getting that iris around the TGM Ferrari 
into sunsets. Well done. Well, good move. TGM looking, trying to counter, but not doing it. Miro's in the lead now. However, then Ben Corbin's also looking like he might want to get past the TGM Ferrari there. As Jake Denahan has is overtaking all three of the Miro's. Saying hi to their teammate, I have a feeling. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh. Nice effort there, getting into the dirt. Fortunate enough not to lose it. Bit of a lockup from Carl Lewis. Oh god, this is really bad for um, Bradley Sellers. This is the worst part for you to have an LMP, a GT car ahead of you, if yeah. you're an LMP. And there's a lot of time in the twisty stuff. Yeah. As looking at the lead battle, it is quite a quite and down a bit. Yep. Easy and defensive there for Carl Newis. We'll keep Ben Corbin behind him for now. And already dealing with traffic 10 minutes into this contest. Oh, and now now the um, P2 cars all come up to the, um, to the GT traffic, which... <laughs> this is where the moves are going to be made. This is where they're usually made due to the... Um, LMP2 cars are either being bunched up or being spread apart. It, it can either make a battle or break a battle. Oh, the lappings. Uh, but we are coming up to the back of the grid with the 754 car, I think that is. Yes. Here of. Oof. Bit of drama there. Oh, oh Oliver no, Parikian. that's the RSR. Oh. Oliver Pericky. Wait, what? What happened there? What happened? <laughs> Our SAR car getting hunted around. Let's see if we can uh, check some uh. things here. Oh, oh the, the RSR car got spun into the leader of GT. Oof. The Rose doesn't have any damage from me. Corvette's looking okay. Oh, there's a car spun in the background on the exit of Sunset. Who oh, that was? Blue, blue engine LMP2. I have a feeling it was it was a blue one. I'm not sure what the team was. Oh, it's Andre, Andre Eric Chan. And Eric, and who's got, and Fabian Bally. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's in the background. <laughs> That's... Take a moment, see if we get a re. I apologize about that. Ad Arda Erchan has, yeah, he lost at Exodus Sunset. That's a huge amount of damage. I have a feeling the uh, the reading game was a bit unsighted and has gone into him. That's unfortunate for the car. For the 47 into the points, bit of a mixed race as Oliver Perikin has gotten into the lead of LMP2 off of Sophie Jones. Yeah, oh, Oliver Perkin really risking it there, getting past as quickly as possible. Oh, Sophie Jones get, hits, the, um, has, hits the, the GT car and has lost another position to Sven Gelhoed. Uh, but I call bad timing on it. Right? I'm very sore, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm reporting on LMP2 right now. We have our radio men. Oof. And that caught Oof. up a bunch of cars. I didn't Oof. see that. As Sven Gelhoed going round the outside of, trying it round the outside of Sunset. There is. Get back to that. Ooh, he's trying it round the outside. Has he done it? They're side by side through the corner. It depends if he gets a good run. GT could interfere. Is he still side by side? Just enough of a crossover, maybe. Yeah. He's just no. <laughs> Lost it. Yeah, barely did. As I think that is Sophie Jones might be losing another position. No, barely not. Good. This is the. I think he went wide on one of those corners. I think he's. But he's giving us live commentary in the background. <laughs> I apologize about that. That That's is funny. the Formula One, so I'll be a bit quiet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as we continue, um, I'm gonna have to speak over that, I guess. Um, going into the hairpin, I, I don't know the corners again. I'm just gonna call that. That is just the hairpin. Just. They're just called turns. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, wait, it's called Hairpin Turn, isn't it, or something? This is yeah, Fangio, is what follows, and then they're into Cunningham. Don't worry, I'm completely cheating, I have the track now. <laughs> yeah, as we can see, Sven Gellhardt really looking racy behind the, um, behind the 46 into the points racing car, isn't he? A really good run, though, out of uh, Cunningham, out of Tower, sorry. Yeah, he really is getting a good run, and he's, he's looking into Le Mans. That's a risky move. That means, though, that the 46 car gets a bad run. This might mean going into sunset that Sven Gellhardt might get it a bit, because... Critically, the number 46 gets a better run onto Holman <coughs> straight. We got some traffic coming up there. We'll see how that plays into this. Mm. Oh! Very different lines into this corner. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's taking a more tighter line, which I actually prefer, so, and I also took that. Spina Von Car, not having the best of runs. However, this. Ooh, this isn't looking good for the Irish cars. This could hold them up a bit. Yep. Follow that fine Avant. Oh no, he's tried it around the outside. Oh, he's gone off. And he's lost the position in the process. Yeah. Sophie Jones gets him to the inside. Big lockup, though. Holds it together, though, and that's up to second for the Prime GP LMP2. Hmm. LMP2 really doing a good battle here, isn't it? Yeah. However, Sven Gelhard right there. Will he try and move around the outside of the hairpin? That's... Yeah, they try it. Ooh. Tried it, but that's going to put him in danger now of the uh, leading Ligier. The Bothlane car. That's not... Uh, wait, is that... It is a Ligier. Ligier. Yeah. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm no, wrong. That's... that's an orc. I thought that was a Ligier from how I saw it at first. I was like, wow, somebody's riding a Ligier? <laughs> Good on you! No. So, uh, I do have a question about the Ligier. Um, so, is it just nobody's driving it? Pretty much. I, I think it's a setup, uh, the amount of setups that are there for the Oreca that just make a lot of more people use this car. Somebody's pitting right now. That's the uh, that's Denahan. That's very early for Denahan to be pitting. He must have hit something or been involved with somebody. Yeah, that is see. early for Jake Denahan. Let's see how long the pit stop is. That's the question. Big locker from the Paul Street Boys Porsche, and that's going to hold up the end. He might have flat spotted them quite bad. He might have flat spotted the tires quite badly, and that had to go in. That's the only thing I can think of. And that Paul Street but Boys is... Porsche really holding up you in through the uh, first sector. Andrew Halom hasn't had a very uh, good time. The same with Fabian Ballet and, and Arda Urchin. Yeah, I got to imagine they were caught up in something fairly big early on. There we go. Moved by Gilhold to get past. Number 28. Ooh. Ooh, that's just some good hard racing there. And that's going to yeah. put his teammate in a position now to capitalize. Yeah, the 66 car. Yeah, as bottling does go a bit wide through there. That's not something you want to do. This is where will the number 66 be driven by Arcos Forgax. Try it down here. Will he do a bit of a dive bomb? No, he won't. Thinks better of it. Yeah, smart idea, to be honest. But now the Iris is going to try get getting past the... Um, the Prime GP car again, which he annoyingly lost the position to. Yep. Annoyingly for him. Close battle in LMP2, though. It's actually surprising yeah. LMP2 is so close, and GTLM is getting quite spread out right now. Mm. Um, quite a reversal from last year. I think, they, uh, I think the incidents, though, have really hurt GTLM, and it's funny, it's not even entirely their fault, it's mostly the... Uh, Perils of multi-class racing that caught him. Yeah. The TLM's out. Ooh. Big slide. <laughs> Holds it together, though. Yeah. Sven Gerlhard is pulling a bit away from the air car behind him. Going up for the battle against the Prime GP car. Here we are. 20 minutes in the race, and you can still see all top six of the LMP2 cars together in one shot. That's pretty impressive. This is one of the best fights I've seen in uh, LMP cars in a while. Mm. Yeah. yeah, sorry, apologies for that. I just thought I saw um, one of the, um, the Prime GP car nearly going to the wall there, going in on the exit of the sunset. Feeling us with fear, man. <laughs> J 
Jake Denahan is out of the pits for anyone interested. What Whoa, side by side there. That was the, uh, Via the Val VMS Sun edits trying to get a move done on the Iris to get into the top five. Couldn't make it stick, though. You gotta wonder if it might have been better to wait for an opportunity into the hairpin, because it's so hard to do anything uh, with that opening sort of uh, sector of the track. Three, four, and five. <sighs> yeah, as we continue, I mean, slowly they'll get more bits spread out, but however, towards the end of the race, we'll still have, we'll have a few moves. Um, there's still a lot of battling going on in the field, isn't there? Yeah. Here's one of them. Denahan trying to get himself back onto the timing board, at least. That has to get around the Revolution Sim Racing 114, though, to make it happen. Thinks better of it into Sunset, though. See yeah, just how bumpy it is. Our Factor 2 having a pretty recent laser scan of this track. I think it's only a year or two old. And really I think they out. even modified it recently, yeah. even re more recently. Yeah, the surface here is so rough, and you can see how it's bouncing these LMP2 cars around. Well, I'm going to quickly find out how um, how old this, uh, how when it was. Um... Yeah, I think it was done in like. Three. Yeah, yeah. To read through all this, this check all the Studio C's 397 tweets. Yeah. Man. James Light doing a good job to hold up this iris, though. It's a pretty impressive drive. Um, just being fast in the parts of the track he needs to be fast in. One of the things that makes these uh, DPIs so difficult, especially here, is that the surface is so rough, so you really need to actually get the suspension right. You don't avoid, so you avoid the car bottoming out and you losing a bunch of downforce. And probably a big part of the reason you guys were saying earlier people are running the Orca instead of the Ligiers. Probably have setups for the Orca to make it work here. The Ligier probably not so much. Then again, all over <laughs> the 114. This is the part where you have to make it work though. See if James Light goes defensive. Doesn't really. Go side by side down the Almond Straight. That will be job done for the Iris. They pass by the 360 Ferrari. Carry on. Ben Han in a bit of a recovery drive right now. But he's back onto the scoreboard. Three seconds up the road. He's probably saying, just keep going, man. Go get him. As this goes on, the battle continues in LMP2. Across Forgax. Slowly beginning I'm to sorry, lose. I almost thought that was a, I almost thought that was a Toyota. <laughs> yeah, they do have a bit of a Toyota. They certainly have the color scheme, at least. They have the TS050 color scheme. Yeah. Man, I'm surprised the WEC season is already over. It felt so fast. <laughs> Obviously ended with a very controversial, had a very yeah, controversial look. ending in GT. Yeah, I mean, for Porsche and Ferrari. Balance of performance, man. All right, um, it actually is later than I thought it was. It is so, it is so far long ago. It is longer than I thought it was. So <laughs> long, in fact, that I can't be bothered. I have gone to the top of the Studio 397 tweet chat. <laughs> <laughs> no. We'll just say it is uh, quite old. Yeah. Still very, very well wait late. It's a very good scan though. Yeah. It means you can feel all the bumps and fly even more. Uh, basically the best R Factor 2 track, I think, in terms of the quality of it. Shows you what could be done with this Mon engine. I haven't, no, had, I, I, haven't, I haven't tried Monza, that's true. I actually haven't tried it. All the tracks, I think, that have been recently added have been really good, actually. Yeah. Oh, was, Spa's a good addition. Silverstone's good on this game, I have to say. That got a revamp also quite recently, that's to be said. That, mm -hmm. that track feels amazing to drive. 
Ooh. Um, really, really, really wide there by Sophie Jones. She saves it, though, but now Sven Gilhold can be side by side with her down the front straight across the line. Sophie Jones does have the inside line on the Prime GP. Sven Gilhold trying it around the outside. Has he done it? That just. Was, he's just, just a little. Now we get to GT cars, though, yeah. and Sophie Jones is being held up in the worst position possible for a prototype car. Oraldo is trying it, however, yeah, that was inevitable. Yeah. Nobody died, yeah. though. Yeah, well done. As this is happening, uh, number 46 got behind some GT traffic as well. That's a very battered and beaten Prime GP Aston Martin. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> it's very battered. <laughs> Oof. I'm going into Cunningham. Sophie Jones forced to go wide to get around the hex Aston Martin. Yeah. They got, got past, both got past really quickly. Now they continue. Giving Sophie Jones some breathing room though, critically for her. Go through Le Mans. Ooh, now it isn't too much. That is not a big gap for Sophie Jones. Oh. As Sven Gerhard really trying to find a way past her. Going around the outside of Sunset again. That's a, that's a move he's genuinely, generally trying a lot recently, isn't he? Going down the inside. Does he, has, he has to get the better run. He can't go to the outside again. Sophie Jones is going to try and... Sophie Jones again, blocking the inside. The track. Whoa, big, big slide there. Holds it together, though, man. Driving on the edge here. This might be a 12 hour race, but they're fighting like it's uh They're fighting like it's a 30 minute race. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but that's what we want to see, don't we? Yeah. Uh, Sophie Jones really getting slowed down by the PSB car. So is Van Gelhoud, though. Yeah, critically, she got a good run, though. Yeah, the both of band. them did. Both of them did. However, so if you just did go, go, go it, just through Big Ben. I, I love the naming of Big Ben. <laughs> it's straight and to the point. It means I don't know, you don't, it's what I'd call a corner. Yeah. I guess there's a long corner with, which is quite easy to take. What should I call it? Big Bend. Oh, penalty for Capruzzi. That's a, uh, the 160 DPI. I wonder if he's getting in trouble now for going through the, uh, opening. Bent. Penalties. Yeah, avoidable Ooh. contact. Oh, there you Sophie go. Sophie Jones gets slowed down, and uh, the Iris GT has ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. nearly ooh. boxed in there, but manages to get out. Yeah, well done. Yeah, the I Iris State making Iris doing really well, obviously. Ooh, yeah, they're not getting close. the GTs in the best positions. Oliver Perikin is sort of getting a word away with this as Sven Gelhoed is looking to be side by side. This is really bad for Sophie Jones now as he is basically there. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Man, that TGM Simsport Ferrari almost <laughs> caused something dramatic. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling the uh, Prime GP car is running a bit less, like, is running a bit less downforce as they've got much better top speed than the, um, than the Team Iris, which you can see. Yeah. And that's sort of the interesting uh, balance you have to make in these races, is you want the cars that are a little bit slower, perhaps even over a lap, but you'll make up your time in places that really help you, like on the straights, so you can get through traffic more easily, uh, you can get overtakes done more easily when you have to get them done, or do you want a car that's good over a stint because it has a lot more downforce? It's a uh, balance It's, it's a fine line. Because obviously too much downforce will make you get in the corners but slow in the straights, but too little will make you rubbish in the corners and really slow. I'd rather have too much downforce than too little, to be honest. I just like going quicker through the corners. Yeah. I understand that. <laughs> was it... Was Mia Rose leading in GTLM? Yeah, she was. Something happened. I'm not sure, oh, though. She's down to fourth. 
I think that, that might have been a bit of contact with the DPI, as again, Sven Gerlhard through that corner is much quicker than most of his competitors, isn't he? He is. It's held up, though, by the Gem Ferrari. Not really. Still got a good line. Yeah. Here he goes. And yellow is sector one still. I'm wondering if something dramatic is going on. That's happening. He arose. Trying to get back into positions. Looked like they were closer when I looked earlier. Hopefully it's just on the back of that Ferrari, though. Also, chat, um... Chat, what do you think of the race so far? Going for that user engagement. I like it. See, Mia Rose ass. going to the inside into Sunset. Gets it done. She's back up to third. Move from her in the Corvettes. C7. Proudly trooping on. Um, we've got a bit of Team Espionage. Well, Andy, Andy Tomlinson has given us a bit of um, spicy information. Prime GP cars do have minimum wings. Huh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you had it here first. Uh. <laughs> well, not much you can do with that information now for the other teams. We're a little bit, uh, it's a little bit too late to change the setup. <laughs> I know it's a little bit too late, but it, it it can show where the other cars are. That is very true. I also think something happened to the triple nine, because I remember them being haven't gotten further up the order than they currently are. Here's also, um, one of the drivers is asking where Producci is. Um, he got a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> the battle here between uh, Capruzzi, Jake Denahan. I think Jake Denahan go. Oh, nope, we're going through our first round of pit stops in DPI, I guess, if that's what's going on. Never happen. mind. Um, Emily Camel. Emily Callison sent a joke um, set up to Andy Tomlinson, where it was basically probably just a top speed setup. Yeah. So yeah, um, never mind. That was a bunch of um, hoggle boggle. <laughs> That's <laughs> that was an interesting <laughs> word. By the way, if any of the drivers who aren't driving right now want to go to an interview, I'd be happy to interview them. Um, We're hiding in the, the Gem LMP1 chat. The yeah. Of the team speak. <laughs> Andy, uh -huh. um, I've, I've got a question. Um, do you, are you also running minimal wings and top speed? Could you, if you are, could you please tell us what top speed you, you're reaching at the straight with that sets up that Emily Cass has sent you? <laughs> <laughs> As it seems very interesting. <laughs> I love commentating endurance racing. <laughs> I think my current favourite is how we're all commentating from inside LMP1 cars, technically. Yeah, it's our. We all have our own. We have our private little. Um, we've been looked out of the <laughs> looked yeah. out of the broadcasting booth. Yeah, we've we're got our LMP1. own private Audi LMP1 car that we're all just excited. yeah, chilling. We're secret agents of iRacing. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a battle. Yeah, yeah sure. Um... <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll test it tomorrow, Emily. Go for the move, Mia Rose, trying to get that car back into second. Gets it done. Looks like. Does no! Oh. oh my goodness, she saved it. <laughs> From <laughs> yeah, we lost it there. Absolute scenes out of the hairpin there. Oh, I was. Convinced that car was into the wall. <laughs> That's the blood pumping. <laughs> Let, let's. I, I haven't seen it, so I'm just gonna quickly watch it on the um, on the stream. So mine's a bit later. <laughs> so here's an interesting you hear the, thing. The start of the pain in his voice. <laughs> here's a thing that's interesting to note. If you're pitting already in the DPIs. We're only half an hour into this race. So you're not only going to need to double stint, you're going to need to triple stint, I think, twice? Certainly at least once. The current tire Aggressive uh, fighting, like I said before. As the chat it, is... Let me start. quickly check the uh, penalties. As supposedly there is a... One of, of the 49 got a penalty. Should we read the penalties out for a little bit? Oh yeah, go for so, it. Um, the... S number 0787777 
and the number 30. Oh, Miro's had a drive through. Oh, um, that'll do it. Start infringements. 753, car 57, drive through penalty to 753. Incident between the 004 and the 170 versus car, car versus 7, 170, no further action. The 160 got a drive through. Um. Car 754 um, racing incident between the 754 tr triple seven. I can agree with that. Car 170. They got a drive through. Um, car 59 has gotten a drive through, and that is it. And also, he's on the fly with Tobias Blumshine, people. <laughs> Doing the Lord's work. Yes, um, Massey, we would love a, a, a driver, like a, um, a Visc Bingo. Um, I think we had one beforehand, but um, no, I'd love a Visc Bingo. I'd play. We've actually been, uh, we've, actually uh, we've actually avoided the uh, disappointed Alex Skinner code 80 in 10 seconds thus far. But, yeah, the driver's been do doing very well. Whoa, Demir Karutko's got a DNF. Did they have a disconnect? Oh my word. Has the leading car. Oh my. I'm gonna watch that quickly then. Um, as I've got the power of replays. Let us know if it was a dramatic accident or if it was just a matter of a disconnect. Hopefully they can I'm get sure. back into this if it's a disconnect. Okay, so I'm looking for a minute behind. Everything looks fine. It almost like we'd be the a... inside of Carl Newis. Just going to do it into sunset, it looks like. Gets it done. We'll see if Newis can get that Ferrari back around, maybe on a cutback. Doesn't look like it. I think Mia Rose is going to have a better run. That will potentially do it. Yeah, he's just really moving to sunset. That's all you can say about it. Battle seems to have also been going on forever between a. Uh... Is this also a Prime GP and an Iris? Yeah, Prime GP and Iris. Just His engine there. shut off. He's had an engine failure. Wow. That is painful. Did he like? Did he short. I, I'm not sure if he accidentally short shifted or not, but from watching back the tapes, yeah, he's he's had a, an engine failure. That has to Oof. hurt from the lead. Only half yeah. an hour into the race. That's really unfortunate for those cars. I'm not, that, that's, that's what I can suspect, that's the most I can, uh, get. I had an accent, we'll double downshift. I don't know if, uh, this game has, like, freak accidents, so... Oh, big accident, oh, it's, oof, massive else. off, that's, uh, David Yunt. Was that David, David? Yunt who was off? No. Was it? I thought I saw them lose a wing, maybe it was just a splitter on the floor? I'm not sure. It is, I think it is Bruno Sosa Ferreira. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there is a code ID. Oh, I did not hear that whisper. Oh, I guess it's because we're not in the uh, yeah. proper channel. Just straight. Real cool. Take that moment then to look at the replay. It was David Cap Davide Capruzzi also involved. I'm also going to rewatch it, as I am a person who needs to rewatch every incident. You are an insider. Yeah. Oh, nope, um, Davide Caprizzi nearly went into the 87 Iris car and spun into the wall. Not the best thing to say. And he had just pit, that's... Yeah, I'm just looking. Uh, should you say it was? Uh, it looks like it Whoa, was... that was weird. Ferreira... Yeah, it was Sosa, Sousa Ferreira. Uh, go back there for a second, that was very odd. So you just come out of the pits for Bruno Sousa. So, 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 Did so. he just light up some cold tires, maybe? It, it probably was a cold tire. Okay, I have a feeling I think I know what happened. He probably tried getting flat on the exit of the pit lane, which is not something you should be doing. Yeah. Oh, no, he gets hit. He does get hit. Oh, he got hit. Yeah, he got uh -huh. hit. Oh, by the Prime GP car. Yep. Ooh, I'm not... Ooh, that's not going to be a penalty for the Prime GP car, as it was just taking his line. However, 
Ooh, that could be an uns. Unsafe, I don't know. Like, rejoin there, something like. That? I am I'm so like, happy I'm uh, not up. I'm not. I'm not sure who to give the penalty, and it's probably a good thing because I don't know, and I'm not a steward, luckily. So. Hang on. Was it a prime or was it the Moogin that did it? It was the prime GP car that he hit on exit of the pit, of the pit lane. Okay. Um... Oh, it is? My, who am I looking for in this? It, Sophie Jones. It was Sophie Jones that he hit on exit. Oh, it was an LMP2. That's why I'm getting yeah. wrong in this. Yeah, Sophie Jones coming up the track. Yeah, that's just... I, I don't think Sophie can get much blame. She was just taking her line there. And th that's my opinion. Tough, though, because there's not much, because it's like that was the exit for the pits, too. But she also didn't cross the white line. I guess all you can ask for is... All you can say is there should have been some awareness, maybe, but... Yeah. Um, or a chat. better line. Let's, give, let's hear your opinions on this. Yeah. Better line for the pit exit would be better. Yeah, that's a track complaint, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they, I, I, you know, if I complain, they're, they're I mean, just... you can see that um, Sven Gerlhard is taking a bit of a. I don't know. I'm not, I don't think I can, we can give Sophie the complete. But wait, was she running? Was she run? I think the big question is, was she running wide before hitting that? That will mass. That will make. That will uh, make. If there's I mean, if there's a penalty, was she going to run wide in that corner? Yeah. Because if she was originally going to run wide, then I think that that could be a penalty. Potentially, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. The, the uh, F1 uh, arm I sound. And I, was, and I was waiting for, like, comms from inside of the Prime GP team. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't know we had this feature. <laughs> uh, we don't. Um, it's tough. Drivers briefing, drivers were warned about cars exiting on pit. See, that's my thing I'm wondering, is because there's not anything different that the Epic could have done. Go back to green racing. No, I, uh, oof, that, that might put the blame on Jones then, if, if the cars were warned. Yeah. And there is being a, something being typed into the, it was chat. Uh-oh. Same. As we're back to green now. Well, we've been back to green for a while now, I think, actually. <laughs> uh, it's only been a few, it's been like 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, right. There we go. Close battle. Put on the track between Renshi and Yunt. Second in DPI. Yeah, the uh, Code 80 will now introduce a bunch of uh, kinks <laughs> for all the teams involved. As uh, there, after that incident, there is no further action. Ow! There you go. I, I can understand that. I can understand the um, an NFA for that. Yep. So it, yeah, it was tough because she's you're already committed to that corner, right? There's not a lot you can do mid corner to adjust, you know. Once you're already committed to a corner like that. Mm. That's the thing. That I, that was the correct decision, in my opinion. I probably also would have ruled on an NFA. So yeah. Yeah. I can respect why they said that. It's also it was a contact to her to her rear, not the front, right? So. Every time I see that uh, that the Prime GP GTE car, I just think, what has Ooh, that car been through? An Iris LMP2 off. Yeah, Which I won. Uh, it was whatever one has the green features on it, the green highlights. Seventeen. That's the number seventeen. Okay. And, if he's just getting and I should know that because that's my team. Oh, very cool. I'm in the 87 though. There you go. I also believe Akos Forgax has pit, by the way, because he's behind Ben Solvat and he was quite high up. He was ahead of, um, he was behind Felix Neuberger. Hmm. Also, DPR, since the DPIs have pit, I mean, yes, the LMP2s will be coming in very shortly, I feel. No, that. Yeah, that's what I'm uh, wondering right now. Uh, <laughs> it's been happening for a while. Um, oh. I've been hearing 
voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! God. That was uh, stressful moments between the Iris and the Pulse Street Boys Porsche. Yeah. Not Iris, that's a Mugen, sorry. That's a Mugen we're chasing down here. On the Almond Straight. As one of the uh, messages in chats about the incident is video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video Abs game. Absolute so. video game moments. <laughs> Could oh. not agree more. He was, uh, he was affected. I love that term. <laughs> Use one verb to describe the sensation of playing R Factor. R Factor. You've been R Factor. Yeah. <laughs> The traffic giving the Mugen a little bit of respite from a charging 89 epic. Uh, Almost just... the Perikian doing really well to keep the lead for the into the, into the points racing car, isn't he? Yeah. Sven Gaylord also has gotten past um, Sophie Jones now. We didn't see that. Oh, I did not catch that. No. Must have happened. Might have happened on pit stops. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah. The well, the interesting thing is that. The Into the Points uh, racing LMP2 car, they were fast in qualifying. So, yeah, it, it is surprising there. I don't know. Is it that surprising, I guess, when they were that fast in qualifying? Yeah. Into the Points, I, I didn't expect them to be this quick, actually. They're, I know they're quick drivers, but I'm, I'm a bit, they've, they've impressed me a lot, actually, this race. They're really doing well. Yeah. Saying this, once again, traffic playing into the hands <laughs> of the Mugen. David Yunt is trying to chase them down. Looked like he was going to get a move on, and then uh, traffic got in the way of that. Yeah, this is the thing. You have to be very careful on where you're going to lap the cars, especially when it gets a bit... Um... Get there. Whoa! All three classes going down the front straight. That's the GRG LMP2 car. That's a team we have not talked about much this race. It's GRG. Yeah. They've had a quiet race. With Cash and Hall right now in the car. Yep. The GTLM champions from last season. Holding mm -hmm. up the number 89. Out of turn 5 on the big bend. Go wide. Let you enter through. But the damage so, uh, is done. I must, I must say now that uh, I have my own race coming up, and I have to get ready for that, so I must take my leave. Well, thank you for joining us in the booth. It was fun. Thank you guys for having me. Yep, Ramsey, everyone. Right thank you. Mm. you. You still, you still suck with me, sadly. Disconnected from your channel. Don't worry, uh, Kent. You did fine. Don't, uh, don't, yeah. uh, don't overthink it. Give yourself it. a pat on the back. Yeah. Um, let me just check. I'm curious. Okay, that's what Tom is saying. So Tom won't be on before his first stint. Okay. I, I probably know his first stint, yet I would say it for, um... Disclosure rules. Yeah. Yes, disclosure reasons. Why will be here? Mm. <laughs> As um, there was a incident between the car six versus eighty seven, which has had a no further action because of a no evidence of jumping code eighty. We're also coming to the first to the end of the first hour. Um, Forty seven minutes of racing. It's been very productive, very good. Sad that we've had already two retirements. However, we're hoping to get the Prime GP car back into the race uh, so that they can finish it. As I was saying earlier to Kent, mileage is very important in these races, as it means that you can, for one, get even more used to it. That is very true. Time in car is super valuable. But here's a battle for sixth. And Hut trying to catch up to Bent's Horvath. Of Iris versus Valet. The Valor Valet. Now that I'm overthinking it. 
but uh, now one of the teams that was a bit stronger in season one, they've slid down a bit in season two. Not that they're bad, not that they're slow, they're on the timing board. That's a win in on itself, I always say. Yeah, Valet were really quick last season in um, in the DPI field. They were sort of challenging for the um, the title in that in that in that class, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, some fresh faces, different. Uh, I know they. I think they had a partner, a technical partnership with. Was it AFP? They had a partnership or something. They were, I think, the de facto AFPB team for a, a season. Yeah, so I'm imagining, uh, with However, AFP being gone and everything, I imagine that the uh, structure behind the scenes is quite different this year. I can actually explain that quite well, as I did used to drive for Valet Esports, now for Iris. Um, Ooh. So, um, what happened was, obviously, it's all mutual. Nothing, Nothing's wrong with the team, there's no beef between anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, there's there's not nothing wrong. Everyone gets along very fine now between all the both teams. Um, basically, what happened was um, beginning of beginning of 2021, um, like end of Mar like beginning of March or end of March, beginning or end of March. Um, Valet. Um, oh, as Dan Hurt has a spin. Yeah, that was that was the. Uh, <laughs> you're a bit behind me, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna watch from your stream now so I can get a bit early. I was watching on the yeah. stream. Oh good. Yeah. It's not recommended to watch from the stream while dry while driving. As I was saying, uh, basically they decided to split up, so Valet um had a whole rebrand and decided to split up from AFP as um well they felt like Whoa! They, it was somebody just went off there. It was the Corvette, it was the C eight. <laughs> um the logistical nightmare car. Again, love that name, as I said, <laughs> on the grid. Um, so no, what happened was, is that Valet just felt like having a rebrand, mm -hmm. or, well, just refreshed, and came back. So yeah, Ice got signed quite early into that, yeah. into that project. So yeah, I spent about, I think, like six, five, four, five months there. Did also start with Iris around the same-ish time for another series. Mm -hmm. And then slowly, slowly switched permanently to Iris, and now I'm an Iris driver, so no, um, basically what happened was is that they just decided to split up. AFP then folded and is only doing select series now. Yeah. They're doing separate series. And a lot of the drivers from AFP have switched to Iris or Valet, actually. That's why drivers like Jake Denahan and Ted Lauer are at Iris. They used to be pro originally they used to be part of AFP. Mm -hmm. And are now part of Iris. Yeah. No, a lot of drivers who used to be part of AFP switched to Valet or Iris. That's... Yeah. So, here we... Watching an Iris, ironically, after that. Talking about Va Valet. Hence Horvath running sixth. Number 87. I think that's the second of the two irises, because I believe the 77 of Sven Gielholds also an iris. If I'm mistaken. There's four iris LMP2 cars. Jesus and H Christ, why are there so many iris LMP2 cars? <laughs> There's six cars in, in total that iris is running. The number seven um, DPI car, the 77 LMP2, the 87 LMP2, the 17 LMP2, and the 66 LMP2. Mm -hmm. And then the 777 LM GTE car, which is the Corvette C7. There's a lot. Big commitment from Iris to this to the mm. disc. <laughs> it's good to see though. Iris is a good team. Very true. Yeah. They employ very good drivers such as me. <laughs> the top talent in our factor too. Yes. Here out yes. in the disc. Yes, yes, yes. Dance Warfare being stuck behind the Fine of Vond. And as we've been saying, the Fine of Vond for they were pretty powerful at Daytona. Uh, I imagine there's some frustration running around in 8, 48 seconds behind the next car. Mm, I'm guessing they're going to try and regroup for the sprint for the start of sprint series, which starts soon, actually. That is... Two weeks, yeah. right? Yeah, in two weeks, you got a double header, which is the first two rounds of the sprint series, which we get kicked off. Let me quickly get the calendar. Some important information on the Discord. Yeah, so first race we have is the Mid-Ohio Grand Prix. 
Love that race. First ever sim racing race I finished <laughs> in a L LMP2 car. However, I did get a big penalty for being an idiot. Um, we did not talk about that incident. I accidentally slowed down in front of um, one of the drivers, got a big penalty. My fault. I admit that now, and I did admit it. And then we go to the... We go to the Virginia Sports Car Expedition. Is that with LMP2 cars? The VIR car, the VIR race. Um, I don't. It's not in real life. Um, but I think in Visc it's going to be both series. If someone yeah. can give me confirmation on that, that'd be lovely. Then after that, we go to the Grand Prix, Grand Prix of Road America. One of the one of the best circuits in America. We'll have to see a lot of slipstream battles there. I have a feeling. Then race the six hours of the Glen. Also one of my favorite, one of the best tracks on off after two. The mod is great. Um, race seven sports Grand Prix at Moss Sport. Also a very good track in Canada. The only race we're going to be doing in Canada, I believe, then race eight is at the sports car challenge at the Brickyard. So the Indy Road, new track we're going to be driving at. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> Then race nine, Mon Monterey Grand Prix, aka Laguna Seca. Also, didn't race that last season, sadly. However, hopefully this season we will be, and probably uh, we will be, and I have a feeling we will, which is good. And then we ran it off with Petit Le Mans in April. So yeah, good calendar. Um, like all of the tracks on the thing, America has got some good tracks, doesn't it? And with America, I mean North America. Yeah, it's uh, I always say it's sort of tragic that NASCAR was the thing that won out instead of Trans Am, because I think North America has some really good road courses that deserve uh, the prime time more. Yeah, um, Mont Tremblant is a good one, I have to say. Yep. As the 754 has gotten a uh, drive for a drive through. Apologies, sorry, I just saw that in the uh, chat. Guys, do know if you say message retracted, it means you deleted it and we didn't. So... It's like self-censorship right now going on. I don't know what you guys want from me. <laughs> uh. As um, a p bunch of people in the chat are calling this 1984, <laughs> because a bunch of messages have been retracted. Why would Wonder Woman censor us? I'm so confused. <laughs> I don't get the Retract. meme. <laughs> Retract me, father. Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> this is basically Fortnite. Awesome. And the message has been retracted. <laughs> <laughs> Fortnite has left the chat. Yeah. In, in, in Soviet Visk, Fortnite is a banned word. <laughs> oh, God. Next thing you know, St. Petersburg, we go to St. Petersburg, but not the St. Petersburg you're thinking of. <laughs> uh, and it isn't St. Petersburg anymore, it's Leningrad. Leningrad. Here we go. Close um, battle yet again. Ben Horvath is caught back up to his son of Eld, and we've got, I believe that's the Gem Ferrari. Gonna hold both of them up, heading into Cunningham. Ben Horvath not quite close enough to make anything happen there. <laughs> the, the twisty stuff. Oh, God. The absolute state of chat right now. <laughs> this doesn't want you to know this is a video game. <laughs> and I'm just adding on purpose that message retracted. Big, no, big, I, I... big Visk doesn't want you to know that our Factor 2 is a video game. <laughs> and the message has been retracted. <laughs> Woo, all sorts of how to shape Ben's Horvath out of Le Mans. I'm gonna hold him up in his attempt to try and overtake his son of Eld as this Iris versus Valet battle continues. <laughs> Sorry, the chat's too good right now. <laughs> They're breaking. They're knocking on my door. <laughs> <laughs> and he's turned... Oh, God. There is going to be another message retracted soon, isn't there? Just received a deal. Woof. Ben Horvath just like, getting a little bit of all sorts of out of shape here. The last few sectors. Oh my god. Alright, um, let's continue watching the race now, actually. Here's another battle. That'll yeah. bring you back into it. Forgax versus Hut. 
Hoot? Is it Hoot or Hut? It must be Hoot. Hoot, I think. Hoot. It's Dutch. There you go. The, the name is a mystery itself. Okay. The entire Dutch people are a mystery. Here we go. <laughs> Team Iris versus Valet. Yeah. Once again. Uh, Team Iris seems to have a good amount of straight on speed. Looking like he could shape a move. Has to break a little bit later. Getting down the inside, staying cleanly. Will there be any contact? No contact right now. Really, really well done. And Ben Horvath is through. Very well done through for him. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was actually Acos Forgax we just saw do the move. Um, Acos Forgax. Oh, yeah. Um, we apologize for that. Ben Horvath had, has done it a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, that uh, number six is looking awfully beaten up and is off the pace a little bit, it would seem. Also, Ben Horvath is right behind the number, um, the number fifth, behind Kaiser Lonnefeld in, for the, yeah, this move, this, this battle, yeah. the other VMS car. Iris versus Val here, we're getting towards the end of, wow, we're only getting towards the end of the first hour, I feel like so much As has happened. Ben Horvath is going down the inside, really getting squeezed there by, uh, Zonnefeld, isn't he? And he's through, good move, clean, very quick. Yeah, both of the valets are carrying a lot of damage, it looks like. They look quite yeah. chewed up. It's been a very argy-bargy race, as they have to sit behind the uh, the GT and nearly go in the back of it. Oh, and here we go. Here's the rookie monsters, and he gets held up even longer behind the Porsche. Gives him the flash of the lights, not happy. Oh, bit of contact there. That was very aggressive from the valet car. Hey, the VM, the valet by VMS cars have very nice liveries. I really like the red stripe on the top of them, yeah. on the top of their car. Re one, really nice. One has to wonder what he did to get the fin on that car damaged, though. <laughs> Woo! Locks up the rear. As the chat is still talking about, the message retracted, and um, sim police are coming for your G G twenty sevens. Yes. Guys have a uh, your social credit score has descended to a point that you no longer allowed to have a G27. You're going to have to buy a huge arcade machine to do something. Yeah. To, do, uh, to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I personally drive on one of those Sega 1990s uh, things. Ooh, there's Zonneveld has a bit of a spinny. Yeah, those battle cars seem to... Uh, they're both carrying a lot of damage, and they seem really on edge through the hairpin. I know that it's very hard to break in these Oricas without a lot of uh, practice. They're so easy to lock the rear brakes on. Uh, GTLM. TGM versus TGM. The BMW. The big boy. Stalking the <laughs> Ferrari. It's prey. Who's going to come out on top? The Giga Beamer. The Giga Beamer versus the Virgin <laughs> Ferrari. Who will come out on top? Also, drivers, I, I have an offer for you. Um, um, you can come onto our um, onto our stream and get an interview, and you raise your socials credit score. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's all part of our aggressive new <laughs> broadcasting system. Uh, yeah. Every time, oh, there we go. There's the Ferrari going off into the pit. So the Ferrari has faltered. The BMW just too much to handle, and it runs the, for the, the pits to beamer. take. Yeah, it runs to the pits to take cover. Um, see what they decide to do with the uh, TGM. They decide to double stint the tires. If they uh, get fresh rubber and fuel. Also, um, we have finished the first hour. Should we do a rundown of the grid? Let's do that. Let's do that. Start at the. Oh, actually, let's go multi. Let's just do this. Let's go for fun. Let's get it all done in one go. Yeah. Should I, uh, should I yeah, start? Feel free. Go for it. All right. In P1, in, let's go with, let's go overall. Let's go with classes, I'd say. Is that a good idea? Or should we do overall? Um, in... you know, what? I'll put it on, uh, I'll put it in class mode. There you go. Yeah, let's go. All right. In P1, we've got Bradley Sellers for the DPI. It's triple six rookie monsters. Very, very good race to start for them. 12 seconds ahead of P2. David Yunt had a bit of a strange first first straight, first lap, didn't he? Going slowly going back up there, isn't he? P3, Songa Ferenci, very also very quiet for him. P4, George Whiten, 
Whitehouse, this car, very good start, had to have a, had a strange pit stop, and we did start with a different driver, Jake Danahan, however, we don't know what happened with them. Kashif Iftikar, for the triple nine rookie monsters, they've had a very good start, haven't they? Then, P6 in class in the DPI field is Davide, Davide Capruzzi, for the number 60 Hector Him Racing. Again, okay race. James Like in the 114 Sim Revolutions, the Revolution Sim Racing car, is going through a little bit of traffic right now. Alex Moore for the number 150 in P8. I think they've been involved in some sort of yeah. drama. They're a lap behind. Yeah. Same with Bruno, Bruno Sousa Ferreira. Ferreira, obviously. Huge accident. Calls the first call at Code 80. Alex Moore, actually, I've remembered, um, nearly went into the back of a Team Iris car and lost the brakes and went into the wall. That's why he is so far back. And then the final DPI in P10, sadly, won't we? Will, I'm guessing now won't be returning, sadly. Damien Karadko for the 69 Prime GP car, sadly. And they were leading um, when that happened. Yeah. That's a huge shame to see. Now, LMP2 car, Oliver Parikian. Very, very quiet race. Very, very quiet. As we said, he's led most of the laps here. Loses it just now. Now, P2, Sven Gerlhoed. Um, Less of a quiet race, I have to say, for um, him. <laughs> I think you'll agree with me on that one. Yeah. P3, Felix Neuberger for the bottling motorsport car. He's silently gotten up there, hasn't he? Yeah, it's it, he's he's I. It's funny because I saw him throughout most of the first stint, watching the battle in front of him. But after the pit stops, they are up to third. So I guess the uh, slow and steady wins the race has been okay, their approach. As we've got another code eighty. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Code eighty in force. How come is that? Um, we'll we'll check for later. Let me think, let me finish going through the grid for the hourly um, checkup. God, oh, that sounds like a doctor is checking up on you every hour. <laughs> P4 Sophie Jones for the Prime GP car again. Not a very quiet race for them. <laughs> They've been in the middle of the action. Ben Horvath, up and down race. I'll have to say he's doing right, well right now. P5 and LMP2 for the 87 car. P6 Heis Zonnefeld for the Valle VMS Sudden and its racing car. Again, up and down, doing quite well right now. Akos Forgax, P7 LMP2, Dan Hutt, P8, Eric Kumine, P9, Andrew Halom, P10, Eshen Hall, P11, Fabian Ballet, P12, and in final place, Thomas Abascal with about a six, six lap gap, and that's why the, uh, I have a feeling why we have the Code 80 is he's got no rear wing. Okay, well, you can get a replay yeah. of that after we look at the GTLMs. Yeah, do you want to do this? Sure. So, uh, when did a gem car end up in the lead? I'm wondering if they're going through a pit stop cycle right now. Because um, that is not the car I expected to see up there when we flipped over. And then we have Arthur... Oh, wow. Zy Zykula? Arthur Zykula. Sh sh should I have got this? <laughs> Arthur Zykula, probably. Arthur Wow. Yeah. Uh, my uh, my years in the Czech Re my years living in the Czech Republic helped me there. Oh, there you go. Um, well, here's a name I can't for now. Mia Rose, a triple seven team Iris car. That is the car I expected to be up there. So there we go. Pit stop cycle. Okay, happening drivers, right now. back to code eighteen in ten seconds. We have uh, Carl Newis so in the TGM, oh. the second TGM car. Uh, Richard Adia in the Paul Street Boys. Three, that's a two, that's a Porsche. One green flag. Porsche with the yeah. Uh, Paul's PSB have got, um, only, um, GT car, um, only Porsches. Okay. I think they're the only team running Porsches. There's a lot of Ferraris and a lot of, um, Aston. the, Astons, and there's only one, um, one C7 and one C8, and it's one yeah. female. So we actually do have a pretty healthy balance of the GT cars. There's one of every. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Chris Davis in the Prime GP, Bence Boros in the second Paul Street Boys car, and then I think one of the more notable stories is the Fine Avon, the winners at uh, Daytona. They were so dominant there between the Roar and the main 24-hour feature. They're running eighth and two laps off song. And we have Keith Hemsoff in the 360 Ferrari. It's, uh, I don't remember 360 being involved in any drama, I just think that car is just off 
case, to my knowledge. Yeah. Uh, Alejandro Peducci, I know they've had a more dramatic opening hour. A lot of penalties, I believe, has yeah. played that car, Peducci. And yeah. Get over to the logistical nightmare by our HSR. It's it's. I love that. I, I love that name, the logistical <laughs> nightmare. It's been a race. You could put it like that for them. And involved in some uh, drama throughout. Head back to live commentary and discussion. No longer code eighty. Code eighty. Ended before we got back, so you thought it I was. Who was involved in that incident? Did you say? I believe it was. Um... Who was it? Oh, um, Alex Abascal. Moore. Abascal, I think. Okay. Alex Moore is. Oh, it could be Moore. So let's see if we can figure out what happened to him. Yep. I'll, I'll go in the replays too. The Prime GP color kind of battered. Yeah, just, just looking to where it is, because it happened a while ago, like five minutes ago. And an hour has full, has gone away quickly. I apologize, I was a bit busy. Okay, I, I know what happened. Um, Abascal um, lost it. Um... Into Sunset, hit the rear, and yeah, just a okay. So then, okay, so I'll have to look at that, because then this incident, go well, full speed, this happens completely alone. The Hex just loses its rear wing by itself. Yeah, I had to just spin a spin, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Baskel, you said? Which class is that in? Sorry. The LMP2, he's a, he's a bit behind. As there's another car without a rear wing. Or is that a replay? Right, yeah, it's a replay. I'm trying to find out. I'm not sure if Baskel's still in the car, so I'm just trying to figure out which it was in. Okay, um, I, I, I have confirmation on how it happened to the Prime GP car. They didn't blow up the engine. They forgot to pit. Oh, and they ran out of fuel? That's worse, I feel like. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. That is yeah. super frustrating. So yeah, so you can see here, just in the traffic, into the points racing car. Oh, it just catches the bumps on the outside, goes wide and into the wall and sunset. There go okay. two unrelated. The car 160 has lost, has gotten a penalty. Oh. I don't think that's the first I think I've heard of the M160 getting a penalty today. Mm. Might be wrong. Ooh. Yeah, Thomas Shabasco. Yeah, it just goes a bit wide, I guess. Yeah. Don't think... Yeah, be careful about that wall at sunset, don't you? It, it does creep up on you a little bit. Yeah, it's it's that's the weird thing is there's a lot of lines you can take through sunset, but if the car's not set up to take all of the bumps through that corner, if you get the line wrong, you might bottom out the car mm. straight line, and the next thing you know, you're in the uh, in the wall. Oh. That's the annoying thing about that about sunset is that it's such a tough corner to get right. Yeah, it's uh, probably. I wouldn't say it's the hardest corner in sim racing, but it's certainly on the list. It's in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> As um, Tomlinson is saying, he's going to smack his drivers into shape. Like I said, <laughs> um, drivers, please, we we'd love an interview. Uh, all's failing. PM me or something. I'll drag you down. Yep. Or me. What's the password for the broadcast channel? We aren't in the broadcast channel. 
E E N L M P one <laughs> because we the fastest. <laughs> um, George Whitehouse, the 07 car, have been taken over that in the last round of pit stops. I think you. Yeah, yeah, I think he took over from Jake Dunahan quite quite early. Oh, we did. Okay. Oof. Here's a battle for sixth. Going down in GTLM, Paul Street Boys versus Paul Street Boys. Ferrari versus Porsche. The classic duel. Who will come out on top? Funny to see these two teammates so close we got each other in different cars. Oh no, it's Porsche oh, versus Porsche. Porsche. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Why do I why do I think there's a Ferrari? No no problem, no problem. You could we have clearly all the, hear we have all the V six. <laughs> Not the V six, sorry, the uh, It's an inline, isn't it? An inline six, yeah. It's a straight six. Flat six or whatever, I don't know. Whatever you call it. It's a, yeah. it's 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 an engine with, which has six cylinders in one line. Vince Boros taking the enlightened line through that corner. Chat, what do you call it? I, I call it three. <laughs> I call it three. <laughs> I accidentally wrote three. Right. <laughs> Here's the battle that's going on. The second, Mugen versus Iris. This is a battle I sort of predicted going into the top of the season would be the main duel for the championship. Epic is leading this race, though, throwing a kink into that. Also, can I can I just for um say, yeah, it is catching up to um thing. Yep. The charge on the two. Here we go through Le Mans. Important corner here. Getting onto the almond straight. Wrenchy gets a little bit better of a run though. David Yunts in the pits. We'll see when these two come down. What we can actually do. Number of stops. So everyone's on about two stops in DPI. They'll be going for a third here. And he's pit. Yeah. So coming up to three I... stops. Hmm. As Luca Gray has gotten into the Epic car, the 89 Epic, for yeah. all of us dri driver changes. About an hour and 44 minutes in, so you're in the uh, DPIs. You've done a few stints now. And those DPIs are going to need to double and triple stint those tires, though. I didn't appreciate how they do not get an hour worth of running in those cars. <laughs> Mm, yeah, they, they, they don't have much running, do they? Yeah. have to definitely try and stretch tires out to make it work here. Mm. Here we go. Tom saying he'll be on in two hours. Yeah, right. I'm getting off in an hour. So. Anyway. The classic Christian is alone time. I've had, I've had to do um some leagues where I've had to solely commentate the start of a race. That's that's not fun. <laughs> that's where you get really tired and there's a lot of energy. Yeah. But I think the worst part is when you're alone, like right early in the morning, and there's nothing happening because you can't commentate on anything. Yeah. So you just talk about all um whatever. Funnily enough, I was once alone in the morning, mm -hmm. and um someone just wrote me just talk about jack shit. Sorry. <laughs> I should be swearing. That happened twice in two in two weeks. Um, nothing happens, so just talk about whatever. Um, so I did just talk about whatever. Mm -hmm. Also, I apologize about the swear. I, I did not mean to offend anyone. We'll, we'll survive. Yeah. We we'll just have to uh, fill your first born or something. It's fair is fair. My social score is going down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Battle between the two Wall Street Boys cars. Elsewhere. 
Tightened up up front. That was something you caught on earlier. Sven Gilholt's now got Oliver Perikian. 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 That sounds right. Perikian. Perikian? Perikian. Oliver Perikian. Better than what I was saying in Daytona. Um, <laughs> mispronouncing names. Name a more classic North American combo. <laughs> uh, wow. Much better run there by Sven Gilholt. Within half a second now. Into the hairpin. This is the apex, so it goes a bit wide. Uh, oh, yeah. Within a second. Into Fangio, into Cunningham. Dan, you can see the lines they're differently taking. Yeah. Sven Gerhold trying to take less of the um, thing. You see the curbing there. Very, very fast over here. It's actually interesting. Parikian sort of neutralized Gilhold. I don't wonder if that's the uh, arrow wash or if it's the uh, just having a better line through all of it. Mm. Into Le Mans. Very important corner, getting the almond straight correct. Pretty tidy by Parikian, by Parikian, but uh, Gilhold yeah, not closing anymore ever so slightly into sunset now there will be traffic yeah this plays into it Perikian getting caught up that's the inside and there you go Gilhold going to the pits so here we will have to see how that works out in the undercut overcut sort of situation yeah it, it matters about how where, where, where GTs are that that's the, that's Whoop. the easiest. Speaking of that, you see the Aston in the background. I think that was a harmless spin, a uh, little spin there. But I wonder who that was. Yeah, it was uh, Alejandro Peducci who's had a bit of a rough run out there today. Fortunately, car looks clean. Didn't touch anything. Just maybe made the tires a little bit more uncomfortable. And well, Sophie Jones was around there. Hopefully that yeah, Sophie Jones has a bit of a. Gotta wonder, she's been in the car since the start. She was definitely fighting up there at the uh, first hour, but that car slowly slid down the order. I have to wonder if uh, a bit of uh, work. It seems in the background. Someone's controlling my TV. They're coming for me. Oh. <laughs> You just get around Sven um, Gilhold? I want Sven <laughs> Gilhold to her because there's no reason. As we have officially got a message from um, Connor, um, Connor Bell, yeah. saying, Hello, Visk. I am completely fine and safe in my house, enjoying the race. <laughs> Nothing has happened and I am not missing. <laughs> yeah. I lost some racing. See you later. Chinese <laughs> yeah. scripture. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh, yeah. Most recent of the Visk memes has come to life. Yes. Um, the social credit score meme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh god, um, drivers, um. Oh god, if someone can make like a proper meme out of this, please do make a meme and <laughs> I'll review them off the race. Yeah. <laughs> Visk meme review, the thing we didn't know we needed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing Sven Gilhold punted the Prime GP because he gave the position back to Sophie Jones after. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm quickly watching on the stream. Oh. Eh, you never know. Oh, that's it. Okay, let's see how the chat is. Um, Alessandro Valente has also written the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So the next thing we're going to have is the Zhang Shina meme. So critical moments now. Oliver Parikian is on the pit exit. He stays in the lead. Oh, it's, it's the Prime GP that I think he got held up by. Yeah. There you go.
Okay, so Prime GP has got suspension damage. Okay. So they're losing a huge amount of time because of that. Yeah, that makes um, sense. I'm gonna ask about the GT. Has that like thing looks destroyed? Mm -hmm. So I'm betting Sophie Jones hasn't pit yet. No, she hasn't pit done her pit stop yet. So she'll have to go in soon. Uh, we'll leave Parikian and Gilhol to battle it out. Brakes. Oof, a little bit. Oh, oh, shit, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Um. Yeah, just the chat. No, the chat has gone to um, bring up the Chanaman Square protest of 1989. Oh, I see. <laughs> Lovely. No, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. There's no war in Boston, say. Yeah, nah. Um, never happened. Never um, happened. Obviously, in reality, we do not agree with that. Um. <laughs> there is definitely a war in Bossing Say. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, here we go. Battle for first overall going on. Whoa! Bradley Sellers and Team Rookie Monsters. All sorts of out of shape. Trying to close up on the rear wing of Remchi. And there's a lot of pace in that Team Rookie Monster since the last pit stop. The Mugen's holding on now. Wait, I want to quickly check what um what what has been written in Chinese. <laughs> As you are checking over, we will be following this battle for first overall at Sebring to get out of the way. Bradley Sellers does of that Ferrari. Oof, bit of a lockup though from Ferenci and the Mugen. Oh, and there's a car off. I believe that was the gem Ferrari in the wall. And the exit of the hairpin must have just gone on the power a bit too early. Okay, if anyone wants to know what it meant, it means I like ice cream. Oh, good to know. <laughs> 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 oh god, this is a bunch of Japanese. <laughs> Chinese, I'm gonna have to copy paste all of this. I apologize. Cutting through the traffic here. Bradley Sellers. We've got a bunch of traffic coming up too that's going to add to this battle for first. We're on board the Rookie Monsters car. The an LMP2 go wide. Trying to deal with the, uh, I believe those are the Paul Street Boy Porsches in head ahead right now. We're looking towards Sunset. It'll be super critical for the Rookie Monsters car to at least have some overlap with that Porsche before they hit the corner. Three wide! Oh my goodness, my Frenchy! Couldn't get around that LMP2 car before the corner gets held up now. Did he get hit the back, Ferenci? Maybe. I didn't... It doesn't look like there's too much damage, if there is any, on the back of that uh, Cadillac. Now the right... Oh, my goodness! Much deeper on the brakes is Bradley Sellers into turn one. Here we go. The whole 3-4-5 complex that runs in to the big bend. It's going to be very important to keep up. Have a good exit here for both of these cars. Mm. And critically, Ferenci has the better run. Well, we're just going to have to tuck in now. Try to find another way around as we head into the hairpin again. A little more traffic to contend with, this time on an LMP2 car. Once again, Ferenci's just better on the corner exits. Seems like Sellers has a bit more pace, but critically, Ferenci seems to just be able to get the power down of that much more easily. Drivers, we have an interesting offer. Lee Davidson is, needs an emergency driver for the winning car for the 89. Is that the epic car that's that led? David uh, yeah, David Yunt's in there now, but yeah. yeah. They need an emergency driver for that car. So if you fancy it to drive in a race winning car, DM Lee Davidson. Jeez. Interesting situation, I must say. I wonder what happened that requires them to have a... Uh, Lucas PC is having a meltdown. Ah, uh, that sucks. That's the yeah. thing, uh, I, I mentioned it at Daytona, and I think it's worth mentioning again. Part of sim racing is not just the endurance of keeping your virtual car on track, it's the endurance of your equipment. Yeah. Very physical hardware can often let you down as much as 
the talent wheel. That car is sliding down the order right now. That has to hurt. That was mm. a car that was leading about half an hour ago. Got a new series of uh, another series of cars fighting at the moment. It's um, rookie monsters versus Mugen action going on. Man, I don't know what happened, but the 07 and third is 48 seconds behind this. So they're in a different pit stop um, window. Ah, that'll do it. That makes sense. We'll have to see who wins out on strategy then. Fires mm. will also play a big part in this as well. I will also be um, sadly leaving Christian in about 26 ish minutes. So. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, you're not allowed. I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> you'll, you'll have chat though. I mean, it's just a bunch of um, social credit score. People scared of um, losing their social credit score, but you'll be fine. I'll, I'll read people inspirational quotes from Mao's Little Red Book. <laughs> Help them steal their hearts against the uh, capitalist aggression. Read um, famous dictators' quotes. <laughs> Here we go. Once again, this time Bradley Sellers closer. That forces Frenchie to go defensive. Frenchie has more top speed though, doesn't he? Does seem to have more top speed. This battle between the people who went with downforce and the people who went with uh, top speed Ooh, continues. Looking around the outside, taking a wider line, maybe trying getting a better exit. See what happens. Once again, Frenchie just able to carry himself out of the corner Go. better. He's got better acceleration, it seems. Yeah, that car can just a little bit more stable on exit. Moving. Oh, but much better Ooh, on the brakes as Sellers. Can't that get the risk. job done, though. It, it was necessary, though. You need to do these risks in racing. Ten, ten and a half hours, though. I don't know. I, I wouldn't, <laughs> but I guess. <laughs> Uh, in, 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 in situations like that, you want to get past the car as quickly as possible. I mean, you see it in every sports series, in every racing series. You want to get past the car as quickly as possible, no matter what. Yeah. It happens everywhere. <laughs> it's just instinct, as there's a lockup from Ferenczi. Yeah, I think he's trying to get the car deeper into the corners now, because that's where Sellers is so much better, is on corner entry. they got to be careful, you know. you are got to be double-triple-stinting these tires here, so it's a bit of a... Uh... Gotta Actually, preserve yeah, them. You, I think you're correct on that assumption. He's really locking up. The flat spots could get worse, and that's going to lose him speed. Yeah. That's not the best decision. I'd probably just use better placement because I'm not sure he'll get around the outside of many in these corner and many of these corners. Yeah, for sure. The in, the inside is king at Sebring. Yeah, There's very few places you can do a cutback. Switchbacks are good at this track. That, yeah. that I'm going to be honest with. That's the only thing that you can really do here. Switchbacks. If you want to say, if you're on the, if you're overtaking on the outside line, switchback. But preferably, you want to be on the inside, as there's a bit of a. I was worried there was going to be a bit of snaking. Did that one defensive move, fortunately. But now they've got one of the Paul Street Boys, Porsches. That might have even worked out in Frenchie's favor because it uh, didn't let Bradley Sellers do the massive lunge he's been doing. There That's you go. Thing. It's not good for us, though. <laughs> yeah, not good for us. Good for him, not good for us. Mm. Wow, look how much time that Rookie Monsters makes an entry. Yeah, and good, and it can get even more exit because it's break. It, it, it feels like it slows down much quicker. Yeah. Which means it just makes a nicer exit. Ooh, yeah, braking, it's where it's strong. Not much you can do in this area on the pass, even if you do a good braking. Iris Corvette. That's the leading uh, GTLM car. Mia Rose is back into the lead in that car. Mm. Looking to the outside, into the hairpin, maybe? Nope. Ooh, nothing to be done uh, there. Tried a cutback line, didn't he? But it just didn't work there because uh, Fred, he did place the car very well there, didn't he? Yeah. We go into Cunningham. Frenchy taking defensive line. Oh, gets a bit of the grass and Sellers is He's around! Doesn't hit the Sellers. wall, but... That's not Seller's fault, but that's Seller's fault, I mean. Yeah, yeah, he, he got the grass on the corner entry. That was, uh, misjudged the car placement a bit, and the car does not slow down on the grass. Mm. Have to make that position up. So Frenchy, very spirited defense, and he wins out in that engagement. But, uh, the Rookie Monster's car, not out of the fight. I'm sure they'll be back up to them soon. 
But you have to be so careful because the, uh, the lockups will hurt your tires, but spinning the car around will also really hurt your tires. Yeah. I think locking up is worse, though. But it, it, it depends if you're straightening up while spinning, so you're sliding more. Yeah. That's worse than that's worse than locking up if you're mm -hmm. sliding the car. Very true. Here's another battle that's been going on for quite a while. It's Iris versus Valet. Uh, that Valet yeah. has gotten itself tidied up. It was looking pretty battered earlier on. They get caught behind a gem Ferrari. They'll have to make up that gap again. I apologize for sneezing. I'm. How dare you sneeze on my Christian <laughs> stream? <laughs> Uh, uh, no sneezing zone. Yeah, again, I apologize for sneezing. Um, <laughs> I think I might be coming down with a cold. Oof. Done that. Yeah. So here's another battle. This is for 5th in GTLM. This is for ninth, and this is for 8th overall. Ike Sky trying to hold off James Like. Revolution versus Hex. The 160 versus the 114. We will come out on top uh, in this battle, we'll see. Wait, did you say um, GTLM, Christian? Sorry, DPI. I said GTLM. <laughs> no, problem. no problem. Um... Alright, um... Going on the X-Slip. Staying okay. Now, you're gonna wanna... Stay inside... No, no, just stay behind, stay behind, stay behind. Break yeah. button now-ish. Poaching. Didn't quite get the apex, and that's gonna let Ike get a little bit of a gap there. Mm. Heading into Cunningham now. Ike perhaps going defensive when he had no need to. Yeah. It, it just means that you lose um, acceleration. Yeah. Just gotta use all the track, and that is not using all the track. Bit of a little bit of a lockup from the hex, but makes the corner. But that's let James like catch right back up to him now. Not much you can do through Le Mans. You just gotta try and keep your car as close as you can behind the car in front so you can get a good run onto the Ullman straight. See what happens here. On exit. Ooh, Ike Sky had a better one, didn't he? Yeah, he had a better run there. We have some traffic. He's gotta critically get around that traffic before sunset. And he does. The thing is that the the protos the the prototype two can, well the LMP two car can stay with the DPI in the corners, which means that it's that's true. But I, it's a question of do you want to be behind that arrow wash? So at that point, that's the critical question. And so much stronger there for turn number one though is James uh, uh, like oh no oh, big old side from like sky. Saves it He's somehow. He's lucky to have the position. Yeah. Back behind that Paul Street Boys Porsche on the corner exit. Ah, uh, the the Paul, the GT. Ooh, will there be a dive bomb? Please be a dive. Please be. A dive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I would want the um. Ooh, again, very. Ooh. He's got <laughs> much better exits, doesn't doesn't he? Yeah. Now, will we see a move going into um, Fangio? Or am I? Uh, I think Fangio's the uh, twisty bit before coming in. Oh. Yeah. Alright. There you go. Yeah. There's a tower corner here. Both of them yeah. absolutely demolishing the curb there. Just... I believe this is the Super Fortress straight? Uh, yep. Named after the B36, I think. Uh, B-17 is the, No, B-29 is the Super Fortress. Oh, I know... Okay. I, I grew up with airplane books, man. Like, way too many. I was way <laughs> too into planes. Don't worry. Um, I had a huge addiction of Concords when I was three years old. <laughs> so, to the point where, um, my, um, my mum used to show me YouTube videos of, um, Concords or the Red Hour Arrows. I used oh. to be into, more into planes than I used to be in the cars, if you believe that or not. Oh, I'm the same. There we go. The, I uh, used to not anymore, and now I'm crazy about cars. Me and Rose has almost a minute on second in GTLM, so I imagine they're on a different pit strategy. But even yeah. then, that, that is almost a pit stop's advantage. Whoa! Yeah. That's a prime GP Aston. Mm. Oh, and there's the leader. That's <laughs> where one of the leading uh, DPIs getting into the mix of this battle. <laughs> 
the back of the DPI field. Is there a face on the back of that C C seven C eight sword? Ooh, most likely yes. That's that's questionable from the um, hex car. Yeah. The hex. Will the hex let it let the um, iris car through, or will it have to pipe through? I'm not sure what the regulations are on lapping right now, but I'm not sure if it has to let it through or. Um, I think you're given some leeway if it's your if you're trying to hold on to the lead lap, but uh, again, that's not the leading EPI, so that's just a car that's a lap ahead in general. But here we go. Had to let the uh, I believe that's the 07 through. That's held up the 160 and the 114 right back on the tail of Ike Sky. Mm. As this is going on, I don't want to cut away because we've been following it. It's a good battle, but. This is the battle for the lead in LMP2. Oh, okay, yeah, this is much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Ike, um, and whoever else was there. Yeah. Ben Gilhold has caught back up. The Perikian. Here we go. It'll be an opportunity if we can get a good run out of Big Bend. Into the points racing. To perhaps say they've been overperforming in this first hour and a half um, might be not to uh, say anything against them, but there's some really scary names throughout the LMP2 field they are currently beating. Including me. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm not that arrogant. They're probably all better than me. You, aren't, you haven't been in the car yet, you never know. You could go out there and be a second a lap faster than everyone. I'm in the 48s. LMP Drew drivers, you know if that's quick or not. <laughs> but I'm in the 48s. Yeah, no, I'm not big of a, that big of a threat to them. <laughs> yeah. Coming in to the Le Mans corners. Be another opportunity. Just get a good exit. That's all Sven Gilhold will have to do. And then we'll have a nice, good run down the Almond Straight into Sunset. Closing, not fast enough. I think it's uh, Sven. Uh, sorry, Hurricane had a much better run. I think out of Le Mans. Slightly different approach to sunset, but definitely a better exit for Gilhold. Was it? No, I think it's sort of evened out. Yeah, he seems to be able to close up, but then not being able to uh, execute in any way. So we see some cars on exits. One of the GTs, the C8, talked about earlier, oh. that holds up Peric. Hurrican forces As the Gilhold. track. The track isn't that wide. Ooh, has a bit of a probably a bit of a rate right there. But as the track isn't that wide, you can't really go through wide on this track, can you? Not really, not easily at least. Well, maybe going into turn one and into sunset, you could theoretically have a snippet at it. As Sven Gaylord really close now. Will he look at a move now? Oh, breaks a bit earlier. Which means we can probably get a better exit. So close, catching Hurricane the whole way down the Fangio straight, or whatever you want to call it. And Cunningham not quite close enough. Oh, goes wide though, does the into the points racing car. Oh, so looking, 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 looking into, in. going side by side, going into the next corner. Has he got him? Has he, Happy has he? he? Yes, he, he has. What a move by Sven Gerlhard, but however... I have a feeling that Oliver Perrikin will try it back, won't he? He's not far. You have to wonder. I'm wondering if the number 46 is, like, double or triple stinting the tires right now. I, I, I think double is stinting is the main thing. Yeah. They might be on the back half of a double stint, and the iris might be on a fresh pair of boots. Yeah. Um, let's see. I wonder if the live timing will actually tell us that. I'm curious. Ooh, takes a really wide line, hoping to get a good exit, I guess. Yeah. Uh, not as good. That, the Iris had a better exit. I think it's a lot of the dirty air that's hindering. Uh... Mm -hmm. I once did a move around the outside of turn one once. That was quite a fun one. <laughs> Whoa, and Ooh. that will probably do to the end of that challenge. Time to go back to the sky. Um, insert name here. Yeah. Uh, and that is what what car is this? Is this, this the uh, Orbath versus this is the Iris versus Iris fight going on? Yeah. 
Notice the tail there in the mix of traffic. Some lockdown LMP2 cars in front of them, I believe. No, no, those three are all in the same lap, actually. A little bit of argy bargy. Tries to get it done at a tower. He'll get it done, I think. Runs <laughs> the Val off the track, and that'll set up his teammate. Oh, he gets all the way. Oh, my goodness. And that's going to hold up Yunt all the while. Oh, does it into Le Mans. Has he got in? The side by side. He's going to try next going down here. Has he done it? Has he? Yes, oh, he no. The oh. other Iris is sideways, though. They're three wide now. Down the straight. We and somehow, the Val is in front! Yeah. This is... What? LMP2 has been bringing the action. Oh my goodness! Oh! Contact with the Pulse Street Boys! That's Yunt sideways! Yunt is around! What the hell happened That wasn't there? Yunt. That wasn't Yunt. I'm crazy. I'm sorry. That was um, the other Epic. Uh... That was Ike's. There we... That was Jack Mace who was around. There we hear, um... Christian's Canadian accent. <laughs> <laughs> I will not try Canadian accent. Just purely on the basis of not embarrassing myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's, not a problem. It's funny when it's your accent and you're like, well, it's just how. What's the defining feature of the way I talk? I don't even. I can't even imagine it. Uh, I, I, I can. I can quickly show you the <laughs> defining feature, which is the. Ooh, sorry about. about, about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh we've got a huge dive bump by Ben Torvat. Has he done it? What a move! Side by side, going in. Oof. What a he dive He hasn't bump. quite got it done though. Who fans you? Still side by side. He's got the inside line though. Cuts out in front of the Prime Aston. Boxes the valet in. Man. This is for fourth. They do be getting feisty. They do be getting feisty, though. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm speaking gibberish. No, that was really good racing, actually, there. Yeah. Bit of argy bargy, but you like to see it. Definitely yes, you're like right. That is it. for P4. Yeah. The Sophie Jones has lost a huge amount of positions. Yeah. Felix Neuberg in the next car up for that, for that, for the number 87, a bit up the field. Mm. But hey, not everything's possible. But no, yeah, they do be getting. Ten hours in this race left to go, so. Oh, so it's sector one right now. Don't know what that's for. See the, uh,. GM Ferrari heading to the pits, as well as one uh -huh. of the, uh, I think that's uh, the leader in EPI pitting. We'll see where the crossover is for White House in the 07. Oh! Oh! There's that's the 17! The 17 Iris spun. And it's Eric Kuma. Oh, he's lost oh. the rear tire! That's out! He got bungled up with one of the uh, epics. That is the end of it for the number 17. We're gonna have to figure out what happened there. Yeah. Already on it. <laughs> so, let's see. So, he's going into turn one. Eric Kumane. Slightly loses the car brakes, hits the rear wall. Ah! Oh, he loses the rear tire while when hitting the wall. Just hit the inside wall and lost the rear. They sitting there. That could. They're not. Yeah, they're not going to bring that in there. Yeah, just loses it on his own. But I'm guessing the epic comes onto the scene later. Then perhaps yeah, I, unrelated. I, I'm just going to watch this to wait till it goes in. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah, waiting. so the epic's decades behind. He's just going through sunset, and this is well after the iris has crashed. Yeah. Oh, he loses it and then goes into the iris. Oh, to be fair, the Irish boy should have left, um, gone off. But no, that's an, it's them out of the race. Yeah, oh, well, he did just lose it, yeah, but come on, you shouldn't have done that. He lost it on his own, too. Can't entirely blame yeah. the Irish for it's that. It's a shame for him, but um, it's racing. Yeah. Indeed, it is racing. Sometimes it's tragic and cruel. <laughs> tragic and cool. <laughs> Uh, let's go However, I mean, the DPI did lose it and was going off anyways. Yeah. Like, that's an abnormally wide line to take. 
Yeah. See how much lock he's putting into it. It is just... He, he knows at this point he's messed it up because there's an iris just there. And the thing is, the iris is off track. That's yeah. the thing. Well, he, he no, you, see, yeah. you can see he's he's lost and he's going to lose the car. So, I, I, I mean... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to retract what I said earlier and say, yeah. Um, and they've also retired. The Epic has? Yeah, it's in pits. Um, oh, you've yeah, yeah, it's not behind the wall, though. Oh, uh, you've gone back. Um, yeah. And Ben Corbin's wheel has overheated and won't respond. Oh, no. So, yeah, um... It's very unfortunate for that car. Mm -hmm. Sadly, our second retirement of the race. Yeah. So, for those of you just joining us, welcome to the 12 Hours of Sebring. Yeah. We said our um, third retirement, I believe. Uh, second. Second, okay. So we got somebody back who retired earlier. Um, yeah. We're about 10 out, we're about two hours into the race. You're currently joined by um, Christian McKessie and Tobias Blumshine. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, but yeah. He's Christian, I'm Tobias, so he didn't notice. That's how it works. Um, George Whitehouse in the Iris leading the race now. They're in an interesting strategy battle with the 04 and the 666. Although it looks like the 04 is the only one left really in that battle. The 666 is in the pit again. Something must have happened to the working yeah. master's car. It might be that... Oof, they did have that incident recently. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah. That will hurt them. The Epic team have had a really poor race, haven't they? Yeah, it's fallen apart after being, looking so strong in the early phases. Mm. Yeah. Realities of endurance racing is they're going to go, I believe... Yeah, the number nine Epic is five laps down right now. And that's the leading of the two epics. The other epics five laps down in 30 seconds behind them. Right now, Iris looking strong. Uh, Mugen having the only other car really fighting for the lead in DPI. They're on different strategies. Closest battle on track. Would you believe it? It's an LMP2. <laughs> Part of the ongoing Iris versus Valet battle. Acos Forgax behind Dan Hoot. See him working the wheel of his Orica 07. Got some damage on the front of that car, though. How much pace he's losing to that. One of the big conversations going to this race, as we've mentioned earlier in the broadcast, is the introduction of limited tire sets for this round of the VISC. So teams are having to double and triple stint tires, and that's introduced a bunch of uh, strategy to this that's uh, really keeping things up in the air. Absolutely flying. Oh, maybe I'm flying a bit too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love this view on this Orica. Bradley Sellers in for a really long time, actually. He's got down to the field a massive amount. He's a lap down now. Still in the pit stop. Yeah. Wonder what is up Fine. that car. They were up there fighting for first until this, so they must have had a big moment somewhere that we missed. I'm quickly going to check the gap between the bottling car and the Iris 87. Or 86, I don't know. I'm, I'm tired. That's all fair. If lost, return to center! <laughs> Ah, wait, that's what, good. That's... What happened to Sellers? Oh, wait. Something happened to Sellers? Yeah, I didn't see it. No, I was saying return uh, to sender because of what's on the rear wing of, uh... Oh. Perikin's car. Okay, the gap between Neuberger and Horvath is 78 seconds. It's quite big. Yeah. It's not impossible, though. It is sim racing. Sim racing, 10 hours? Not even a lap oh, down. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, car behind is a valet, but I think it's actually a lap 
down from Perikian, so no threat from that car behind. Ooh, let's look at the penalties. Um... Um, final warning for the 87, you cannot... The 87 has had two warnings. Two warnings. No penalty yet, then. Noteworthy, yeah. Oliver Perikian has closed up the gap to Gilhold, so we might see that rebound. Wondering and the, uh, car 66 has got a penalty for uh, pushing... A warning... Not a penalty, a warning for pushing off track. Tom Dillon will also be joining us soon. That will probably mean I, I, I'll be leaving. <laughs> Fair deal, Chief. Yeah. So I'll wait till he joins and then I can... Um... Run away. Join yep. your team. <laughs> Run away and join my team and then watch the Arsenal football match because I'm going getting in it really late. <laughs> uh, sure. Um... Which? Oh. Ooh. The OBS catch. That's what the kids like. I <laughs> wish I could change the. Uh... I can change it a bit. I'll do that for myself. Let me quickly find Tom and drag him. Yep. When Tom joins, we can do our hourly update and give them. Yes. On the yeah. Get... And then I'll um, take a break. Yes. Um, we, we, we need... So here's a fascinating part of the development is the RSR car is up into fifth now. After they were down in... They were eighth about ten minutes ago. They're into fifth. So this has been a very good... Oh, big incident! Massive Ooh. incident there! It's the Hex! Ooh. This could be a code 80. Your channel. As Tom Dillon has joined you. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing absolutely fine. I was supposed to be driving right now. However, we've uh, had a minor issue of the engine not working anymore. And uh, now I can come and enjoy the race from a much warmer commentary box, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, I have to say, um, you sort of come at the perfect time because this means that I'm, I'm going to go off soon. So uh... There we go, as fate would have it. Obviously, sorry to your car, as a uh, fellow, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a <laughs> one of the sister cars. It's a bit of a shame to see, but hey. Uh, yes, I mean, it is a shame. However, I, I can't put any blame onto Eric, as it's happened. I've crashed plenty of LMP2s in my time, so... Oh, so you can see, you can it, already so. off, the LMP2 comes down the track. That's, that's really poor from the LMP2 car. That's really poor. Yeah. I mean, really now. Come on. I'm, I'm going to become a bit of James Hunt right now. <laughs> but really, come on. Yeah, it's just a it's, complete you, lack of awareness. You'll, think, you'll have to apologize here, me trying to get into this, this race again a little bit, as I've only been kind of idly watching whilst doing various bits around the house. But uh, it does look like the LMP2 there just doesn't see the DPI car coming. It's Alex Moore in the number 150. And I, it's just generally poor driving, although he, he kept a consistent line in fairness to the LMP2. And I no, know that he's is... not. That is cutting down the track for sure. That's, no, that's no a... as in, when he was re-entering the track, he was he made it quite obvious. And I think that was just a case of being a bit flustered from the crash and I, I, poor driving for sure. But, I mean, if I'm honest, I think that's really, that's really, that's poor. Because, I mean, no, you don't cut across the track after you've gone off. I think one of the main rules in racing is when you're back on the track, you hold the line, which that you, you stay to this one side of the track so that cars are faster, let them through. Especially... In, sorry to cut you off twice. In fairness to the LMP2, however, uh, you could argue that he was under the assumption he had to get uh, on off the racing line as quickly yeah, as possible. Yeah, fair enough. But, but you have to, you gotta hold the... A misjudgment. You gotta hold the line when you're... Yeah. Yes, definitely. I, I'd agree with that. So, having uh, deciphered that accident, let's uh, go through the hourly update as we yes. say goodbye and say hello. I, 
So I'll do it as I am leaving. So, um, Christian, if you'd like to put the graphic up so I can start. <laughs> in P1, we have... In... Wait. When did David, David get ahead? When? David, you... Right, Wait, no, no. That's that's a lie. I put up the wrong thing. That was qualifying results. All right. Um, never mind. There we go. <laughs> Sultan Hives. So you can see racing. They had, a, they had a driver change Stop leading the race. George Whitehouse in P2. Those two locked in a never-ending battle. It's very, very interesting. The Team Rocky Monsters, triple nine. The car that actually started further behind the um, the triple six, which was actually the car that started ahead. P4, James Like in the Revolution Sim Racing car, P4. Ica Sky in the P5 in the, for the Hex car. Bradley Severs, triple six, Team Rookie car. P7, Alex Moore, Pava will probably lose P8 and 9. Jack Mace, P9, speaking of the devil, P8, speaking of the devil, in the number nine Epic Racing car. And in and David Yon, uh, the final DPI running with the Epi 89 Epic Racing car. Sadly, we have lost Ray Wong, which was Damian Karatko. We lost him a while ago because I forgot to pet him. Now, onto the LMP2 cars. Sven Gaylord into the lead for the 77. P2, Oliver Perekim into the points racing. P3, Felix Neuberg, a bottling motorsport. Probably the quietest race. Yeah, I would say so. Off the top 10, maybe, in LMP2. Yeah, yeah. Vince Horvath had a was a bit quite far back at the start, but been slowly, slowly going up the field. And on the same lap as Felix Neuberger, so they could happen, something could happen there. Dan Hutt in P5 for the Valet VMS Sudden Sun Edits Racing, those two teams coming together. P6, the other Valet VMS Sun Edits Racing car. P7, Sophie Jones. P8, Arcos Forgax, 66 Iris. Sophie Jones, I'm just going to go back to her. Had a really bad last hour, didn't she? Um, yeah, had a really she, strong intro, and then it just fell apart in the last yeah, hour. Yeah, um, came from suspension damage. Yeah. Um, P8, Arcos Forgax, again, up and down race, really. Andrew Halom in the RLR Britsy car in P9. Fabian Ballet, P10, for the 72 Reading Game Studios racing. P11, we have Julian Vrak for the GRG. Again, very quiet race. P12, um, Arda Urchan into the points racing, number 47. Less quiet race, just had an accident. Yeah. And then in P13, Eric Kumade, Team Iris car. Um, obviously last with a big accident. Oh, Tom was sadly, was going to drive sadly car anymore. He won. Mia Rose doing really well in the GT field. Carl Nemus, P2. P3, Arthur Shishkula P for the TGM car. P4, Chris Davis. He's done very well, actually. Um, had quite a quiet race in, um, in thing, what's it called? Daytona. Yeah. How did I forget that track? Um, <laughs> Chris Davis has done really well for the first two hours. Very, very quick, very, very consistent. We've been very impressed from them. Richard Chismadia for the Paul Street cars, P number 754 car p5 again very good from them martin novak 75 through paul street boys p6 paul sits a car going down five positions nah been a bit disappointing Poussin Bar bartel for the global endurance modding team okay for them they've been doing fine nick homewood fina Vond, as you said earlier a bit disappointing from them p9 joe gosditas number 30 364 and i think jack vermulen is the final car in the logistical nightmare racing by hsr is there another car yes there is alessandro peducci in the 170 hex sim racing i think after that that's a very interesting field a few surprises there wouldn't you agree with me yeah uh definitely some cars further up than you'd expect uh, certainly when you think about the LMP2, it's been a really, really uh, impressive run from Into the Points Racing. And then conversely, Epic in uh, DPI has just had a absolutely tragic race. Consider the 89 started on pole. They're now five laps down. Yeah. yeah there's uh, been some drama in the opening stanza. Stanza? Why did I say stanza? <laughs> opening stanza of this race. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think now I will be exiting the commentary. Thank you for having me, Christian. Um, and best of luck to you two. Have fun. Thank, Thank you, Tobias. And uh, hello, Christian. It's hello. been a while since we've commentated together. Well, we did this Daytona. That was, we I did guess. Daytona, but I don't think there was any stage where we were just the solo, the sole two commentators. I think Road America, you have to go back that far. Ah. 
And that came from our YouTube recommended last night. So I gave that <laughs> to a watch. And uh, there you go. We are favourable in, in the algorithm. And did you know, this is completely sidetracked. It has nothing to do with what you're doing here at VISC. However, the Sebring 24 hours in real, in real life is on today. The Sebring 24 hours? Yes. They're running a 24 hour race uh, in the 24 hour series. Oh, I did not know so that. It's backed by IMSA. Oh. So it's not an IMSA championship round, obviously, but it's backed by IMSA. Interesting. And, uh, the qualifying starts in about 10 minutes, actually. Yeah, I did not know the 24 hour series ran at Sebring. Yeah, they do, and you can actually watch that on 24 hour series. They haven't paid me to say this. <laughs> it's quite an interesting event. Uh, it starts at uh, 25 past 9, I believe, UK time, if you want to watch that. It should be quite fun. They've got all the uh, proper IMSA radio crew doing it, as per usual. So that's going to be fun. But we've still got 10 hours left here. And uh, I'm quite glad, actually, I don't have to put the brain power in of driving for the next two hours. And I could just sit here, relax, and enjoy the racing. Yeah. <laughs> that's the uh, fun thing about this. It's no stress. Uh, I did a 24 hours of spa race um, two weeks ago. And... The experience of that is very different from actually, it's, it's, commentary has its perks, we'll put it like that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now, I think there's always two, two sides of the coin. I absolutely love driving in races where I'm confident my pace going in, mm. and I know I can just, it's going to be okay, and I can just sit back and I can relax. Like the Spa 24 hours in ERC a yeah. few, few weeks ago. Uh, that was probably the, the greatest 24 hour experience I've had for <laughs> ever. Um, you can sit back, you can relax. And it's just so much fun. But when you're going into a race like Sebring, where today I was, I was practicing last night, and I was like, oh, I really don't think my my pace is my pace is there, I, and things like this. You go into the race and you start to feel less and less confident. Because um, I think there is there's a massive, massive pace ceiling here uh, this weekend. We've got drivers in in the four, low 47s, high 46s. And yeah. that is incredible. And it, it's really difficult. You have to take a step back sometimes to driver and realise that, yes, they're doing 46 fives or whatever it is in practice, but they won't be doing that in the race. You've really just got to drive. And the chances are, as long as you're not five seconds off the pace, you will be OK. Yeah. Another thing that really adds complexity to that uh, sort of pacing yourself is we have limited tyre sets, and it pretty much demands, especially for the uh, DPIs, you're going to double stint Right, exactly. More than once, so it's uh, you. You can't be pushing flat out the entire uh, race as much as you might have at even just Daytona. And uh, and well, it is quite nice sometimes. Uh, Daytona was so much fun, just being able to sit back, relax, and just commentate on the action. Yeah. Um, that a uh, spa race, not to toot my own horn, but <laughs> um, <laughs> we. Uh, what happened was we'd qualified in silver, basically near the pole in silver. I, I, I and one of the other, the way they did it was like uh, your, the pace of the entire team was averaged out. So me and yes. one of the other drivers were I fast enough to be in gold, and then the rest of the team was slower, we'll say. Um, but I, and then what had happened is we ended up taking a grid penalty that put us third last in a 54-car grid. We ended up 51st. In my opening stint, I got the car up to 20th. Dear me, it was a bit of a Calvin Van Der Linde, but that wasn't <laughs> real life's part this year. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a dr some dramatic pat moments in that opening two hours of that race. I have never passed that many cars. <laughs> well, my, my crowning achievement is that I don't believe I have ever made an on-track overtake in ERC or Fisk in two years now of wow. racing. <laughs> it, it, and that's not because I'm in an endurance race, sorry, in the sprint races I have. But and that's not because I am a bad driver. That's because usually I'm in the car when the gaps are like a minute and you know, I don't really have to do anything. Yeah. That's uh, usually how things end up after a few hours. <laughs> I find it happens uh, faster in our factor than it does in ACC, but... And I think that's a lot of the, the game, the uh, especially with these higher sets. And I can't stress enough to the 
uh, the people who are watching in chat who perhaps aren't racing today, especially in the NMP2s, the tyre set is such a game changer. In fact, the NMP2s has been pretty much like driving a brand new car when I've been practicing in in, uh, in, yeah. in the week. It's the G uh, gl they've made the car very very fun. <laughs> but they've also you've got to take everything that you knew about the LMP2 already and throw it out the window. It's it's such a different experience. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. And the racing has been. I will say the racing has been closer in LMP2. I wonder if maybe people's setups were thrown for a loop and they've had to adjust and it's sort of uh, closed the gaps a bit. I think there's an extent of that, but I also think the cars are just a little bit easier to drive. Yeah. Uh, definitely more difficult to be fast in because you have to basically go against everything you know about LMP2. For example, you can really heavily rely on engine braking in the uh, global insurance modding cars. Yeah. Whereas in a normal LMP2, you can't engine brake practically at all because when you get to 10 hours in, the, the engine will just explode. Yeah. So it's really, it's quite nice to be able to drive an LMP2 car and not have the fear of the engine blowing up in five hours' time. Yeah. That I say after retiring from an engine failure. <laughs> that was a rare impact in fairness. Yeah. You can't you can't really do much uh when somebody drives a car through your engine. It's a bit of a different experience at that point. You see this battle for fourth developing in GTLM, Aston Martin versus Porsche, Paul Street Boys versus Prime GP. That Prime GP has been in the wars, so it's quite amazing to see it up to uh, fourth now. Um I guess there's been some strategy and drama throughout GTLM. And I'm, I'm impressed with Prime GP and Paul Street Boys. They seem to have, or well, they weren't on my radar in 2021, and they've had a spectacular 2021. And here they are at one of the, uh, I want to say major R Factor 2 leagues, one of, one of the kind of R Factor 2 leagues that everyone knows about, and they're battling for a very, very respectable fourth position. With 10 hours to go, they could quite easily find themselves on a podium. It's not a huge gap up to third as well. And of course, this really allows teams like that to get uh, get up the order. Yeah, uh, remember when uh, thinking back to Road America when Ari Racing pulled out a win? That was a pretty big uh, moment, beating Iris AFP. Um, whoa, that was dramatic. What was the Just hex car going around? Find the spreadsheet. I can see the sporting regulations. The 21 page sporting regulations. You've really, uh, <laughs> you've taken over the league, technically speaking, as far as I understand, Christian. Uh, maybe not uh, practically, but uh, yeah. on, on the uh, sort of. Woo, big lock up there, and that's going to let the uh, gonna be a change of position between the two uh, Prime Street Boy cars. But sort of officially speaking, you are now technically the league owner, as I understand it, and yeah. uh, after Alex stepped down. And Wow, you really hit us with a 21-page rulebook. I was studying that last night, <laughs> and you, you're giving me flashbacks to my English literature. Uh, you see, I, I came in, and there was already a rulebook being written. So it ends up looking like I did a ton of work, but no, it was basically like... It was almost finished before Daytona. It just didn't get put out before Daytona. And then I came and was like, oh, there's a new rulebook. I guess I'll... I guess we'll put it out. Um... Yeah, don't. I, I did nothing for that. I, I did I did some formatting and gram grammatical <laughs> edits. But you, you know, it's very extensive as well, actually. And I have to say, it irks me a little bit that it's this extensive. But it does find itself very useful when you're uh, when you're actually in a race and you need to, particularly when yeah. you're commentating. When you're driving, it's an absolute pain. Really. <laughs> but from uh, a commentator standpoint, it's it's a really good rule book. Yeah. So welcome to the. Uh, at the end of the day, it's up to Jeff Close and Alex Skinner and the uh, upstairs to actually apply it, and I'm sure they are giving a decent amount of leeway, <laughs> given how new and extensive it is. And it's also really nice to see Alex Skinner here. Uh, I thought he'd completely cut ties with the series, but no, here we are, Alex Skinner doing a, uh, a very, very nice job indeed, and uh, still being lending his voice to the code 80 calls yeah I don't think we can really really complain it's a classic scenario I mean it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be this without Alex Skinner shouting at someone yeah 
Actually, unfortunate because we are not upstairs in um, actual proper commentators booth. We are not getting the uh, race control calls, which is sort of uh, frustrating. Are we not? Uh, no. I can find you the passwords of that commentary booth. Ooh, do it. Go ahead. I did. I did. I hope they won't mind. I did commentary the other day uh, uh, for GEM, so I oh, imagine I can I'm find sure the password. They don't mind. There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out if I can uh, if I can do that. Wait. There we go. I've got the password, and I will put it in the risk commentators chat. Yeah. In fact, I'll send it to you, so I don't get uh, I don't disappear in the middle of the night because <laughs> hey, of some G E M hitmen. G E M hitmen. I could I could believe it. Really, that's it. User left your yeah. channel. <laughs> Error. What? Ended. Channel switch. There we go. Look at us. Where we were always meant to be. We're back. We've 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 re-infiltrated our channel now. Yep. And there's nothing they can do about it. Nothing. So I'm a little bit confused here, and this is completely a tangent, and I do apologize. It's quite difficult when you haven't been watching a race from the start to uh to pick it pick it back yeah. up straight away. Um but I've been trying to figure out what's going on with the twenty four hour series. And they've just completely pulled their qualifying uh, stream from YouTube, so I don't really know what's going on there. That's confusing. Did the qualifying end? Uh, and in fact, I, the first two YouTube comments I see are uh, WTF is going on. <laughs> I don't think anyone was going to really. Uh, well, we've got a race here, at least, and I'm looking at a few of the YouTube chats. And, yeah. uh, Tom Nixon says some of the language in the rules needs fixing a bit and some slight additions to make them a bit less vague and I think I would be unfair to say that I'd agree with that actually. Yeah, it's a it's a living document. I think we're uh, Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I think the only thing we've kind of promised is like we're not gonna tr we're gonna try and not change the rules a week before the race on you, but otherwise yeah, it's a living document, just gotta keep poking at it. And in fairness I can completely respect some of the work that the Level insurance modding team have done. I think they've got a specific style of working at GEM. Yeah. And I think it's just been a bit of a shock to the system for some people. Uh, well, I don't, think, <laughs> I, I don't think there's been any uh, poor natured rules put in. I think yeah. they've just got a clear sort of philosophy that things like tyre sets and yeah. it just hasn't been to everyone's liking. Well, I will say this. Uh, <laughs> the. Uh... Partnership between Visk and Gem. I think this is the beginning and end of it here at Sebring. So, we'll, uh, yes, I, I, I yeah. did see some controversy there. I don't, <laughs> think I'm going to, uh, I don't think I'm going to ask what happened there because I think it's probably a little bit above my pay grade that controversy. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, yeah, it'll uh, <laughs> things will be by the time we uh, unload the trailers for um, Mid Ohio the next race. Let me bring up the schedule. Might as well. Yes, round three is I, I the first sprint at Mid-Ohio. Yeah. By the time we yeah, unload I... the trailers at Mid-Ohio on December in December, um, things will be slightly different, I am sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah. I may be commentating that one. I don't know. I think I've managed to bag myself a full-time drive with Iris, which I don't know how I've done that. However, <laughs> I have. So... Uh, whether I'll be on the full race or just a stint, I don't know. Yeah. However, I would love to commentate is the wonderful commentators here with the Visk. Always appreciated. I know Matt can't do it as much anymore because uh, he's a full-time student now. He's joined me in the books, so... Oops, I'm sure okay. that and phone ring was uncomfortably loud, and I am sorry. I've noticed we've uh, pulled the fancy studio funding, and uh, we're, back <laughs> to, we're back to how it always used to be. Yeah. Um, I think we'll need... I, the the plans for what was going to happen with the studio have uh, fallen through because of internal household politics. And, <laughs> um, so uh, we're back upstairs. Um, I, I, I can imagine internal household politics means someone was like, why are you using an entire room for your computer game, Christian? Actually, surprisingly, that was not the problem. <laughs> um, it was more so... Uh, Long story short, there was going to be a swap of bedrooms, and uh, at the 11th hour, one person decided they didn't want to do it anymore, and it became too much of a hassle to move 
Because I plan to keep the computer down there, but uh, now it will can't be down there, so... There's, there's nothing quite like the politics of a bedroom swap. In, yeah. <laughs> in, in households. I remember shortly before I moved house, there was so many politics. Can we get the graphics back up? Please? Oh, sorry, so, sorry. I was... Uh... Sorry, I, I, just a little bit of a, uh, a nudge. I was wondering what was going on here. I, I love this graphic, actually, the throttle and brake traces. I think it's so useful. You can just see... Uh, Again, the speed that the DPIs have got over the LMP2s, they've really done a good job with this balance of performance, I feel. I don't particularly like them making LMP2s slower. Mm. However, I do really enjoy just seeing DPI cars look so imposing. It's really Whoa. doing the class a lot of justice. It's all weird that's the well. leader in GTLM. That's a 777 Iris. Mia and Rose. It's worse for Iris, doesn't it, really? That is two cars have crashed in the last 30 minutes for Iris and out the race and I'll use my insider information to see what happened there. Disconnect so there's no need to be too concerned. She'll be back in the car momentarily I imagine. And here's an interesting thing, I imagine this is indicative of everyone being on newer tyres, because I imagine uh, everyone's going to do two stints per mm. tyre. If I, if I remember correctly, and not giving away any important team information, uh, I think it was figured out that you only have two stints where you can take just, well, you don't have to double stint, so it's pretty much double stinting all, all afternoon, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I have noticed that the lap times seem to be staying quite consistent, actually. In fact, they're, they're speeding up a little bit, I, I believe. I think a lot of the drivers earlier, when I first logged on, were in the 49s and 50s. But now everyone seems to be back into the 48s, which I think is about reasonable on the newer tyres. Yeah. So this is going to create an interesting situation for sure. The Paul Strait Boys versus TGM and GTLM. Two teams you would not expect to see there. They weren't here in Season 1, but they've come in Season 2, and they are looking quite strong here at Sebring. Um, as Iris slides down. So yes, Rose is back. Mia Rose, you have to feel for her. She was so strong. Back now, but she's going to be, I think, a lap down, yes. And sixth about, hopefully. We'll see when she gets out of the pits. When Homewood gets around, uh, Martin Novak and Paul Street Boys have been uh, an incredible team this year. Uh, raced them in ERC a few times. In fact, I think Martin Novak may be on the list of people I've shouted at. Uh, not through <laughs> their face, just shouted at in general. In fact, to be fair though, I think that, that goes for most of the grid. I think everyone shouts at each other before. Yeah. Uh, and it was probably my fault as well, in hindsight. However. <laughs> We also had a coming together yesterday in Ooh. practice, and that was interesting. It was completely my fault again, that one. <laughs> but, uh, good to see him running up in second position. I went on to the, I went to overtake him, and uh, I, at first I thought we'd been squeezed, and then I realised I just lost it by myself on the grass and took each other out. Speaking of, yeah. there's my car getting past in the same place that I came together with Martin Novak yesterday, and. Uh, Here's an interesting part of the uh, rules, or how it's being interpreted by the boys upstairs that I got from Aiden Coleman at 360, is that for every qualifying run you did, you used one set of tires. That will definitely filter into the uh, calculation for doubling, tripling stints, because I don't know if you can double stint if you did like three or four qualifying runs. That's <laughs> true, because... As a matter of fact, every time you come into the pits, you immediately take a new set of tyres. Like every time you escape to the garage, that is. Yeah. I know we were being told, our qualifying drivers, that you need to come into the pits and you need to stay with the car live in the game session, if you know what I mean. You can't come yeah. back into the garage because we only want to use one set in, in, um, in practice. Yeah, which is how I I interpreted the rule that way as well because I thought it was once you had one set allocated for qualifying, and then you had eleven, uh, thirty, twelve sets of the race uh, because the one set for qualifying didn't count towards the thirteen. Anyway, so I think it's definitely very interesting. Is this is Jacques 
of a Marlin. The move for position on a Paul Street Boys Porsche getting him up to ninth. C8 is doing a recovery drive. For a pretty a lovely to move as well. There's not a lot of resistance, and I think everyone is on the different tyre strategies. And that is the one positive of this new tyre rule. Mm. The fact that everyone's on different strategies in the 12 hour race. I, I think it does make the racing slightly less close. This is Ike Sky for Hex Sim Racing. Uh, trying to see what's going on here. There's 0 0.6 seconds to next. So this is a battle for position. This is a battle for fifth position in DPI. Stint time is another thing that could be uh, misinterpreted, says a Tomlinson. And uh, I do apologize. I don't know your first name. Uh, I believe it's Adam. But yeah. I don't want to butcher that. So. The, the stint time that we talked about, the interpretation, I know this from the conversation in the uh, management chat. The stint time rule is basically there to be applied if somebody's really abusing it. And by that, I mean, like, you have one, you have three drivers and one person does eight or nine hours. That's what yes. it's there for. Otherwise, if you, like, you know, otherwise it's not really going to be implied too harsh, applied too harshly on you. So it's it, it's yeah. quite loose what uh, annoyed me slightly as well the three hour 20 minute rule for i think it was a three driver entry uh, yeah. it's really really hurt us as reading game mm -hmm. andy there we go thank you i do apologize there's so many drivers it's very difficult to uh remember yeah. their first names um i, I yeah. think we'll definitely uh we're definitely going to review it after this race, yes, so. it, it harmed us as reading game because we had Ten a seconds. Uh, code 80 there we go that's interesting Five. Four, three, two, one. Code eight enforced. Okay, so whilst, whilst they're all slowed down, Christian will go and find what's happened. I'll quickly mention this. So at Reading Game, we have three drivers, and the issue was that one of our drivers couldn't be back for a certain time, I believe. Yeah. It was something along those lines. Uh, so what we actually had to do was... Chris we realized, Davis, slow down, it's code 80. Uh, it was something to do with we could only get them to do two hours and forty or something rather yeah. than the, the um, and it was it, it was kind of on the borderline. It wasn't completely abusing the rule, and it was still going to be fairly equal. Uh, you know, one one driver was going to do about three hours twenty uh, about three hours or four hours, I think it was, and then another driver was going to do something else, and it yeah. was going to be quite close. It's going to be quite even anyway. But we've actually had to switch it so that all of our drivers do four hours each. And it was just a little bit inconvenient. So I think that's one one issue that we had with the rule. Mm. Yeah. Um, trying to fit in the drive times around that. Because it is, it's quite annoying that we have to get our drivers to do four hours. We always try and limit it to about two. Because I feel like if you do any more than two hours, you start to flake mentally. Yeah. Feel yeah. Code 80 ending in 5 seconds. Yeah, I have no idea Four, what that was for. 3, 2, 1. Code 80 has ended. I imagine someone probably got a little bit of suspension damage into Sunset or something. They just needed to get that cleared. It was probably Chris Davies, actually, who's into the pits uh, on the jacks in that Aston Martin. And I have noticed that they've put some really fancy uh, cameras on this year. As I, I swear that must have been updated. I, I don't think it's particularly um, a, a major issue. Um, I, I just think it was a... I could see the, the intention behind the idea, and I think it was a very good idea. Uh, I just think perhaps the execution... It wouldn't be unfair for me to say the execution was slightly mis, misguided. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and it's so easy to do, and I can't really blame the admins either for it particularly. Yeah. Uh, it is just one of those things that happens. Here's what happened to Chris Davies in the Prime GP. Oh, he's Number already lost the tyre already yeah. at that point. We lost the tyre earlier than that. And he went so, off hard. I wonder what happened there. Uh, yeah. Can we quickly get that again slightly? There we go. I want to see where he lost the tyre, though, because at this point he's already down a tyre. So he's, so he's lost... Oh, there we go. 
So that's what's happened then. He's, he's lost it even earlier. He lost us a long time ago. So we had a long time of green flag running a tire down. And you can see there, that's, that's actually it. really... There's a contact on yeah. the pit exit for Chris Davey. So he comes out of the pits, releases the pit limiter, and here's how difficult it is to rejoin oh, safely. he joined Sebring. weight. No, I don't know if you could It's the Paul Street Boys car. They make a bit of contact straight into the tyre wall. Yeah. And excuse me if I'm wrong, I believe we saw that in the real world. Yeah. Did we Which not this year? Yeah, I think we Virtually did. Virtually that same crash. It's Paul Street Boys. I don't think that was really anyone's fault. I think the Paul Street Boys was committing to a line. Yeah. And it just so happened that the Prime GP was there. The, the, neither of them could have seen that coming. I, I don't think that's a race. I think that's a racing incident all yeah. day long. Yeah, as he's just on the racing line. Once you're committed to that corner as well, you, you can't change your line. So I don't mm -hmm. think that's particularly anyone's issue there. Oof, he is just lucky to get away with that full damage as he did. Uh, there we go. And I do apologise, I'm being a bit critical on some of the drivers today. <laughs> I appreciate as someone who was something absurd, like, fourth from last on the live races in LMP2. I'm being, I'm being quite critical. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> right. uh, there you go, you can actually see Novak was backing out of it. Um, it's right at the kerb. Yeah. There you go. I do think that's one of my biggest issues with Sebring, actually. Pit exit? Uh, the fact that the, yeah, the pit exit is absurd. Yeah, you'd almost wish that it could have run on the outside of that dirt for longer, and then you'd come in for turn two, maybe, on the outside. I don't really see how you how you could fix it, in a way, without being really confusing. There we go, they're 9 hours and 31 minutes to go. Martin Novak is back up running, and I don't think he'll be too concerned about getting a penalty there. No. It was probably a racing incident. We had a very similar incident in the first hour, and uh, it was a no... Like a no uh, further investigation sort of deal, so I imagine it'll be a similar deal. And well, the speed of the DPI cars is absolutely incredible down that back straight. And I appreciate it's, they've got nothing on LMP2 cars at Le Mans mm -hmm. normally at yeah. this track. Um, I'm not saying that they wouldn't be faster at, at Le Mans. We, we've proven in this, this sim that they have. It's one of the DPI guys just going into the pits. Perhaps a little bit early, actually. That could be a concern as we get into the nine hours' time. And Bradley, I think Bradley, Bradley Sellers is way off strategy, though. They've had a they had a uh, incident early on, and they've been off strategy since. Yes, that would make sense, actually. Nine hours and 30 minutes to go. You don't really want to be coming into the pits. You want to be coming into the pits in about 10 minutes, I'd say, for the DPI and LMB2. Uh, mm. Race leader, George Whitehouse, in the number seven Iris car, and hopefully... Uh, myself and Mia Rose have used up all of the Iris bad luck today. I yeah. suppose it was Eric who was in the car at the time. Mm -hmm. But here we go. In it. I suppose taking off the team, really, the number 07, going to hopefully romp home for the win for Iris. Uh, I'll try and stay on bias as I can. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, to be fair, it probably won't be a bias towards Iris that comes off in the stream. However, it'll be towards the number 72, I would imagine. Let's be frank, uh, Jeff Close is a good guy, so... Uh... Very good guy. <laughs> Hard to not root for his boys, although I, I do uh, I do like to see the uh, small teams doing really well here today. We've got the, you know, the points racing, a really strong run in LMP2. We've got Paul Street Boys, and... Uh, is it... TGM doing really well. I actually don't know if TGM is small or not, but... I, th I think my favourite small team has to be Reading Game Studios Racing. I really like those guys. Very nice <laughs> really? I've heard, I've heard their team owner is a very nice bloke as well. <laughs> and, uh... Well, I did see we had an incident earlier on. Mm -hmm. In the number 72 car. And, uh... Well, I, I don't think we reported it, actually. We should have done it. I was just getting out of bed. I, um... <laughs> I had COVID a few, uh, about a month ago now, actually. Jeez. And uh, since then, for some reason, my sleep schedule has been so, so messed up. It's been unbelievable. So I, I, I go to bed nice and early last night. I was like, I'll get up at nine o'clock or something, you know, and I'll just, I'll just do some, I'll do some laps and get into, get into the groove. Um, and then next thing I know, 
11 o'clock. I'm like, oh, I'll have another half an hour. It'll be okay. Mm. And the next thing I know, it's 10 to 1. I'm like, oh, I've missed driver's briefing. So that was lovely. I missed so, driver's as I... briefing as well today. Hold on. And as I'm in the bath, I'm, I'm getting out of the bath or something. I have the, I have the stream on. I just see my car into the ball. Huh. That was fun. Just be that way sometime. Um, like, uh, for the spa That's race, I, uh, came to watch the race after I'd, you know, done my opening, and I see the guy has missed the pit, and it's spa, right? This is a big track. <laughs> he has to come in for the pit stop for fuel. He just doesn't go to the pits. Oh, no. He has to do the entire lap on, like, half a tank of fuel half a, a lap's worth of fuel. Runs out just before he gets to the uh, bus stop chicane, then our sister car has to push us into the pits. <laughs> That's surprisingly a common occurrence. I'd say that happens at least once every three twenty four hour races. Uh, <laughs> I had that. I was doing a bit of race engineering for Team Iris once. Mm -hmm. It was at a 12 hour Le Mans event, and Chris Gitsoff, uh, our good friend at the Fisk, he's commentated with us a little bit before. Yeah. He uh, missed the pit entry because someone joined our team speaking and put him off. Well, that's his excuse anyway. And, uh, <laughs> it, and he missed the pit entry slightly. Mm -hmm. And he had to do an entire lap. But I had to teach him how to clutch and coast. <laughs> uh, live. And live clutch, clutch and coast and is such a, such a useful little technique to have. Yeah. As... What's interesting? Here we go. The Wall Street Boys has got a penalty. Uh, oh. Drive through to the 753 for causing an avoidable incident at the pit exit. The Paul Street Boys car saw the Prime GP car early and could have slowed down to avoid an incident. I don't think they've seen the same footage as us because there was clearly a bit in the throttle trace where he let off the throttle. Yeah. He clearly tried to avoid the incident. There's, I don't think there's anything he could do there. That is, uh, and I find that's like inconsistent with the previous time that's happened, but oh well, whatever. If I was Paul Street Boys, I'm appealing that incident immediately. Yeah. Unless they know something we didn't know. Of course, we haven't really seen the throttle trace completely, but from my view, he clearly let off the throttle. Yeah, they, they might have... Uh, I wonder if they've like uh, spent some time looking at like, the wheel inputs and everything like more in-depth than we did. That might explain it. Who knows? It's, but... Here's the joy of 12-hour racing. When I started this commentary 40 minutes ago it was yeah. bright outside i look outside it's now pitch black <laughs> it's 20 to 5 I, i'm not really sure how that's happened good old-fashioned late november nothing like a bit of winter weekends especially when you get up late yeah so, the day basically end ends as soon as you wake up two hours or so so there we go. We that's that's I... the long-term effects of coronavirus for you, everyone. Yeah. And I act like it wasn't a problem beforehand for me. <laughs> my schedule. I, I feel like it has been amplified by, uh, by yeah. coronavirus. So so, Oliver Perrikin saying, uh, we stand IPR in this chat. <laughs> Had a really good stint he did, opening that up. He did. I saw him battling for first position actually with Sophie Jones Sophie Jones who another driver who's really come into her own this season <laughs> uh, I actually came up through the R Factor 2 ranks with Sophie Jones a little bit and it's actually quite funny uh, Sophie Sophie Jones every league she's ever raced in I believe I've commentated on most of them so if you oh. were actually to I commentated on her first ever race so I believe if someone was to be very bored they could actually edit her entire career up until this point with me commentating on it all. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a close fight for P8 in LMP2 right now, apparently. Um. As I'm not too sure. Advanced fallback has come into the piss, so we've missed that. Yeah. <laughs> nice and. So what's on confusing feet. is on my timing, there's Emily Callison's two seconds behind the next car, but in the game, timing's completely different. As that um, could be... She did just, did just get around Alejandro Valente, who's pitting right now. That, that could be a DPI car, could it not? Perhaps getting into the, into mm. the next... No, my live races is saying that's not the case at all. Yeah. I see the live races thing as well, actually. That is confusing. Yeah. 
sad. Yeah, because, yeah, the next car up the road is definitely just two seconds ahead, so I don't know why it's saying it's 45 seconds. You can totally see the car in front of her. Do we need to refresh the overlay at all? Because I believe that... Maybe. Mine has 26 minutes to go. That might oh, be there we go. Just but... literally, as soon as I hit refresh, it updated. Yeah, yeah there accurate. we go. I see yeah. what's happened there. We're a few minutes behind on the overlay. And that's been an issue with our factor 2 for a while now, particularly yeah. in these in these races. So I was looking at my watch, and it's quarter to quarter to five. Mm. And I didn't see how we'd have 26 minutes left of, of the hour. Yeah. It might have something to do with me hitting the replay button, I wonder. I don't know. Yes, probably. That would make sense. Or not hitting Actually. the replay button, but like fishing for replays. Yes, I, that's that's probably about right. And uh, that's the issue with our facts too. They've got this wonderful overlay software, and it's probably one of the, the, if not the best broadcast tool in the business. But it's just got, as with everything with our facts too, it's a great idea. But it's just got so many little bugs. Yeah. Speaking of bugs, here's something that really irks me. Heading into the race. Mm -hmm. And you're going to laugh at how pedantic this is. I noticed, as I was practicing about 9 o'clock last night, uh, that the sun does indeed set into Sunset Curve. Yeah. Sunset Bend, sorry. However, what I did notice was the fact that the sun stays constant where it is in the sky. So if you're heading down into one of the hairpins, you can also see the sun setting over, and it's like I'm in completely different orientation to when I'm going down Sunset. Huh. Interesting. And it just slightly annoyed me a little bit. And it could be something to do with physics that I just don't understand yet, which, to be fair, is probably... <laughs> Someone who's not a physics major would be watching a slowly growing Emily Callison in the rear view mirror of Alejandro Valente and the Paul Street Porsches. We've been asked if us wonderful gents are taking interviews at the minute, and well, we like Sky, with such wonderful manners as that, I think we, I think we can make an exception. I'm joking. Yeah. There was no exception. You hop into the lobby. I'll drag you in because we don't have our waiting room. Yes, there we go. Lovely. Well, we don't have our waiting room, do we? Yeah, I just realised this is not the old Visk oh. team speak. I like. Sure. And the interesting thing is, Gem don't even use this broadcast channel for the team speak. Uh, we did it through Discord last yeah. time I commentated, yeah. Last week. Yeah. Okay, I am going to hop over to a far more important battle. This is the battle for first. Mugen versus Iris, yet again. That is literally second place, you can see. Oh, boy! <laughs> yeah. We see this so often between Mugen and Iris. They really are somewhat rivals in all of Raising. There you can see getting a little bit of a gap there's a lot of traffic here actually the iris car is really having to having to navigate through this and there's another dpi car trying to stick his yeah. nose it's the triple six rookie like monsters lapped. there that is rookie like uh, yeah he's been lapped so he needn't get his uh his nose into this business however i think zoltan hives will feel pretty confident you have been in this situation so many times almost if they uh, train their drivers in this situation <laughs> of under immense pressure However, George Whitehouse is a very, very capable driver, particularly in the DPI. I know that he is one of... I believe he's driven to Iris in many DPI cars. Uh, I could be wrong. And... Well, drag I think down he's... Mission. Guy here? Insufficient permissions. Oh, As what? I can't drag him in. I don't have the permissions. Do you have insufficient the permissions? Insufficient permissions. Do I have permissions? Probably not, I would guess. Oh, no. Insufficient permission, which is a lovely, lovely thing to say. Yes, well... But yes, Zoltan Hives, I think, just has a little bit either better pace or better tyres or something. And, well, you can't push too much in these races yeah. with limited tyre sets. Let's uh, hop to the lobby then, I guess. Anyway, yeah, I let's, hop, let's hop down. Channel switched. User joined your channel. Hello, Mr. Sky. How goes it on this fine Sunday? I guess it's evening for you. It is, yeah, it's 10 to 5. It's about the time when most people would be eating while the sane people are taking part in the 12 hours of Sebring. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been an okay, it's, it's been much better than, uh, than previous events. I am looking so forward to sunset um, because I was practicing yesterday um, and just got the 
like the 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 sun in your eyes as you're coming down towards sunset is such a challenge and with all of the uh lower classes the the p2s and the gtes around it's just it's so satisfying to be involved in this great to hear um how has it been from your your angle <laughs> um it's been all right it's been a right. it's been entertaining i'll put i'll definitely say that and that's the important part and some really great battles throughout the field um so you're I was going to say, oh, I, under ahead. I understand that you uh, you were watching me defend against um, one of the other DPIs. I can't remember which one now. Yeah, we were. Um, now, now that you said that, I'm like, who the heck was it? Was it the Prime, maybe? I've got or, no. James, it was the Revolution. James it was the Mike Revolution. Messaged me saying thanks for the fight. Yeah, it was the it was the Revolution one one four. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was by far some of the best racing I've had on this game in the ooh four years that I've been driving. Wow, <laughs> it was it was incredible fun. The thing is, I know how to defend. Yeah, like I can defend. It's just that the 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 pace is just too fast for me in my my part time um, driving. Yeah, I feel that. How I feel actually. Almost yeah. every time. My racecraft is absolutely incredible until the person's faster than me. Then it's not so incredible. <laughs> no, it's incredible when they're faster than me, but they're behind me. Yeah. yeah same. <laughs> I can uh, I can keep someone behind until I start being very scared about having uh, about having to worry about penalties and things and clouding into someone. So then I just kind of let them through. Yeah. 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 No. There's. I've. I've. Because obviously there comes a point where you just sort of go. Okay. Whoa! That's a pass for the lead there. Attempt. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It's uh. No, you're fine. I've got the YouTube delay. Oh, that is an enormous dive. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, dear, they're what still side move. by side. That's gonna uh, do it. A little bit of a. Uh, that's a bit of a reprieve. There is another oh. DPI. Is off. I that's, that's the, the hex. Car. That's your 160 <laughs> getting out of the way. <laughs> LM car has absolutely saved the iris there and George Whitehouse has managed to do a textbook incredible endurance racing move User entered wait the channel. for the opportunity and as we've got another interview I believe from Gus Sonova and it's, it's a blooming party here oh. there we go there we have it there we go but uh, this, uh, is, <laughs> this is what the race has been the entire way through is not only are you having to deal with your own classes it's the other classes have battles going on all the time as well yeah. So you're trying to overtake other classes while defending. Like there's several times when I was defending in my stint, where I was trying so hard to get a car in between myself and the car mm. behind. Because just that, having that breathing space for a straight or two makes such a difference. Yeah. We have had a note about Instant 21. I'll get to that once we finish this interview and we get back into the broadcast channel. Yeah, yeah that's just. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's been absolutely incredible. Hats off to everyone at VIC, yourselves as well. Um, you're doing an absolutely incredible job of documenting all of this. I know exactly how hard it is to uh, to try and get on top of all of the action because it's just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's is it just a battle in MP2 now? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely Alex, insane. Akers Forgax trying to get through and try and say that name quickly when you haven't read it before. Oh, no! And, uh, oh, no He's around! And oh. the Iris woes continue today, and he saved it quite nicely, actually has Aiko's Forgax. And, well, that's the number 66 Iris car, and it really isn't going their way today in LMP2. It yeah. was very lucky there to avoid the wall, because that, that tire wall juts out underneath the bridge, and I can't... He must be... He's going to have to uh, place his lottery numbers down, because that was very, very lucky. He had no control there. I think when you get that much luck, I think your luck gets used up very quickly, so I don't think yeah. you have much of a chance at the lottery <laughs> this evening. Um, so, now that you're uh, out of the car, when do you think you'll be back in? Uh, I've got actually got a bit of a gap here, I'm pretty sure, because uh, the other two drivers uh, have deadlines by which they need to stop driving. Yeah. Uh, so I'm probably going to be finishing the race, and I'm probably going to have a silly like two, three hour stint at the end of the race. Yeah. Okay. Um, to be able to in in the darkness. So I'm not complaining because I absolutely love driving in the dark. Oh. Uh, but like one of the drivers can't drive past half ten hour time. That mm. is uh, like three and a half hours time. Yeah. Uh, four. I can't count. <laughs> um, and uh, the other driver I think has to stop driving at midnight. Midnight. Mm. 
So I'm going to have a lovely, lovely mammoth stint to endure at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the race. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure we're saving enough tyres at the moment that we can single stint to the end. Yeah. And I uh, remind everyone to please turn on your headlights before the game disqualifies you. And oh, there we go. That was that actually rather coincidental. Down. That was rather coincidally tied with me telling all the Irish drivers to turn their headlights on. Yeah. I've got race control. I've got eyes in the sky. <laughs> Well, we will let you get uh, get some rest in before your mammoth yeah. stint. Um, yeah, thank you very much for uh, for covering this. It's absolutely awesome, um, and it's great fun. So much fun to be involved. Uh, enjoy enjoy your uh, the rest of the race as well. And I have to say, I was down for the same stint as you, and uh, I'm quite glad we've retired now. <laughs> how excited you are to, to do that stint. It was oh man, it's I. The thing is, every because because obviously I do commentary. It, it, I've had an itch for the past goodness knows how long to get back behind the wheel on a, with a proper race, and to be able to do it in a DPI at Sebring. Is there any better place that you could possibly want to do? Want and to? Here's, here's the thing as well. When you're clearly as confident on your pace as you are for this race, I can't describe to you to, to the viewers who perhaps haven't done much of this before. When you're confident with your pace and you're at one of the historic tracks and the sun's come down, oh. and you're just you're just in the rhythm and you're just enjoying your race. It's so incredible. Uh, I've had plenty of stints at Le Mans at night, and they're just it's so incredible to just be sitting there and just enjoying. I did a stint at Spa at like three in the morning. It's just so nice. You're just confident in your car. Everything's going well for you, and it's just such a rewarding experience. It cannot be described. Yeah, it's one of those things you have to experience to be able to to understand it. Um, I just, it's, oh, it's so wonderful. It's so nice. And I'm watching because um, uh, they just had the Petit Le Mans in real life as well. So watching that and then getting them to jump back into these, it just, it, it satisfies an itch so much. It, it does as well. And I think one of the biggest things I have to say to people, uh, don't make the mistake I did. Don't take months out of sim racing. Uh, without having racing make sure you're always doing a little bit of sim racing because it's so difficult to get back into because you, you tend to remember the you look back fondly on the good times but you tend to remember the, the difficult races a lot more and once you've had a couple of a run of a couple of difficult races like i had this year it, you get so unmotivated to do a two-hour stint but do it doing spa again uh, earlier in the a couple of months ago now actually it was last month yeah last month this week actually and it's so it's just such a rewarding experience to race these cars and this game. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the thing as well. Is I've I've um, R Factor Two gets a lot of um, flack, let's say. But how many other games can you have all of these cars on this track with the sun setting and exactly. the possibility of there being a sprinkling of rain in about two hours? I did not know that. Oh, well. that's, that's a bit of insider information for you, then. And, and once r Factor 2 works, and it, once you yep. have to get through all of the technical issues, and yep. you're like, oh, I re you, know, you get up in the morning, you know, I don't think I can be bothered for today. But the second you're in the car, and the game is working as well as the game can work, it is genuinely the most fun simulation on this planet. Thank you. Yes, I totally agree. That is absolutely how I feel. And it's the reason, even before the UI update, you, you went through all of the JSON files and you did all of the, the file diving that you had to do. Exactly. To get to the track. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, it's, this, it's, just, it's just like, um, it's just like um, uh, real life racing. You go through, you go through all of the uh, paperwork to get your license, put your money down to, to gradually get in the car, get on the track, do all of the checks and everything, and finally you sit in the cockpit and it's like, this is why I'm doing this. Yes, yeah, so I, I find that for me, it comes a little bit after I, I get into the car. It's not quite like... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It does take, it does take five minutes, yes. but it's, it's, in that first, it's always that first yes. stint where you blow the cobwebs off and, and it's like, okay, I'm getting into the pattern, I'm getting into the rhythm, the car's feeling about balanced, and you can really Gold start to... in ten seconds. Oh, okay, another code 80. What has five, caused that, that then? Four, three, two... One. Go dead in force. Go dead in force. So, anyway, I think we'll let you go yes. and rest. Ike, thank you very much for this interview. It's been very interesting indeed, especially to see someone 
who I assume is not new to not, not new to this. I would say four years of experience, but certainly new to Visk. Uh, I don't believe I've seen your name. No, I've, I've been here before. I was here uh, last season. HSR has been here for a full season now. Oh yes. User entered your channel. I do recognise your name. From yeah, yeah. I didn't take part in Daytona because I had. Yeah, that'll be it then. Because uh, we've had a quite a few months uh, since oh, we last raced. It's so. been a while, yes. Oh, there we go. There we go for the epic racing. Right, I'll let you get back. You go and have an absolutely incredible stream. And oh, it's the Epic Racing P2. So we'll hop back down to the broadcast channel. Channel switched. User joined your channel. There we go. Could have. And I can tell that he does commentary as well. Uh, very interesting to listen to. And he, he has hit the nail on the head there. R Factor 2. I always wake up for us. Oh, I can't really be bothered for this today. You know, I'm not happy with my bed. And then you actually get into the car and you're like, no, I'm glad I did this. However, we've got a note while we're doing that replay on Instant 21. Instant 21 was the one that the Paul Street Boys got the uh, drive-through penalty for. And I think I think Santu's listening to me. Uh, I'm telling you now because two times I've made a comment, either in another Discord or on the stream, and he's seeming <laughs> to have replied to it. So, Instant 21, further information, all of the current active race stewards looked into this again. Based on throttle, brake and steering trace, we have decided to uphold this penalty. So, uh, my comment on the steering, uh, the throttle was looked at and they've concluded that they're not changed. Here's the incident then, just loses it out of turn one and surprisingly easy to do. And then once the car's gone from you, it's, it's gone. That has to be frustrating. Your uh, David Yunt. It's been a frustrating race overall for a car that qualified on pole. This is uh... four, three, two, one. Go dead. Yes, ended. I feel like it was similar for uh, Epic at uh, Daytona, where they were quite fast in qualifying, but they didn't really back that up in the race. If I do remember that correctly. Um. Seems like that's a car that's good. They're, they're a team that can set up the car for one lap pace, but keeping it together over a race seems to be difficult. Uh, sorry, I was, I was checking the um, football score rather professionally there. Is that epic racing you were on about? Yeah, I was just saying, they, they, I, yeah, yes, I believe they were similar in Daytona in that they qualified well, but then during the race they didn't have the same success. Yes, I, I believe that's the case. So... It's challenging to get these cars, uh, especially these, uh, you can, you can finesse a car over one lap, but I, a lot of the handling gremlins will really come out over the course of a 12 or a 24 hour race. And especially, and I sound like a broken record going on about this, but especially with the tire set rules. Yeah. Um, because, you know, anyone can, do, and I think the tire set rules made me probably a second slower in practice. Because, sure, you can go into a 46-whatever over your first lap of your stint. But it's then when you realise, I've made my tyres overheat, and now they're going to last about three laps. <laughs> and that was my problem. I remember it was ARL Le Mans this year, actually. We were told all the way through the build-up to the race, the week before the race, that the it was similar to how Visk does it, actually, where the tyres and the fuel is consecutive. <laughs> So you don't lose any time by changing tyres. So I, I went into my practice and I absolutely draped the tyres. It was, you know, it was incredible. They were on the edge and they, they'd basically be at about 70% by the time I come into the pits. And yeah. then it gets to the Friday before the race. The race was on Saturday. And it goes, by the way, you've got the double stick. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, that's good. Um, so on that note, this is a battle that's picking up again. It's the 66 Iris I'm trying to orchestrate a recovery drive on the back of the 52. That would be the Protocharge Sport LMP2 car. That's a team. Did. That was very close indeed with the GT LM car, and that's just how difficult it can be into that corner. Now, looking to the outside, he's having to go defensive. Is the car ahead? So you'd have just mentioned who it was, but I. Oh, I wasn't listening. Okay. So Andrew go, Holland. You. There you go. Arlo Andrew yeah. Holland. Yeah. And so I do apologise. I wasn't expecting to commentate this much, so I haven't done any notes for this race. <laughs> on me. Uh, 
Uh, oh, fine. Not that my commentary is particularly amplified with notes anyway. But yeah, <laughs> here we go then. Uh, Forgax and Holloman, there we go, through the hairpin. I believe that's called the hairpin, is it not? Yep, just straight up the hairpin. The Americans do love their, their <laughs> simple like the kink at Road America. I yeah. <laughs> And uh, there we go then, Forex gets the position, 8th position for the 66 car, and it was the 66 that we just saw into the barrier at sunset about half an hour ago, was it not? Yeah, uh, the recovery drive begins. We're on to the timing board. I always say whenever I'm doing some racing, so long as you're on the uh, scoreboard on the broadcast, you're doing okay, so they're back on it. I usually say as long as you're on the black stuff, it's okay, but it's not really black at Sebring, so I suppose it doesn't really make it. Makes sense. And, uh, well, immediately eight times of a gap. You just see how much pace that Iris car has got. And I was seeing actually a lot of the Iris uh, drivers who are a bit concerned with the fact that that Mia Rose disconnects uh, lost Mia Rose three laps. Yeah, that's. You can see, uh... she's already the fast fastest in the field. I will double check for you. Uh, the issue with race view is that not race view live races i forgot we switched is that it doesn't uh, it doesn't separate the classes I, I just wish they could have like a little thing i could see all the classes yeah. separately well, the one thing Rose iris can't say is it's uh biased by the stewards because the owner of iris is the head steward so <laughs> oh yes exactly <laughs> and uh i think they've been pretty fair on iris yeah and uh the penalty last night was mm. pretty fair, I'd say. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I drive for them, so I, I'll probably get a slap on the wrist for these comments. <laughs> <laughs> In about half an hour time. Well, I will be commentating every race because Jeff Close has fired me. Ay ay ay. If I'm driving the number seventy-two next race, you know why. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oof, man. <laughs> you, you can see how fast those DPIs are like, yeah, Mia Rose is sending it. Gone. Gone. Yeah, Another it's DPI. incredible. And I, I drove the DPI when it first came out for Iris yeah. and Silverstone, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really interesting. And that wasn't even with the balance of performance. That, that wasn't the thing yet. And the straight line speed is just incredible. The, the amount you can bully GT LM cars in a DPI is unbelievable. You can send you can send a dive bomb from so far back, and you won't even be in the same postcode by the time you're at the apex. Okay, so Santu Ankvis uh, wanted to uh, inform me that Jeff Close is not currently the head steward. He is. So um, I am sorry for everyone to everyone involved for implying that. So we hit the nine hour remaining mark. The there sun we go. getting low in the sky. The shadows getting long. This is what I'm excited for in the real world. For 24 hours of Sebring today. Yeah. And Wait, are the they doing the race and the qualifying pain. today? No, it's the race and qual the qualifying is now, and then qualifying uh, qualifying is now, and then the race is in a couple of hours. Wow. That's uh. You, you right. forget with the 24 hour series, it's not particularly professional teams. Yeah. So. Yeah, it is. The, the teams aren't exactly professional, so it, a lot of the time it's. I think it was, I think it's 15 grand if you want to go and do Dubai. So it's not exactly, and that's as a team. Hmm. So it's not the, uh, it's not the most expensive series to get into. Huh. Yeah, no. It's uh, designed so that basically gentlemen drivers can get involved. Here we go then, hourly report. George Whitehouse is leading in DPI for Team Iris. Overall lead for Team Iris, and this is the first time this season, I believe, they've led overall. I don't think they got up to the lead in DPI at Daytona. There's a battle actually going on behind. We'll get to that straight after the hourly report. Zeldon Hive for Mugen. Mugen continuing their grasp on all these kind of unofficially named B tier series with the number four car, 96 laps. So they haven't quite completed that 97 lap just yet. So it shows how much of a grasp George Whitehouse has got on this. Simon Marshall in the 999 team. Rookie Monsters, that is a name that has been around forever. Rookie Monsters it seems to be in every office truly. Really. They're 95 laps. Taylor Lane in the other team at Rookie Monsters car, the upside down Rookie Monsters car, the number 666. Alex Van Hal for Revolution Sim Racing is in fifth. Tom Parson in sixth. Jack May seventh for Epic Racing. Alex Skinner. Didn't know Alex was driving in DPI. He's in eighth. Alex Skinner's driving? Any drivers. 
whilst driving, I believe. Zondo <laughs> Alex has done a few stints for Epic Racing before. Peter Williamson is in 10th for Hex. And finally, DNF is Demia Kakato for Prime GP in the number 69. And that is a massive shame for Prime GP. Heading into LMP2 then, we have Sven Gillard leading in the number 77 team Iris car. So it's a double for Iris. Owen, he did tell me how to pronounce his name. I've forgotten. Owen AK, he told me to call him. <laughs> so I, I went for Kival Husik, because I've commentated on him actually in an F1 2020 league yeah. before. And he was, he's a very good driver indeed, at least in that discipline. Forrest McCormack is in the number 28 car. I think that's number 28. Can't quite see on the stream. There you go, he's the number 28. Alejandro Valente in the number 87. Adrian Diego in the... I can't even see that, actually, because of uh, the camera angle. That's These the valet the there. The valet, there we go. Stan Villestre for the other valet. And then Emily Callison for Prime GP. Aiko Forgax on the recovery drive of the number 66. Iris, Andrew Hollam for the Britsy car. Fabian Ball for the Reading Game Studios, who, of course, had 167 seconds of damage earlier in the race. So I believe we've got a second page of LMP2. But there you go. These are some DNFs, and some people have had various issues earlier on. Julian Frack for GRG. Ada Erkan for Into the Points. And, of course, Eric Kumadi in my car, retired from the race with an engine issue at turn one. Uh, an engine issue caused by a rather large G impact. Here we go then, GTLM, the final category. There's no GT uh, Daytona or LMP3 in VISC. Simon Kingsbury for TGM Simsport, 84 laps. And the number 97, the other TGM Simsport car, the sister car, Oliver Verhelst, Martin Novak, for Paul Street Boys after that penalty for the incident at Turn 1, which I believe was Martin Novak. Then Toussaint Fartels for Global Endurance Racing, Miel Evers for Final Bar Motorsport in the number 445, the 777 Mia Rose, they were dominating until a disconnect, which sometimes happens with Australians and their rather unreliable internet. Oh. Joe Goodstitis in the number 30 for 360 Motorsports, Zoltan Kovacs 754, Paul Street Boys, the sister car to Martin Novak. Paul G. Venter for Logistical Nightmare Racing, 429. And then in 10th is Hexim Racing, Dave Plummer, who I sincerely hope is a plumber. <laughs> and then Chris Davies for Prime GP, uh, last overall, but not least. And there we go, we're back. As you can see, the sun setting over Sunset Bend. Why it's called Sunset Bend. And we're back. We are on board with the 754. 10th, uh, 8th, sorry, in GTLM. In and we've time. got... Go ahead. And this is where you start to think we've got quite a while to go. And everyone's just kind of relaxed, trying to get into their stints. The yeah, Rose was angry at an LMP2 car there in front of her. Giving them a flash of the lights. Couldn't tell why. Unlapped herself to second place in GTLMO, at least one of the laps. Got a few to make up. Yeah. Been a lot of dram drama and DPI in the last bit. Because he was quite a... Whoa! One of the uh, Iris DPIs getting a little bit out of shape. Yeah, I was surprised when you mentioned that Iris never led at uh, Daytona. I was then started skipping through the Daytona stream. Because I was like, they must have led at some point. I feel like they did. And then, nope. You're right, they did not lead at any point in Daytona. Unless it was like one lap or two that I missed. Yeah, Daytona was similar to this in that I, uh, Epic, the number, which number is it? The number, I believe, 89, started that race on pole and then by the end was nowhere. Um, so... It's, uh... a matter of getting either David Yutz some luck or, I don't know, not worked out. Alex Skinner in that car right now. And uh, very surprised. The race directors really, really aren't uh, very interested in not having an allegiance to any of these teams, do they? <laughs> but, uh, they, do a, they do a remarkable job at being unbiased, as per usual. And, you know, in Sector 1, 
and that's not clearing it actually. So that might be something a little bit. There it goes, gone. So I imagine it's just spin for someone, and we'll find out in about 10 seconds' time. Well, oh, that's a code 80. It looks like it could be a code 80 actually. I can see someone dropping down the order slightly. Uh, so I think if you had two yellows in sector one, uh, there we go. It's Martin Novak, I think. Oh no, it is Martin Novak. I thought he was in a minor position. No, he's crashed out of a podium, and I think he's back going. And yeah. I think he might have a little bit of suspension damage. If we could get an onboard camera, we'd be able to tell you with the steering wheel. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, Christian. Yeah. Well, there we go. That is suspension damage. He's crabbing a little bit, and this could be a lot of pit stop time for Martin Novak in the Paul Street Boys number 753. You can see how much he's having to rally that car around. He's like Colin McRae, but he doesn't want to be like Colin McRae. <laughs> he wants to be like Alejandro Pierguidi, although perhaps not in a Porsche. Yeah. And that's got to be one of the greatest commentary quotes I've ever made. And uh, <laughs> oh, you can see how difficult it is to drive that car. Yeah, the Porsche is already difficult to drive. You add in some, uh, some uh, what is it? What do they call it in NASCAR? I can't remember what they call it. I don't watch enough NASCAR, to be frank. But, uh, yeah, needing to counter-steer that, probably not helping either. Um, as this is going on, this is a battle for position building up. The 114, I think that's the RSR car. They've got an Iris LMP2 between them, but this is the battle for fourth in DPI heating up. Taylor Lane not able to get around the Iris. And Iris actually doing pretty well to stay with these LMP2 cars. Not really holding up the Rookie Monsters 666. Yellow in Sector 1 briefly. Oh yeah, there's the, uh, it's the 160 off. That's the Hex off on the left. Oh dear. The Sky's car. As here we go, Taylor Lane trying to get closing up to the wow. head of him and oh that is a massive massive close and uh well i think he almost thought about sticking his nose there for a second that's on van hall in the number one four one one four up at least going to get very close indeed he's going to have a look he's going to think better of it this is a very slow second gear corner it's very deceptive these next two corners uh, 150 160 is fine says ike sky they head okay. down into probably my least favourite corner on this track. Second gear, and it looks a lot faster than it actually is. Yeah, tower is be, such a difficult corner to get right. You can never be... You're either too slow or too fast in there. There's never any... Wow. Then here we go. Going for the move into down the into the final section. That is such a difficult place to make an overtake. And he has done it perfectly, has Taylor Lane. And now the Iris car is actually pulling... It's actually gaining. <laughs> and uh, I don't think that's going to be something that he puts in his personal highlight reel as leaders in the 07 are into the pits. Yeah, I think Iris is on a interesting sort of situation where they're on a different strategy, although they've really made up a lot of time because they're already on pit exit. They're going to come out just in second, not too far behind Hive. So I think Iris is... I think that 07 Iris is... Probably the fastest of the DPIs out there right now. Well, save Taylor Lane. Taylor Lane has the fastest lap. But uh, they're a lap down right now. Still though. There we go. And if you don't mind, Christian, yep. I might have to leave you alone about five minutes. Because all this talking is going to be a slight headache. I want to go get some paracetamol. And okay. A coffee. So, Fair enough. I'll, uh, I'll be back in a moment. Alrighty. Just you and me, chat. Yeah, there's been some really impressive passes in this race. Um, and I, I think we have to, other than a few clunky moments around pit exit, I think we have to really compliment the drivers. I, I, from my, where I'm sitting, the driving standards have seemed quite impressive. Um, I will just note, Alex Van Maul seems a little bit off the pace in that Iris stay with him. Um, given that the... Uh, I wonder if, is that the leading Iris? Yes, it is. That's the LMP2 leader. Sticking on the number... the sixth place DPI right now. This is not for position, actually. It's technically a uh, lapse difference between the two cars. Then Gilhold. Running fourth. 
Actually, no, Sven Gilhold has a lap on, uh, that's actually to put another lap down on that, uh, RSR DPI. Not that any of it matters. Zoltan Hives in the pit, so, yeah, I think the Iris has solidified itself. Strategy seems to be working the 07's way. As this is going on, there's a battle developing in GTLM. That's a battle for the lead. TGM versus TGM. I wonder if they entered this race thinking they had a real shot at winning. Maybe they did. I'm sure they were paying attention to the scoreboards and timing throughout the week. Open practice more than I was. Three and a half seconds separating the two TGM cars. I think this is the first time we've had an M8 leading in the VIS. I'm not going to lie. Um, go for it. Go. Pretty point. Very booth. This word. This. Can't tell you, chat. Secret. Doing okay to maintain the gap. His teammates, we can see the sun below the horizon now. The lights are on along the pit straight, and man, R Factor Two can look so good. Um, I, I think R Factor Two probably has some of the best environmental lighting. In sim racing. Um, it's actually funny. I find the environments are almost more attractive than the cars sometimes. This game. In terms of quality and detail. So there's Mia Rose. Going to get herself one lap closer to the lead lap. She's been flying. I would say in GTLM it's hard to think of someone who's been stronger than Mia Rose. She gets her lap back on... The, uh, leading Diamond Kingsbury. And actually, uh, I'm back. So, hello, Christian. Hello. Yeah, so, really unleashing my inner James Hunt take <laughs> whilst on stream. Um, anyway, uh, I can probably get sued for some form of defamation for that. Anyway, <laughs> we uh, damning myself to a libel lawsuit. The Mia Rose has been someone really, really good, actually. Uh, she's only been dim racing for a handful of months now I can't remember seeing a name before the Daytona 24 hours we did uh, yeah, two months ago I, it's interesting I saw her s associated with Blue Steel but I think she did Daytona with Blue Steel not Iris so I might be wrong whoa whoa dear. well that is an aptly timed green freeze <laughs> yeah. I didn't quite see what happened there uh there you go, that was the car involved. Uh... That was Simon Kingsley, and... No, it wasn't actually. It was Oliver Verhelst in the TGM Simsport trying to lap the Prime GP. So, I think the Prime GP got a little bit unsighted after colliding, uh, not colliding, but after being lapped by the LMP2. And the TGM Simsport just got a little bit nervous of it all. It does. It's quite oh. incredible. Yeah. And there we go. That was a spin. So, no major drama there. I don't think anyone, although yeah. they last time, I don't think anyone will get a penalty. Uh, we know what happened. Oh, to be fair, looking from the external shot, I think there might be a penalty coming to TGM Sim Sports way. I think depending on whether the stewards think that the, the blue flag rules apply there, and depending on the damage as well to Chris Davies, I think he looks like he's going quite nicely. Yeah. Sort of a difficult question there. Um, goes on. Battle continues. Gap is continuing to close, though, here, between the two TGM Sim Sports cars. Uh, they might be teammates, but uh, when a 12 hours of Sebring win is on the line, 
may not care very much of your teammates anymore at a certain point. And of course, we are one of the... In fact, we're the only R Factor 2 League I can think of that does the 12 hours this evening. And also the only R Factor 2 League I can think of that does the 24 hours of Daytona, at least yearly. Yeah. Therefore, this is the only place to get two of your three Endurance Triple Crown medals. That's true. I hadn't thought of that. Why don't we make a big thing about that? There we go. <laughs> this is, of course, you forget the second annual running of this event. Yeah. Already a year ago, the last one. That is quite incredible. Yes. What a journey it has been to get here. It's, it's uh... been a journey and a half. As, uh, I, I do like how this has kept roughly the same calendar. Yeah. It means that you can really, you can really get, you can really look forward to the events because you know what's coming. There's not like um, other other leagues where they have a completely different calendar every year. You, you have the events that you'd like and that you know you want to go to, and you know it creates a bit of a bit of a heritage. I mean, already we can look at the differences and the progression from year to year. Mm -hmm. and of course, uh, second time we've raced the twelve hours. But the third time we've raced at Sebring, we did the, 12, uh, the six hours this year. Yeah, in the, uh, the historic, cars. yeah. Fortunately, my internet is very angry at me that entire race, and I did not get to do much with that. And you damned me to commentating almost all six hours, and yeah. most of it solo. Yeah, I was, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kept, like, joining for, like, five minutes, and then would just die, and I'd be like, I swear to God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was quite awkward, and I have to say, commentating with Alex Skinner in your ear is one of the most difficult things I've ever done. Because I'd make a, a, an assured comment: "Is here we go." Actually, I'll hold that thought. As now he's going to make move is Oliver Verhelst on the BMW TGM Sin Sports. They've got a Ferrari and BMW. Apparently, they know and how to I make don't... both of those cars fast, given the running one-two with them. And well, he's he's. Got to be very careful with this move here. I don't think Verhelst will be at all. As here we go, the best camera shot in all of GT racing, I have to feel. <laughs> and I am willing to fight people over that statement. <laughs> and oh, you can see he doesn't want to make... He could probably have made a move at this stage. And now I think this is going to be it. Heading down into Sunset. This is really going to show whether these guys are willing to fight or not. And I think it's going to be a battle of who can break later. They're going to be very, very brave on the brakes into Sunset. This can go wrong very, very easily. And I think Verhels just makes the move on Simon Kingsbury. And I don't think the teammates really wanted to fight that out too much. So there you have it. A textbook move indeed. And I think he got very lucky with the bumps, bumps at this track. Well, being the only reason this track is historic. There's a battle that's been going on the entire race. It's the number 11 ballet car and the number 87 Iris back at it again. First, seeing a ballet car in white has got to be the biggest sin to humanity. <laughs> Whoa! That was almost very, very difficult. He's lost it. At Le Mans, I believe that corner's called. Yep. And Alejandro Valente, I cannot describe how commendable it is that he's managed to avoid any major contact in that incident. Very fortunate. Man. Very, very well done, Alejandro Valente. Lots of uh, close calls today. <laughs> and uh, spot the Irish driver in this commentary box. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But yes, looking at the replay, he did very well there, did Alejandro Valente. And well, that Valet VMS sunned its car into the wall and not what they would like at all. Here we go. Sammy Kingsbury just dropping back a little bit. He's lost about nine tenths on this lap already. Yeah. And I don't think he'll be fighting. I think he'll use this opportunity actually to save his tyres. They they know that if, he, if he's not in the lead, I'm sure this is the only person he'd want in the lead other than him. Yeah. And uh, they know it's a very long race and they can always swap positions later. That would be the he thing, to, imagine. He needs to save his tyres and stay in touch, I'd say. If this were my two cars, I would probably say don't battle now. Just work together. Do a bit of a karting tactic. We've got eight hours to go. We'll battle later in the race. We just need to basically take on the field together, really. We know we're going to have trouble for Mia Rose later on in the race, I would imagine. Yeah, if she keeps up so. the pace she's had. 
Yeah. Uh, the teams that have opted... There we go. Simon King's written to the pits. So we know that the teams now who have opted to run four hour, four hour, four hour for their three drivers, they will be coming into the pits in about 38 minutes of time. Uh, that will be... Uh, I can tell you for a fact it will be uh, Fabian Ball. Ballet will be coming in for his mm -hmm. final pit stop and a driver change. And I only know that because I did their strategy. Giving <laughs> okay. us the beats. There we go. I, uh, you know, name me another team manager that loves the commentary so much. He will tell you their strategy. <laughs> well, let people know. Oh the truth. dear, Laszlo Molna has a little bit of a snap of oversteer. Almost takes the grass. Does well to get out of that. Could you and give Alex Ackerel the details? Yes, I will do. I thought I did. I literally copied it and sent it to him. As uh, we do have to tell you, Alex, if you are watching the, the stream, that uh, sharing this information will result in you uh, having a knock from a very suspicious looking man on your uh, on your door. Very As suspicious Dutch man. Yeah. <laughs> As, uh, I'm trying to figure out what instant number 22 between the 753 and the number 150 was. But uh, it's been a 40 second stop and hold for the number 150. Very diving on Oh, the is it TeamSpeak? Yes, it is TeamSpeak. Sorry. It is TeamSpeak, Alex. I am uh, fortunately paying more attention to the uh, ongoing action on track than I am on the... Uh, Oh, Molnar is really struggling, actually. That's two mistakes he's made in the space of two laps, and he really just needs to relax now and get back into his rhythm, because quickly two mistakes turns into three, and he's been lucky to get away with the last two. And, uh, well, I think he needs to just take a lap, perhaps put it into a lower engine mode, just yeah. relax and get back, get that pace back up. He is probably on double-stinted tyres at this stage in the race. And with about 40 minutes until he'll be expected to box, yeah. he needs to just relax and be ready to ready to just get back into his rhythm. Yeah, it's it's like what oh what's going on there? It's like what you were saying to uh, like Sky there about how you need a bit to get into our factor too. Exactly. Um, no one wants to drive our factor too, but once they're driving it, it's very yeah. Cool. Just wonder if he's having a similar experience right now, where he's just trying to. Has he just got into the car? I think so. That would explain it then. Yeah. It's just simple trying to push too hard too early. Yeah. And uh, well, I'm only I'm only making these comments because I know I've been in that I've been in that position many times before, trying to making a couple of mistakes in your first few laps, and it's a very difficult position to be in. Yeah. And recovering from that as well during a stint when you. It's worse when you actually have a bit of a crash and you have to come into the pits. Yeah. But when you've made two mistakes, had maybe a half spin, it's really, really difficult to get... The psychological effect on you is... You don't want to look like a melon in half an hour, <laughs> I'm trying to say. This always That's reminds me good. of the EERC's, like, 1,000 kilometers of Sebring they did this year, and I ended up getting dragged into a car. I had not committed to running that race. I hadn't practiced that race. And, but no one was there to drive, so I got dragged in. And it was raining, and I was in an LMP2 car with no practice. Um. Yes, I, I drove that race as well. And I have to say, this place in the rain is quite... Uh, well, it's, it's quite the interesting one, we'll, we'll put it that way. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I was quite impressed with my performance that race. Yeah. I managed to, I believe... I was one of the fastest in the change. User joined your channel. So here we go. Alex Ackerel has joined the commentary. And well, we're just waiting for him to set up his microphone. And then he will be joining us. His wonderful voice. I will probably run and get breakfast and coffee. And then I'll try and come back as quickly as I can. But Yes, that makes sense. I know I've got... Well, I, I should probably... Uh, I could probably do it going at about 6 o'clock, actually, because I've got a race at 8, and I haven't done... I've done about two laps of practice for it, and <laughs> it's, it's on our factor of ones, so but it shouldn't be the most difficult race to get up to speed in, but... Uh, I'm always surprised when I hear there's still our factor one leagues. Well, it's not really a, a... it's more of a fun thing, it's not really anything competitive, so... Okay. Like, has I don't think... Everyone 
who would do that gone to Automobilista at this point? That's what it'd be my thought. Uh, well, I think most of the people, it's the nostalgia factor. Uh, uh, that game is older than me, so I can't act like I was there back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I remember so when I got that game in 2008. Not 2008, actually, I got it much later. I must have gotten like 20. Eleven, I think I got our Factor One for the first time. So our Factor Two was basically coming out when I got it. I got our Factor Two in the summer of 2019. Our Factor One, sorry, in the summer of 2019. It was I had a really poor computer because I finally upgraded my computer actually after yeah. many years of struggling with an i3. As oh dear, <laughs> the Apple <laughs> car is uh, pushed out wide a little bit by the 754, and I don't think there's too much in that. He's lucky to get away with it, nonetheless. But yes, it was it was a good introduction to sim racing. Actually, I just got my brand new Hori RWA wheel, and uh, we were racing in this. Well, I wasn't racing personally. We were in this little league that was going on, and it was a really good introduction to sim racing, especially for someone who had a really poor computer. Yeah. So I'll be always be thankful for the game for that, and I had some very good races on there. But uh, it, and what impressed me as well was how similar it is actually to R Factor Two. Mm -hmm. Like, you can still very readily find assets in R Factor 2 that were used in R Factor 1. Yeah. Uh, for, for example, actually, Tobias was complaining about it earlier, but you know when the big announcement says, for oh, non-essential personnel, please leave the quid now? Yeah. That was, of course, from R Factor 1. It's <laughs> the same voice line, I believe. <sighs> I actually never did an online race in R Factor 1, so I don't know the details of how they're similar. It's more in the presentation. It's quite mm. similar, not so much with the new UI, but it, yeah. it was very similar back in, well, even when I started playing R Factor 2, which was May last year, I believe. Which is a bit misleading, because I've been in and around running cars in R Factor 2 leagues for, well, since about summer 2019, actually. It was just actually racing R Factor 2. But here we go, then. We're very, very late into the day now. I believe the server, yeah, I can check for you, actually, you know, what the server's running on. The server is running on British time, so it's 17.35 local time. Server so time, uh, just the same as it is in real life. And, hello uh, there. Hello, oh my it. goodness. Alex has arrived. Um, do you still have the stuff for TeamViewer set up, uh, Tom? I have TeamViewer set up indeed, so... Uh, oh no, I've got a new computer, I need to reinstall it. Okay. There we go. Just give me a moment. Oh yeah, no rush. I, uh, I search for how I download TV. Um, so yeah, how's it going, Alex? Welcome to the broadcast. It's not bad, because I was working, and I was doing my schoolwork, and I was... And then I finished it all. I'm like, I'm not that tired yet. What time is it? Oh, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to build a radical livery. <laughs> Random and thoughts. Because I thought of this great league in a set of Corsa that I'm <laughs> going to transfer to R Factor 2, which is multi class, except that it's slower. It's going to be called the slow motion Visk League. <laughs> 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 right? Because it's it's going to be like that because. It, whoa, 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 what was that? I think the RSR car just went straight at tower. That's what just happened there. Sorry. Uh, where is that? Uh, I am not... Oh, I am live. Okay. Um, You'll have to give me a moment, Christian. The uh, team viewer is just installing. Oh, no worries. Just uh, it's, a, it's a small download. However, when you're doing it through a terminal window, it takes quite a while. Well, it says I've only got 11 seconds left, so there we go. The more you know. Battle going on for 7th in GTLM as we're seeing the fine Avon car get some legs under it. Trying to get a move done on the Paul Street Boys. 754 gets it done into Sunset. No questions asked. As easy as you like. That was hardly even a struggle. All the traffic. There you go. Could you send me the information, please? I believe I've got it. Alrighty. I will set this up so it's usable for you. Oh, dear me, mate. I've got to. Uh, all these complicated Linux things I don't understand. I've got to put <laughs> on. 
Oh. There. But yeah. And then I was working on this radical livery, which is not a good livery. <laughs> <laughs> but if we ever do run this league, which by the way is in place of prototypes, radical SR3s. Yeah. And if I was running in a set of Corsa and I had my wide span of cars, yeah. in place of GT cars would be Honda Civic Group A's. So an EG6. <laughs> um, just very basic, right? Age pattern. Yeah. All the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But I could put in a BTCC Honda Civic. Oh, I need to do one more thing here for Tom's sake, sorry. Hmm, all good. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> Once it never happens. Yeah. As if by magic, I believe I can now access the Canadian's computer. The wonders of modern technology, that is. Zach, set this up nice for you. So you can see everything you need. Where the heck is it? There you go. So you should be good. There's a wonderful black screen. I don't know if that was intended. Um, uh, is it still black? No, there we go. Okay. Good job. Prompt is wow, you've really got a fancy setup here. I can do all of my stuff here, I can do all my stuff here. Yeah, oh, that's very impressive. I tried. All right, I'll be back. I'll probably be like 15 20 minutes, I think, just to run and get something to eat and get a coffee. Yep, lovely. And then when Great. you come back, I'll probably drop out for a couple of hours to do the thing and then be back with you, lovely people, for the rest of the race, most likely. Okay. And, uh, well, as Christian's gone, and, uh, well, I think he deserves it. He has been commentating for three and a half hours, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. I'm going to yes. quickly do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we'll quickly refresh the overlay, which I think it wants me to do that at the bottom of the screen. Oh, dear. Well, we won't refresh the overlay then. I don't want to break Christian's computer from halfway across the world. And, uh, well, oh. here we go, then. Let's have a look at what's going on. Let's go trackside with the leader. Here is George Whitehouse in the Team Iris car. And, uh, well, how are you today, Alex, actually? I'm doing great. I just woke up. <laughs> I, I believe this is our, our first ever commentary together as a duo. I think so. I think so. Uh, the only other time that I've ever commentated on a race is the uh, GRG Six Hours of Spa. I think. Well, there you have it then. So, definitely the first time I commentated on a race together. And yes. I'm going to uh, figure out which window I need to close down here, because I want to see my Discord. There we go. And, uh, well, it's been, it's been a rather successful race so far. Eight hours left in the uh, 12 hours of Sebring. And I'll give you some penalty notes. Instant number 24. Uh, car 445 and car 38. 60 seconds stop and go for 38 major avoidable contact and the most sarcastic note for Stuart I have ever seen. In bold, do better. And a, a rather random thought. That reminds me quite a lot of old school reports that you dig up in your grandparents' loft. Very oh. However, oh, what we. Uh, oh. White House just uh, caught, um, got loose out of uh, the hairpin. But uh, there we go. There's a bit of a battle going on actually between Alejandro Valente and Forrest McCormack. You know, it's not a battle currently, but it will be momentarily as Alejandro Valente overtakes, laps himself. I believe that's a DPI actually. So Valente in the naughty book a little bit. And, uh, well, he's going to be overtaken again. It might be. I think it's one of the GRG cars. I believe it is a DPI. I've got yellow in sector two, and I'll check on the track map what that is. I don't believe it's much, regardless. There's... No, it isn't. But, uh, yes, we, we, we're in the loft, and oh dear, the DPI car gets a little bit, a little bit squirrely onto the grass. Let's have a look if there's any more close battles going on. I'm trying to have a look down GTLM because I don't feel like we do GTLM too much justice. And here we go, Neil Evers and Richard Sismadia. 
are rather close on track. It's not a particularly close battle, this, but it will be at some stage. The Aston Martin, the finer Vond car. And uh, yes, back to what I was, I was trying to say, and it's a very rather random story, but it made me chuckle quite a bit. We were, we were going through the loft, and uh, we found an old school report of my grandmother's, and it was about halfway down the page, it was music, and the note was just three simple words. Words fail me, full stop. And it reminded me a little bit of that, did the, uh, did the steward do better, full stop there. And uh, it's the rather polite slap on the wrists when people don't really want to cause too much offence. And here we go, may I ever slaps someone quite comfortably. And the Paul Street Boys car is going to try and get this gap down. I don't think he'll do a particularly great job at it. However, we've got 22 minutes until the 8 hour mark. And, well, we've still got 8 hours to go. As Incident 24 is being appealed, penalty is pending for the time being. I don't really have the appeal rules up here. Let me refer to the VISC sporting regulations, the 21 pages of them. Incidents and sanctions, I imagine. Uh, protests, there we go. Uh, drivers are given the opportunity during and after all sessions to report on incidents that should be. All reports must be submitted before 23.59 on the day of the conclusion of the event. That's quite interesting for the 12 hour race, however, because does that mean it's tomorrow? So you've got until a minute before Monday, or... Uh, and it doesn't say anything, say anything about there being a sanction for your protest and appeal not being upheld. So, I believe... I'm just trying to look back for this incident. You guys probably already seen it, but I haven't, so... I haven't seen the incident either. I, I don't think we've caught it on the stream. So here we go. There's a big battle going on now between Forrest McCormack and Alejandro Valente. We missed the overtake. Uh, I noticed that I'd clicked on two Iris cars in a row, so I thought for the sake of impartiality, I'd uh, switch away from it. But nope, the Iris car then gives us the only on-track overtake we've had for, for a, few, uh, a few minutes. So... My is... Let's look bit. back, because still has damage here, 13 minutes ago. Because I feel like... Hmm. What is... Hold on a moment, I just gotta figure out which car is the 38 car. <laughs> um... This has been an interesting note from James Like who says, I have a question regarding penalties for avoidable contact. I was, wow, well, how did I say contact then? My, it was almost as if my, my tongue slipped off there and I, I just slurred. Uh, for avoidable contact, I was hit by car number 160 on lap six. This gave us 77 seconds worth of damage because of this mistake. They only got a drive through which cost them max 30 seconds. This, in my opinion, is not a fair punishment. So my question moving forward, could avoidable contracts, uh, contact on tracks with shorter pit lanes be awarded stop, go, but for tracks with long pit lanes such as Spa, either stay as a drive through or also a stop, go? I don't feel hard done by with the outcome of the stewards, but I just think there's less incentive to behave when it's such a minor penalty versus what damage there is. It's a very interesting point, actually, from James Like. And I know the stewards are still quite clean, uh, keen to be reviewing the rules, as Christian mentioned earlier. Christian, of course, inheriting the uh, role as leader of the race. Let's have a look at Alex Skinner, who is the former owner of the league. He's the founder of the league. I don't think he's officially on the books as the owner anymore. He's racing for Epic Racing in DPI. He's in no man's land a little bit. And to be fair, I think you want to be in no man's land when you're in... A race like this and you're just trying to get back into racing a little bit and just have a bit of fun and uh do you have any comments on the james like comment um i think that that's completely reasonable i think that it's completely reasonable to see 
to be looking at that. I know that I would never look at that, though. <laughs> I'd just be like, okay, they got a penalty. Great. That's just as served. Um, if I was in a race, but, um... I feel like... I feel like, yeah, if... Once that's pointed out, it's more of an issue than if I were to go and look for it myself. Because now I see it like... Because now I'm seeing everything differently. From when I drove to now seeing um, everything from a commentary and from a steward standpoint. It's very interesting. Um, but I think that it's a completely reasonable argument, and I guess it should be looked at, but... Um, but we'll, we'll see how it, how it turns out. As, That's uh, pretty much all that I, I can say. I said in IMSA General, we said in the Team uh, Owners Association, so I might get into a bit of trouble for reading that out on stream. So I'm very sorry to uh, the stewards. But, uh, there's been a bit of contention in chat. Andy Tomlinson said, I'm noticing that GTEs are getting punished a lot for contacts with the prototype. It's, it's the prototypes that are supposed to pass safely. He then goes on to say, my bad, I misread the report that the 445 got punished. Robert Strachan get in, got involved, saying, also you can say that like, the GTEs can do nothing wrong. And, well, I, I, I think I haven't particularly noticed any LMP2s getting, uh, or any GTEs getting into trouble for instance with supposed instance with LMP2s. Uh, I, d I do know, however, that it has annoyed me for many years in league racing now that it does seem like GTEs can do no wrong with certain stewards when really they do need to be at least reasonable with the prototypes. I think prototypes do get, do get blamed for a lot of things that aren't particularly their fault. Uh, bringing our attention to another thing, I just went to go and bring up the YouTube stream. I realized the 23 Hours of Zolder is going on, uh, hosted and ran by Jimmy Broadbent. Um, and they're only four hours in and have nearly reached their goal already. It's lovely. And I, I, don't, I don't think we'd be unreasonable in advertising their, their cause. Uh, if you... I think it's a great cause. Yeah, I believe they they still do that. It's the third annual one, isn't it? Uh, yes, I believe. Is there any reason why it's a 23 hours of solder? It, uh, am I yes. correct in saying that's because of the first one in 2019? They had that server issue, so then they've just kept it as the 23 hours since, or is there a more No, because he, he set up the server for the final time and set it as a one hour race. <laughs> Yes, I remember that. Instead of a 24-hour race, and so then it turned into the 23 hours of Solder. And then they and just they kept just, it as a tradition. They just kept it. Oh, there we go. Well, that's lovely. Um, and, uh, that would irk me, though, because if I won that race, you'd want to say, I won a 24-hour race, but you technically didn't. And that would irk yes. me. Uh, it got dark quickly, said James L, and it does, it, particularly in winter time. As uh, no one knows if R Factor Two simulates winter or summer, it's one of those things that uh, that really it's just kind of a guess <laughs> we have. It's in the mysterious black box of the simulation. Yeah, uh, I can tell you that it's 17:51 local time uh, because we're running on British time in the server. So according to the game, it's about 10 to 6. Okay. Uh, as well, we've got a really good little discussion going on in chat, actually. And I, I can encourage you to keep doing this chat. This is very nice. This stage in the race is my Levers. My, oh, no, dear. Oh, dear, that is quite violent. My Levers in the number four, uh, in the... Sorry, it's not my Levers. It's the Paul Street Boys. I was looking at the wrong thing there. The 754, Richard Sismadia, has had a major impact and now he's got a lot of traffic to contend with. The Iris car doesn't really know what to do there, and there's almost contact. He does really well to avoid any further complications there. And, oh dear, that was such an easy mistake to make. And I thought he'd got away with it going onto the grass out of turn one. And now he's got to, I presumably, crawl back to the pits. I don't see, there we go, he's crabbing on the straight. You can see 
the left hand side of the car driver's right is just a little bit sunk down and now the iris car is having a bit of a battle with a dpi and it's just it's the two dpis actually and um, that is no it's not two dpi sorry it's a lmp2 and a dpi and that was a little bit nervous for a second there yeah um, I'm going to go back and look at that because I want to see what happened there. So let's have a quick catch up on what's going on in the chat. And as I said, I can thank you all in chat for this. As all did Richard Kazmadia has another error and this and won't be a He just rate. goes too fast through T1. It looks like. So easy um, to do, especially on worn tires. You can clip bumps, yeah. and, uh, bumps and just find yourself crashed off. Just went out too far into that dirt and just got loose. And so we will chat. He was—he was a shame actually, because we—he uh, was—he was pushing to catch up to Mile Evers in the final on motorsport car. And uh, well, it's kind of put a B in that bonnet. Uh, well, we'll get to you chat momentarily. There's been a lot of activity, and uh, I can encourage you to keep up this this discussion. It's it's been rather rather nice to look at. A very chilled atmosphere in chat. People uh, usually in YouTube chat, you just get rather annoying spamming. But you know, we've got a really good conversation going on as uh, Richard gets into the pits. So that'll be a little bit of damage, and I don't think he'll particularly enjoy that wait. But let's have a catch up. We've had a lot of activity, so. Uh, there it is on UK time from Robert Strachan. That was pretty. We said that through race view, uh, live race. Sorry, the GTEs can do wrong, but they have less power, less air, less braking. There's no reason why DPI should be diving GTEs, especially. Uh, however, from experience under past races and this week's testing, protos are passing a sketchy number of times. Uh, there's a difference between a sketchy overtake and a dangerous one, says Robert Strachan. The punishments are strict in risk to try and discourage punishable behaviour. If you're alongside a GTE before the braking zone in a proto, then it's fine. If you have to lunge under brakes, uh, just go for the exit. Noob. Uh, exactly multi-class endurance racing is all about calculated risk. I not fully agree with Andy. The contact with your 160 team on lap 6 was uh, on David. We got a drive through, but I had 77 seconds worth of damage. So for short pit, pit lanes, I would like to see stop go penalties used more for avoidable contacts. This is what J this was uh, James like, isn't it? Actually, this is what he said in the Motor Association. I never saw that instance, so can't comment on managing driving the GTE. So yes, I think the general gist of that is that some people are a bit annoyed at how harsh the penalties are, but that's always been a thing in Bisc, and uh, especially with the new rule, rule book that was created under the supervision of Global Endurance Modding. I know particularly their series is quite harsh on penalties, and I, I do think it's just really. One of those things that's always been a, a staple of Fisk, really. And I think as well, particularly in the DPIs, I've noticed after doing that eight hours of Silverstone for Iris once, that you can really be aggressive on GTE cars. Not so much at Silverstone, uh, uh, C-Ring, but a track like Silverstone, you could really, really dive from not particularly too far back. But you, you've got to be very mindful. And it does depend I on the nature of the corner, really. I feel like certain corners with late apex for example um like for example the way that i take tower you could easily break the same time as me and be completely by me by the time that i get to the apex and just not bother me um but i feel i know everyone is different so um but certain it to me it all depends on the corner right it's just it all depends on how you um, how how the dr how the GT car takes the corner. Um, <clears throat> that kind of dictates um, the line that the DPI has to take if they want to get by through that corner, or if they have to wait. But yes, uh, I think as well uh, you can find. Uh, endurance racing is all about calculated list, uh, risks. James has hit the nail on the head there. I remember at Spa, there was plenty of times I could have ever taken a GT car into a corner, but sometimes it's better to just put your clutch in heading into the corner 
and just stay behind them and just calculate the risk because there's no point going for a move with eight hours to go in a race you need to really be sensible about it especially if you're if you're Mitchy Hoyer then you can get away with it but other than that I'd say it's quite uh, it's all about being sensible here's a battle between Johan Van Doren and Stan Villestra the valve VMS is the two valve VMS on its racing cars and uh, I'm still not particularly happy that Val aren't running their normal strikingly yellow liveries I always feel like Val are a little bit like Ferrari is there we go Jean Van Doren makes a little bit of a mistake we've had a bit of a screen freeze but that I thought let Stanville's fans uh, Stan Valestra through is there we go the overlay isn't quite the overlay is a little bit behind so I'll quickly refresh that for you uh, there we go then that's how it is let me find the way to refresh overlays page it should be refreshed now as I'm trying to figure out a way to snap this window back to Christian's uh, as oh, I've, I, I've done something we'll see if that works there we go uh, should be back up to scratch now is what's happened why have we only got five cars now on the display oh dear. you know what christian should be back in about 10 minutes so we'll uh well, he should be back any minute actually so we'll uh we'll, we'll leave him to sort that out cleaning up my mess as per usual christian mckeezy <laughs> he puts a lot of effort into these broadcasts and we should commend him for such Honestly, it's not hard to just stick behind a slower car through corners and blast on the straights. I would agree. I can't really make a comment on that any further. I, I think sometimes, though, uh, GT cars have to understand that prototypes can't always help them and work in their favour. Sometimes, and especially towards the end of a race, you have to be aggressive in an MP2 car. And, well, you, you can't make friends. I, I had a race at Austria once, which I bring up a lot, actually and um, I had to go for an aggressive move on GT cars because I had a five tenth gap with about two minutes to go. In fact, it was about 10 minutes to go, I believe. And I, I really had to go for an aggressive move that I wouldn't have gone for in a 24-hour race at all. And it ended in a collision. It wasn't my fault, it was Callison's got a penalty. I think that's probably to do with the appeal. It is incident number 24, um, and the Prime GP car gets the gets the uh, penalty but yes so sometimes I think particularly when you're in fighting for a major position you, you have to accept that you're not going to make friends with some GT cars there's a yellow sector 3 momentarily there I don't know if you've got anything to say on that on that matter um, yellow and... you know what I think you're completely right I can't say anything else that you haven't said because just the way that it is. There we go. I'm right about something for once on one of these broadcasts. I'd love to see it. Uh, I feel at this point I've been right for way too long. Uh, um, another thing, uh, we have an announcement now talking about ACC. Um, we're now getting the BMW M4 GT3 2022. Um, so I'm being told is going to be a free DLC. Incredible. Oh, just I look forward to driving that for minutes and then uninstalling the game again. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Seems um, to be my relationship with ACC at the minute. Yeah. I'm trying to get into ACC leagues, but it's like... It's tough. Tom is the best commentator, it changed my mind. I completely agree. I think that Tom guy is incredible. And, uh, Agreed. Well, thank you for inflating my ego, uh, which will now prompt me to say something stupid in the next eight hours and uh, get sacked. So, where are we in the race? <laughs> I'm not racing right now since our car is DNF'd. Wait, it's, it's, I'm not happy that my car DNF'd. I would much rather be in a position of glory leading a car home to, to victory. However, thoughts of doing, as I believe Christian's back, I can see my mouse moving on the uh, team viewer. 
I have returned. There we go. Bang on. Uh, Hello. Hello. I'll, I'll exit out of your team viewer. I broke something, Christian. Oh, uh, I don't know what. Break? It's broken. Yes. Uh, Just, he doesn't know. No fire drivers on the overlay and not, not eight. Huh. I had to refresh it because it was clear that we were about three minutes behind. Let me just shut everything down here for a moment, see if it'll be resuscitated. But, um, uh, but yes, Alex, what I was trying to say was that uh, I... Uh, the 17, that was, uh, the Iris car that I was racing in. And uh, whilst I'm upset that the team won't get the points, I'm quite happy that I don't have to be driving at 12 o'clock tonight for three hours. Wow, really? Huh. I thought you would have been all about that. I mean, I don't mind driving. Hmm. Right. However, three hours at 12 a.m. is quite. Uh, but if you're fighting for a win, it's incredible. But if you're if you're down in sort of tenth, it's it's more of a, a formality, really. Yeah. It's, you yeah. can't really. The issue with driving for minor positions is you can never cover to yourself in glory. However, you can certainly cover yourself in a lot of lot of shame. <laughs> well, Go ahead. I would have loved to be driving, except for the fact that I was put into three different cars. I was told, hey, you're going to drive this car. Hey, you're going to drive this car. Hey, you're going to drive this car. Before I was finally like... I'm going to do commentary. <laughs> Join us on the commentary side. We have chill I'm, vibes. I'm very impressed by the chill vibes today. As, uh, the, the chat's been very good, actually. Oh, you, missed, best chat. you missed the uh, whole... Uh, this is the CCP social credit score bit in the first hour. Oh yes, but I think the people making those jokes have probably gone to bed by now. <laughs> uh, it's probably about their bedtime. Thirty <laughs> years maths tomorrow, and uh, you know, being being a year one student in two thousand twenty one is very difficult. But uh, <laughs> yes, the chat's been. Uh... <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at my own joke. <laughs> Here we are. But uh, yes, the uh, here's a battle actually between Emily Callison and Peter Hutchings, and. Uh, Oh yes, the chat's been uh, talking about the rules, and I think it's very, very productive, actually. It's been quite nice. We haven't seen anyone use copy pastas, uh, hurt anyone yet, or use any naughty words. Wow. Impressed, chat. Good job. And uh, I actually think I want, I want to credit Santu, Jeff, and the new sort of management uh, over this. As you all like to hear this, Christian. As uh, Santu takes feedback from James, and he's like, thank you very much. None of this getting defensive. He realises it's <laughs> constructive criticism, and uh, it's like, okay, thank you. We take it on board, and we'll we'll move on with it. And I respect that a lot. So, very well done to the Visk admin team. You can pat yourself on the back. Yay! I'll leave my PayPal for the money from the bribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. We know. It's all good. Everybody knows. Um, eight hours to go. Why don't you guys? Uh, do an hourly update because I was lost. I was not lost. I was lost in my own house. I don't know where I was. I just opened the door and I was in the nether. Um, no. Um, in I was... the nether. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's uh, do an hourly update. You guys can tell us where we're at with eight hours to go. Here we go then. I'll take the honors of doing an hourly update. It was always an honor. And uh, oh, George Whitehouse still leads for Team Iris. They're on a little bit of a different strategy to Zoltan Toth in the Musion Sim Racing number 04. And while Simon Marshall is in third in the 999 of the Team Rookie Monsters, that will be very, a very good drive from them. Uh, not really in the right place to be fighting for a win here, Rookie Monsters. However, I think they'll be quite content with bringing home the podium. The upside down Rookie Monsters car, the number 666, Taylor Lane. 28 laps in fourth. Alex Van Hall for Revolution Sim Racing number 114 in fifth. And oh dear! We'll take a minor break from the hourly update to see that. That's the Val of EMS Sun in its car. And uh, well, I don't think he'll be particularly happy with that. And you've really ruined the flow of our <laughs> hourly update there. <laughs> and, uh, well, where did we get up to? David Capruzzi. Hex Sim Racing number 160. Alex Skinner number 89. 
uh, Bruno Sousa Ferreira. What a name that is. Bruno Sousa Ferreira for Epic Racing number nine. Yeah. Peter Williamson in the number 150. And Demir Kakato DNF for Prime GP in the number 69. Yep. Next category. The LMP2s. We've always been a rather quiet category in the VISC showing us many fireworks tonight. I mean, Bonfire Night was 15 days ago. <laughs> who clearly didn't get the memo. Wesley Burkout leads for Team Iris in number 77. Team Iris are leading the two main categories, uh, that were two of the main categories, I should say. Uh, Owen is not Kival Husik, but Owen AK, we'll say, in the 46 into the points racing car. Forrest McCormack, Ottolink Motorsport in third position. Alejandro Valente for Team Iris number 87. Stan Velestra in the fifth position, Val VMS Sun edits car, and then his teammate that we just saw spin, I believe, Johan Van Doren in the number six. Peter Hutchins in the 52. That's the RLR of Britsy car. Uh, in the 38 Prime GP, who just got a major slapping on the wrist for a infringement with avoidable contact with GT cars. And Mason Randall for Reading Edge Studios Racing, who have made their way into the top 10 after a major incident earlier on in the race. I believe we've got another page. Julian Vrak, Arda Erkin, and finally Eric Kumedy in the number 17. DNFing and meaning I don't have to do a stint at 12am, which I'm both thankful and disappointed at. Anyway, moving on to GTLM. Oliver Verhelst in TGM Simsports. Number 96 in the other TGM Sim Sport is Simon Kingsbury. We saw them battling in the last hour. Cousant Bartels for the number 90. That's, yeah, I can't quite read that. That it's is the, gem the, car. the Global Insurance Modding Car. There we go. Um, Turin Lawyer in the number 777. Number 777. Yeah, that's the one. Team Iris, who that was Mia Rose's car. They've done a mighty good job after being losing three laps to a disconnect. Joe Gordstitis, someone who I know very well from EERC. Very good driver in the 360 Motorsports 30 car. And Miel Evers in their Final Bond 445 car. Another team I'm very fond of, actually, Final Bond. Ran by Pascal Eggert, who's a very, very nice man indeed. One of the nicest folks in sim racing. Logistical okay. Nightmare Racing, number 429 in seventh. Kevin Veitchers in the Prime GP, number 59. And rounding out the top 10 is Richard Sismadia, who we just hey, saw had that major go. incident, and Alejandro Paduici in the Hex Sim Racing Guard, number 170. And then finally, a bit further down the order, 753, Saz Bollock. Saz Bolks. I was with Zolbach when I saw that name, but I have no. Zolbach. Zolbach. I have no. The Bulk? I don't know. I'm not. Okay. That's, that's one of the many Hungarian names I just don't even mess with. Well, Usually I see a Hungarian name, and I'm like, no, thank you. I'll just <laughs> take an easy route. Uh, well, there we go. We're back, and we're on board with one of the Iris cars. It's, I believe, the number 60... 77. There we go. I got yeah, it in the end. LMP2. Look at how much speed Wesley is able to carry through. And I can tell you Wesley is one of the fastest... Uh, Iris driver. In fact, Iris have got two of their fastest drivers in right now. Uh, Turin Lawyer is a really, really fast Iris driver, and Wesley Burkow is a really, really fast Iris driver. So considering how fast Mia Rose was, in fact, they've now got someone who I would argue, and no disrespect to Mia Rose whatsoever, is faster than Mia Rose. Mia Rose uh, is really biding at the time for probably an incredible comeback drive, I would say. We do apologise for the screen freezes, unfortunately, our Factor 2 does like to be our Factor 2 sometimes. But there's nothing you can really do. You could have a NASA computer and the stream would still have issues. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I have a, like, a 3070 graphics card, a Ryzen 5, 16 gigs of memory, I'm still like, <clears throat> every once in a while. My computer struggling sound effect for all of you. Um... <laughs> Probably the... Somehow, we've, we've got to a stage where the weirdest noise made on stream isn't by me. <laughs> um... Mightily impressed. So a notable thing, then, about that hourly update is the GTLM order is really being quite, uh... Had quite a shift. 
now that we have the we have like the 30s up there uh we're seeing fine avant finally starting to uh find some pace yeah the gclm order is really about as consistent as your grandma's cooked porridge <laughs> that could mean so many different things <laughs> well it's very inconsistent seeing that my grandmother is italian <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's I've been jump up. That line for so long, I can't <laughs> even lie. Let's jump up to the lobby and talk to Tom Parton from, I believe, Hex here. Second channel switched. Slowly, User the team will channel. come and join me. We speak and, to uh, Tom. How is it going? going? Quickly, User your channel. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to use this opportunity to duck out to go do my race, which is at eight o'clock, and I'm going to do a bit of practice for. So I'll be back at about. Probably half past nine for the run to the line. Okay. Uh, That's I'll a see you there. There it is. Evening, gents. Good evening. How is it going for you and the number 160 crew? Uh, yeah, not too bad, actually. Um, personally, my stint was quite quite smooth, quite steady. I mean, out of the three drivers, I am the slowest of our three drivers. So for me, it's just keep it on the track, keep it going. Um, got caught out of the T1 coming out of the, after the first uh, stop with some cold tires, cold brakes, um, slight diffuser damage on the front, but after that, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of running wide a bit and late on the brakes with the with the cold tires, cold brakes, especially after the code 80, but apart from that, it was a relatively uneventful stint for me. Um, we had a slight run in on my final stop before we changed over driver with Sultan Toth in the number four Mugen as he came out the pit lane, uh, well, as he came out of his pit box. Yeah. It wasn't, it's not penalty worthy, it was like a, just, just an unsafe release. We put a Whoa. in just to get a, you know, just so they were aware. Yes, yeah. it was a bit close. Um, but then, on, unfortunately, the on pit exit, we got collected by the, which one was it? By the number thirty-eight LMP2 mm. on the outside of T1. But it is mm. what it is. So we've got Davide in the car at the moment. Um, so yeah, we're just trying to keep it going and try <laughs> try and keep it on the track and finish it, finish strong for X. Yeah, running sixth, it's a pretty, been a pretty good effort. Um, yeah, they've not been too, too bad for the number two DPI team, technically, compared to <laughs> our, uh, our friends in the 150 car. Yeah. Guys are definitely leading the, uh, the effort. So, that's... You bring up an interesting thing. You guys were caught out by turn one. What's sort of been the approach to... Uh, exiting cars when you're into turn one because it seems like that's been something that's caught a lot of people throughout this race on fresh tires or cold tires or do you mean watching out for pit lane entry i mean like when you're on a flying lap you know and someone's mm -hmm. on pit exit like how are you guys handling that it's difficult really because if they're already coming out the pit lane and they're past the apex of t1 you can't see them until you're in t1 yeah so it's a bit difficult from that sense, but if you can see them coming out of the pit lane themselves, um, you generally just make sure you take it a bit. You, your entry is a bit wider, so you've got a uh, you've closed on the inside on exit, yeah. so you don't use that full uh, width of the road. If you're already committed, it's kind of difficult, but there is a little bit of wiggle room to try and hold it to the middle of the track as opposed to using the full track and taking the curve on exit. Mm -hmm. Just got to be mindful that there. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, there is probably going to be somebody coming out of the pit lane. Whether that's a GT car, a P2 car, or a DPI, there's going to be somebody coming out of that pit lane. Um, and without having spotters on track for you, User which obviously this time around we don't have everybody in the server, relying on live racer is a bit um, sketchy. Yeah, I believe that. It's just, we work with what we've got. Gotta User do what you gotta left do. your channel. So... I guess the uh, other thing I got for you is when are you, how are you guys handling driving time? Are you going to be in the car again or are you done your duty for the day? I will definitely be in the car again because I've only done about an hour and ten. Um, so there's three of us in the car. Uh, we're probably looking at about doing, I think one of us is going to be on about three and a half hours and the other guy is going to be on about four, four and a half. Yep. Uh, so we're, we're split pretty evenly. That's good. Uh, th thankfully we, we have uh, a clearish schedule today for all three of us. Yeah, that certainly helps. Um, yeah. Well, good to see you guys running well, running strong. It's, uh, it's, it's shocking to think, given how much has happened, that uh, we're not even at the halfway mark yet. But Well, this is endurance racing. It's not won in the first four hours. Yeah. Just, just keep it clean. 
Yeah, that is the absolute truth. Ooh. Awesome. Well, I think I'll let you get back to your team. Thanks for Thank you very much. hopping by with us. Good luck out there, no man. No problem. Enjoy the rest of the race, gents. Thank you. Yep. And then User left your we channel. will slide back. Oh, channel switched. I was beaten back to the broadcast booth by Alex. He was absolutely booking it. You people didn't see it. He, he just he just breakneck pace ran to the broadcast booth. I was not prepared. Yes. <laughs> Human interaction scares me. <laughs> Human interaction scares me. Uh, yeah, I feel that. See, I'm sorry, I just felt like we were spawn camping a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> we, yeah, I, I, I am sure we are probably going to need to get a new team speak for uh, mid-Ohio. So I'll make sure that we have, uh, oh, jeez, the iris is Gold slow. 18, 10 seconds. What happened to the triple Five, seven? Four, three, two, uh, let's one. Let's take a Gold 18, first. Gold 18, first. Uh, can my... Okay, my scroll wheel has decided to not work. Great, uh... Uh, right, that is a GT car. Great. Okay, um... Seem to have some side damage. Um, let's take a... Let's take a, a look. Okay. Is this in slow motion, or...? No, they're already crabbing, like, a while ago. Like, they've been crabbing for, like, five we minutes now. We are going now. green in ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. We are green. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, they're still going there. Oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. Uh, I'm screen sharing, by the way, uh, if you want to take a look. Um, they went hard into the wall. Uh, yeah, big bend. Yeah, this uh, is it. Seems like they clipped the inside. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes, they did. They clipped the inside barrier uh, on the inside of big bend, and it just went straight into the outside wall. Oh, oh yeah, that was a big, just big misjudgment on his part. If we get a onboard view of it, just yeah, that was just that's a you got to think that's just like a it's just yeah. Uh, much later on the uh, eastern side of the pond than it is over on the west, so I'm imagining just tired, been in the car too long, stopped paying attention, mistakes happened. Yes. Rough. Especially given uh, they were doing such a good job to try and recover. You gotta think that's gonna be hard to come back from that one. And suddenly, the 445, who at the beginning of the race I was saying, man, the Fine Avant has been um, perhaps out of position and slower than you'd think. That, they're in a position now where they could start fight beyond, well, they're on the outside shot of a podium, you'd think. Of course, that uh, means getting around the 360. Wh when did the 360 get the fourth? Huh. The number 30 Ferrari. Not doing too bad. I love that you can see all the effort that went into delivery of that 364. Picking out that yeah. particular shade of blue. <laughs> uh... 
At least they, uh... How did the 360 get into fourth? <laughs> we'll notice that. Yeah. <laughs> um, at least he's got the uh, shaders right, so it isn't red shaders on a blue car this time. Yeah. That was really fun watching. Yeah. <laughs> Every time that we passed his car, um, in the, in the t Daytona 24, I just want to watch that livery just like every time Aiden, because Aiden actually did make a livery for that car. Mm. Just, he hasn't uploaded it yet. <laughs> mm. I just want to see us get like halfway through the season while just still seeing this. <laughs> Man. Doing well though, the 360 squad, uh, just quietly getting themselves up to fourth. Gotta, gotta hand it to them. Yeah. Doing, doing quite well. Not getting into any trouble, which is good. Um, great improvement from last race. Um, they seem to have a, a very inconsistent time at Daytona, but doing very good now, uh, as you just said. Yeah. A penalty come up for Mason Randall. I think that's the reading game. Uh, new car. That's, that was about. Very curious. Very, very curious. Oh boy. Oh, I'm on the wrong side of the race control chat. I'm on the uh, stewards discussing race control side. <laughs> uh, minor avoidable contact. Drive through. Okay. Three six is going to be holding off that uh, Finevond Aston Martin though, which has been swimming through the field. They will be catching up with them soon. I am sure. Mile Ever is going about two seconds a lap faster than Hemsaw. The fastest person out there right now seems to be the number 90 Gem Ferrari, though. They're doing well. Yep. Yeah. Um. What was I going to say? I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. Um. It's all good. It was probably useless information anyways. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm saying that I don't have enough monitors. Mm. I need the fourth monitor. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you have up that you need four monitors? Well, I have Discord here, and then yeah. I have the stream, and then I have uh, R-Factor 2 itself. Mm. And I was looking, and I'm like jumping between things and just... Like spinning my my head around in circles, pretty much. Yeah. Just like where? <laughs> okay. Can I just quick note, making me think about? Do you know how YouTube got rid of the dislikes? So, um, I literally never saw that happen. I still have dislikes. Oh really? I had, I do not have dislikes, and I find it very disconcerting. So I'm like. Do people like this stream? I don't know. It just has eight. It just has so many likes. I, what's that? Well, let me refresh the stream really quickly. On my end, and we have fourteen likes and two dislikes. Two people Can don't appreciate my voice. Get it? Yeah. Mm, I think the walls at T one more than pace. Uh, yes, definitely 360 Motorsports fandom. Yeah. Um, yeah 360 about needs that, somebody cheering for him. About that, actually. Yeah. Um, about liveries for 360, mm -hmm. I saw a sneak peek of an Aston, Ooh. but I never actually saw the full thing, and it was actually very cool. Hmm. Um, so hopefully we'll get more of that, um, and hopefully it'll be there, um, and I swear to God, I, I, I am making a promise that if Aiden is like, um, yeah, 
uh, I don't have a livery. I will literally throw together a pink car <laughs> with the old 360 logos, and I will upload it, and that will be ran instead of whatever whatever you are. Uh, um, that will be ran because I will not have this. Mm-hmm. No livery. Uh, I will not have that. <laughs> um, gotta, gotta lap them around a bit. Okay, those. This. This. 12 hours of Sebring Part 2. Change the thumbnail to this current one. I'm just preparing the next stream because we will have to switch over in about an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Be prepared, you see. Yeah, I, 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 well. I never really understand it that why streams have to be changed. It's because, uh, if you don't do that, then you can't, um, Act, like you can't edit the video in any way, you can't edit the VOD. Oh, yeah. Right. But, okay. Yeah. Um, not that I ever edit the VODs. I should, but I just don't have the patience. Um, I could totally go back and like cut highlights out, you know, and make highlight videos. But uh, this man be busy with school. Bro, same. Yeah. After this, what? Something happened. What happened with Zenis Papa? The penalty will be upheld as saved above. While there was a slight gap, the Prime GP cart should have respect the fact that GTE was already turning in and has full right to keep its line. The severity of this penalty is based on the corner that this incident happened on. The actions of the number 38 caused major damage to the Four, four, five. Take your time and go, go respect the GT car's line. This was after a long discussion between the stewards, to which we have decided that based on Article 13.3 of the Sporting Regulations, that the GTE had the right to take the line that it did. That the LMP2 car, number 72, should have backed off and allowed said GTE to do what it did. Um, so we missed something, but there was a long discussion about an incident between the 445 line of Vond. The... 72, which is, I think, the penalty I was talking about earlier with the reading game. I did not know the Fine Avant had, a uh, picked up damage, though. Actually, we were, I was trying to find it before, but just couldn't. Yeah. Huh. So, at the same time, we're going to cut streams, as we see the number 72 come in, probably to serve that penalty. Um, yeah, in about an hour and a half, you're expected to get rain. don't know how bad it will be or how long it will last, but I thought I'd throw that into the mix. So, here's a question for you. As somebody who's uh, run L- LMP2s and GTs, which do you prefer? GTs. Why is that? Well, LMP2s are... Okay. LMP2s are R-Factor 2. And GTEs is iRacing. Huh. R fa- LMP2s are amazing. They're great. They're yeah. beautiful. They are fast. They're fun. They're touchy. Yeah. They're twitchy. They're hard to set up. They're hard to keep running. Mm-hmm. You gotta have a lot more um, skill and be a lot more on it to yeah. drive the LMP2. GTs, you can actually we proved this because in Petite, uh, when I was running the final race, that the final nail in the coffin for my personal team um, before I joined 360. Um, we had Aiden Coleman just hop into the car. 
had never driven the setup before, never never driven the car, just hop it, hopped into the car in a race scenario and drove. And that was in an Aston GTE. I think that he could have never done that. Nothing against Aiden, but I don't think that you could do that in an LMP2 unless you've been driving LMP2s for at least a year and a half, two years. Yeah. I feel like they're just take a lot more practice and take a lot more energy and attention. For sure. Yeah, I I've uh yeah, I've never had the dedi I've ne never dedicated nearly enough time to getting myself settled in our factor 2 LMP2 cars. Really need to, but I just have not done that. Whereas I find the GTs, you can kind of, if you're not someone who's racing consistently, they're a lot easier to get into and be at least close to the pace. Yeah. I mean, our first race out of the, out of the season, um, in GTEs, I ran with um, the Roar before the 24, which is actually a very dumb idea. If I do say so myself, running the roar in a GT car, full knowing that we're not going to be running any any car close to that <laughs> in the actual 24 hours. <laughs> I'm just like, so I just messaged the guy and I'm just like, yo, you want to run the, the roar before the 24? And it's like, yeah, sure. Uh, what car do you want to run? Mm, Aston. <laughs> I, think I, I think I like the Aston. And it's just like, okay. And then Aiden's just like, yeah, so I got uh, Zamfir and uh, Acarol and uh, these, I forget who else ran with us. Um, anyways, it was these four guys. You're going to be running the LMP2 for the Daytona 24, all right? And this was like three weeks before the roar before the 24. So we had ample time to change, <laughs> to make delivery, everything. And we were just like... Nah, we stick with the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and we came fourth, right? Yeah. And it was and the only reason why we didn't get a podium was a bad judgment call by me. Because it started to pour and I got and I got Zam to pit for 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 wets. Yeah. And then it stopped raining. <laughs> Oof. Oof. And so it was like uh and so I did some calculations, and I realized that it was better to stay on the wets than to um, than to pit and swap for dries. Mm -hmm. But then we got a code AD, and we're like, yeah, pit. Yeah. So it kind of helped, but... Mm. Ended up not working out in the long run. Yeah. It's a... Uh... It's interesting, so that's a... Uh, you know I mostly run ACC, not our factor um, But one of the interesting differences between the two games is in ACC, you're told, basically, by the game, when and what tires you should switch to. Our factor 2 is like you actually have to feel it out. And it makes... it means that you make the wrong decision more often. <laughs> There's more yeah. space to. Yeah. But I feel like that's what makes our factor too fun. Yeah. <laughs> There's a realism to that, for sure. But, uh, yeah. Also, I have a weird thing that is probably going to get me kicked off the stream, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, what are your plans for Visk in the future? Because I'm seeing a lot of new sims coming out we're getting a lot of new cars gt cars prototypes coming into uh i racing um and we are getting a lot of stuff coming to um uh and we're gonna get a new assetto corsa which should be uh have the driver swaps and everything and physics engine and everything that comes from acc but we'll have prototypes and formula cars and everything like that along with GT cars. So I was going to ask you, um, it would be, I thought it would be an interesting conversation. Uh, what are your plans um, 
looking into that. Well, first of all, I'm gonna have to kick you off the stream. Oh my! No. <laughs> um. So it's interesting. Cause I've been, I, 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 like, it's not up to me to make a unilateral decision. Obviously, I've just been kicking around ideas in my head, knowing full well I don't have to act on them for some period of time. But to me, I think the most obvious thing is to wait and see which way a settle course in two goes. Um, I don't think eye racing is a natural place for the Visk to go to. Correct. Um, so I, I think the, the best thing to do is just sit on the R Factor 2 platform, see where AC2 goes in terms of uh, what it features and what it has in terms of mod support, and then make a decision like in a year or two. If like, Because if like AC ends up with like a really good DPI mod, and there's like good modded versions of like the big Visk tracks. I, I think that would be a serious conversation to have with the teams. Um, but like if it doesn't have mod support and never goes to North America, then it's not really. It's not. It, you can't even. You can't even really go there. I could see someone like. I could see uh, EERC doing it where there's less of a. Uh, it's not necessarily replicating any specific series in the same way Visk is really about North American endurance racing. So, yeah. That's my thoughts on it, I think, probably. Is just wait and see what, what AC2 does. Okay. Yeah. I, there is a part of me, I will say, and I don't know, I'd have to... I almost wish uh, Autom Automobilista 2 had driver swaps and like it had more of a multiplayer focus because i think that could have been a natural direction because it has the dpis it has an lmp2 car and it has the gts um it has the cars it just doesn't have the tracks yeah. for it and it doesn't have the uh multiplayer uh support but it would be the uh i feel like if they had given us even a window to climb through to get into that modding mm -hmm. then people would totally do it yeah like even if if there was a way no matter how hard it was i know that somebody would do it yeah they figured um, out how to add driver swaps to the original set of course i'm sure they could do it what <laughs> yeah it's, they, they figured out how to do driver swaps for the original set of course there's a league now that runs uh, endurance races in it. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah. Never heard about that. I can't remember what the name of the league is. They did a six hours of the Glen and a twenty four hours of Daytona. With like old school DPIs, like the old school uh, Corvette DPI and that stuff. It was like a interesting window into like Tusk era. Imsa. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Here we end up. For now, our Factor 2 is gonna have to do it. <laughs> yep. Another question. Um, what do you think, uh, what are your thoughts on the, um, on, um, uh, Imsa... Um, on IMSA and their swap to LMDH. Um, is it LMDH? Le Mans, Le Mans Daytona Hybrid is what it's called? Le Mans Daytona Hypercar. Oh, hypercar? Is that it? Okay. Uh, yeah, because they're hypercars now. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, so it's LMH is Le Mans Hypercar and LMDH is Le Mans Daytona Hypercar. I guess. I'm guessing that's what it is. Yes. Um, I I don't think there. I think that's quite a uh, good step for the uh, getting cars that can run at Le Mans and run in. Uh, they took the twenty to twenty four hours. A pretty big thing, I think. To, like I don't know. It's, I feel like it's been a really long time since they've been able to do that too. Like I think you'd have to go back to the uh, GTP. Uh, group C era. I don't think uh, there's been. I, I know uh, there's been points yeah. where the 
during the ALMS era where sometimes it'd be like GT1 or uh, what you call it. I guess, I guess, I guess in the early ALMS era there was, I suppose, because that's when you had like Panos and BMW running a LMP 900. I think those could run on both sides of the. That might have been the last time, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think IMSA has, I think IMSA has the best formula, bar none, I think, anywhere in the world right now for its top flight. I think it makes the most sense. Basically letting teams pick an engine, pick a chassis manufacturer, and put them together in an affordable way. Like, I don't... I, I wish IndyCar would do that. I swear to God, I'd be so happy if IndyCar copied that formula. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I feel like in IndyCar, it would be amazing to see different chassis. Mm -hmm. Like... I know we have Chevy and Honda. I think that might have changed. I might be out of touch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I think that to see different chassis like we did in the kart days or in the um, or in the uh, early early two thousands. Uh, I think even in the early two thousands, they were already onto the Dallara chassis. Yeah. They, well, they. They actually had two chassis until 2006, I think, on the IndyCar side. I think car, I think Champ Car moved to one chassis in like 2004. But they had a, a, a Delara and a is it a Panos in IndyCar until like 2006ish, 2007. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's your opinions on LMDH then? What's your feeling about it? You know what? I feel like I feel like I'm going to be really really sad that we're losing as well as that we're losing GT GTE actually. Yeah. I think I'm going to be really really sad and then we're going to get to the point where uh the leagues like this go to uh GT3 Pro and Am, and then goes to the LMDH, and then I'm gonna be like, "Wow, these cars are so nice," and then completely forget that I was sad, <laughs> and I could just completely forget about the GTEs, yeah, and the and the DPIs. Mm -hmm. I think it's just gonna be like one of those things that you you're gonna miss until something replaces it, and then yeah. you're just gonna then you're just gonna forget. <laughs> Pretty much. I feel that it's, it's uh yeah I agree <laughs> but I I feel like that's gonna be Formula One in a few days a few weeks we're gonna say bye to these ridiculous monster cars they've had since 2017 like man won't be seeing them like breaking lap records anymore it's gonna be sad and then it's gonna be like oh the new cars are they race better so it's okay i'm really hoping that's what happens but i have the sense that's where things are going yeah i have a I have a weird feeling about I have a weird feeling about this uh and what's going on mm -hmm. so here's a ongoing battle developing here between sophie jones and, what did it do? That's what we wanted. Sophie Jones and Johan Van Doren. Prime versus Valet. Sophie's got the run here. Heading down the back straight. Oof. Looks to the inside there. Into Sunset. Can she get it done? Has to go very tight. Johan keeps it up on the outside. They're side by side now going to the front straight. Sophie looking for a way around. It was the outside. Did she tap the it's wall the there? wall. Yes. Yes, On she her. did. That was uh, a little bit clumsy. The eight splits the two. Sophie's and through. And she gets by. I wonder if she's picked up damage, though, by doing that. I don't think so. Dang. There you go. Using the Gran Turismo overtake strats. Man, there's some more penalties coming in. Riri picking up one for the 114. 
believe that's the Revolution Sim Racing car. Car I use for the thumbnail. The stream. Yes. yes. So, I guess here's the big thing I'm wondering for you then. After your initial question about games that could potentially replace R Factor 2 for hosting the VISC. What of these upcoming sims are you the most excited for? Of uh, either future content and existing sims or upcoming sims? Um, I think I'm really looking forward to, uh, I think I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes with Project Cars 4 after, um, after, um, uh, slightly Mad Studios um, dumpster dive with Project <laughs> Cars 3 because um, I loved the first two games I'm going to be honest mm -hmm. I loved the VR I loved everything about it I didn't even buy Project Cars 3 <laughs> I just never I never even clicked on the Steam store page Oof. I just I watched a few reviews and it seems like it became Forza. It became the 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 Dollarama Forza, but apparently we're supposed to get a touch back into reality with coming back into the um the new um coming back into the new um sorry Slightly Mad Studios and uh, somebody bought them out. I forget who. Uh, I think um, it's EA is the parent studio now. It might be crazy. Is that the EA or it might be Codemasters? Is that, yeah, I that's think Codemasters cool. bought them and then EA bought Codemasters. That's where they sit. Yeah. Um. But anyways, I'm so I'm looking forward to Project Cars Four because we should get back to that simulation aspect um and i'm also looking forward to um to see where ams goes yeah. um but they seem to not be anywhere near done with ams2 so that's not going to be for a while um but i think i'm most excited about a set of course at two because um like all um, like everything, um, you can't be a king forever. Yeah. And so we'll see what happens, but I'm not going to get my hopes up because I feel as though, um, I feel as though, um, every, every masterpiece has its has its uh has its cheap copy and i would really hate for that cheap copy to be made by the same people yeah like for them to try and just get that hype back i feel like the game could be really successful is if we get driver swap support native driver swap support um and then native weather support um if i think it if you give us those two things um and then give us the same modability that we had with um, with the first Assetto Corsa. I think that the game's going to be amazing. Yeah. I think the game would would be would be bang on. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, really interesting. I, I. It's a tough thing because part of me really likes how ACC... Like, ACC was the first sim I seriously did league racing in. Like, I've done some R Factor 2. I've done some, some Automobilista. But ACC is the one where I've, like, really dedicated time. And... It's tough because I, uh, in part, want them to, like, have the same, like, focused approach that... ACC had because I, I a big thing I love about ACC that R Factor doesn't quite have is how the car the cars have individually like uh, 
programmed traction control settings, right? So, like, the traction control works differently in the Aston Martin from how it works in the Ferrari. And then the, yeah. the way the dash displays actually work the way they would in real life. So, like, in R Factor 2, the displays that would tell you when the car is sliding or the brakes are locking up are just rev counters in R Factor 2. But AC, yeah. it's ACC, it, like, actually you can tell when you're, like, doing those little micro fit. You can tell when you're, like, properly braking on the limit and kicking in the traction control. Oh, sorry, the uh, ABS. Um, so I, I like that. So it's it's tough because I like that focus, but there's another part of me that's like, I just want mod support so that people can, like, fill in the gaps you will, ne will inevitably have in your content. Tough game. Yeah. I'm trying to find it. I had a thing that I'm going to end up posting in. Uh, I found it. It's going to be posted in the basement in uh, 360. You can go and take a look at that. That's literally where I got the idea from. <laughs> 360 basement. Oh, there we go. Right, I had the basement muted. <laughs> Every masterpiece has its cheap copy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> perfectly balanced as all things should be. Um, so Robert Strachan was looking at Johannes' brake inputs and saying that it seems like the Orca has really broken braking stability. See, this was a thing we were talking about earlier, actually. How the BOP were running for the Orca's custom. And then Tom was saying how he liked it, how you could throw the Orca around more than you could with the default ISI one, because I think we're running something that Gem, Gem developed. So. I don't know. I always feel like, uh... I don't know. This is going to seem like a hit, and I don't want this to come off as a hit. I just think it's an observation. And I think... I feel like it's a truth everyone can kind of agree with, but I feel like the R Factor 2 community, compared to the other... Uh, sim racing communities I've been around seems very much set. It knows what it likes. I think that's the nicest way. To be. That's probably the best way to put it. The R Factor community knows what it likes and doesn't like when people don't do what they know what they like. So when a car drives differently than they've uh, expected it to drive, and sometimes be some hesitance. But I understand it. It's like uh, ordering a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But then for some strange reason, it's mango chili jelly. And you're like, who the heck puts mango chili jelly on a peanut butter sandwich? And maybe it's good, but it's not what you expected. And now you will never like it. <laughs> yeah. Great. That's why we should start a league with radicals and Honda Civics. <laughs> okay guys so we've decided for visc season three <laughs> we've replaced lmp2 and dpi with one unified prototype class using the radicals <laughs> oh wait but we gotta tune the engines differently because it's gotta be visc style yeah right? <laughs> so the engines have to deafen you <laughs> yeah we'll do it we'll do it we'll do an engine swap so it's the flat six from a porsche rsr Yes. <laughs> Just to throw people off. Um, yeah. Bro, imagine, imagine like a one-to-one -one power to weight ratio, because that's what that would be. Yeah. That would be insane. <laughs> you know, it could actually be like decently fast. Yeah. Like that could, that would be faster than GTEs. Mm -hmm. So like. Yeah. The thing I wanted to do, which I wanted to do with CERT back when I was trying to start that, but uh, didn't work. <laughs> um, what I wanted to do was do, I don't know if you know this, but before uh, IMSA and Grand Am merged, they were going to have, Grand Am was going to do, they were basically going to become the American version of Super GT. Gonna, yeah. And I was like, I totally wanted CERT to be that. So I found that idea so cool. 
no one liked the idea of running GT500 cars instead of uh, traditional prototypes. Yeah. Magic. I actually really love that league. I just, as you know, I just wasn't in the mental mindset to run yeah. yet another league. And Hell yeah. really through the summer, I just really wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to to get back into the into the into the sim world. Mm -hmm. uh, especially our factor two idea. takes so much time to get into, like get up the pace again. Like it's an investment in a way that like even like a race room league could you could more casually participate. Like an R Factor League. Oh wow. That will give Sophie Jones the spot as uh Johan Van Doren goes uh, quite wide. Valet VMS Sun edits car. That car's been sliding down the order over the last uh, hour. I uh, no, I think that's around where they've been most of the race. Never mind, I won't say that. But, uh, yeah. I uh, don't think anyone would harsh you for uh, not being up to a... Uh, especially when it's so busy in the summer. There's so many leagues going on. Yeah. I just kind of feel like... You know, I would... I would have loved to run a league, like, not stewarding, but just, mm. like, set it all up. Yeah. But then I would be really annoyed because my idea, like, my dream idea mm. is, like, make a league or get somebody to help me with a league so we get the server set up. We have pretty much we have it say okay we're gonna run um we're gonna run three classes right yeah we're gonna run um the radicals we're gonna run um the civics and then we could run some other some other thing that's like it's interesting like say oh we're gonna throw gt4s in the middle um, because you guys were running the Alpine GT4, uh, the Porsche, uh, GT4 was just released by, I think it's Gem made that. Yeah. Um, and so it'd be like, throw in a few different cars, and then just go right ahead and do that. Um, and then, to me, the dream would be like, okay, we have some people on stewarding that would love to help, um, it won't be any endurance races. Uh, it might run under the format of like, uh, of how CERT did it, mm -hmm. where it would be, for example, one and a half hour races. And then we could also run like four hour, or three hour races. That's just like, yeah, you could do it with two people, but you could also do it on your own. Yeah. Um, kind of make it easy for people who don't, uh, like teaming up that much yeah um or people who don't have a team um and then we have some nice people in commentary and then here comes the kicker <laughs> i would like to actually not be stressed enough with running this league to be able to drive in the league <laughs> Getting that much manpower to execute all that is uh, would be pretty impressive. Put it like that. <laughs> um, so you want to help? <laughs> I have said my dream would be for R Factor Two to just like do what ACC has done and make something like similar. Like, um, what is it called? Uh, simracing.gp I feel like R Factor 2 could benefit from having like a place that centralizes how the like I don't know no, it's not an off song Porsche but yeah because I, I, I yeah I think that could be helpful um, I, I the community is like simultaneously basically run by like 50 people but at the same time Everything's super spread out, you know? There's no, like, sharing of, like, resources or manpower in any real capacity. Yeah. 
Um, I think that could help a lot. Like if, uh, but I, I don't know how you would. Um, I think you'd need someone who's got like an actual technical background to set up that service. So otherwise, it's just wishful thinking. Or just steal some racing GP. <laughs> yeah, just steal some racing GP. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe at one point they're just gonna add our factor two support, and then my point will be moot. Um, Honestly, I don't know about you, but I'd be okay with that. Yeah. I think the tough thing for it is uh, our factor two really. It, you're you're almost expected to run custom liveries a lot of the time. I don't think simracing.gp has a... Uh, it has no way of handling that. But then again, I, I, I imagine you could probably set up the server through it and then just... Yeah, it would depend if you can access the server. But the result. Anyways, technical talk aside. <laughs> um, we're getting to the hour. So while I've still got it on my mind, we'll, let's do the hourly update. Riding on board with the uh, Into the Points Racing LMB2 car, Jonathan Jones behind the wheel. They've lost a lap at some point to the Iris. I don't know when that happened, but they are. Uh... Iris is certainly, if it were, if, if it weren't for, they basically pumped all of their bad luck into their GT entry, so that the uh, LMP2 yeah. and the DPI can run away with it. Let's take a look. Um. Please. Um, and I'm just going to take a look at these lap times really quick. Okay, so to me, it looks like, um, it looks like, it looks like uh, Team Iris is just running away. Yeah. It's like they got, they're like, oh, we're in the lead. Run. Yeah. And just never stopped. And you know what? Great for them. Yeah, pretty much. Um, they are currently leading overall with George Whitehouse in the 07. Uh, they've been doing really well in that category. Um, Zonger Frenchy in the 04. Sorry, one moment. Oh, yeah, um, right. We have a, another thing with the 445. I, this is around 10 minutes ago. Incident 32. Um... Exact copy of Incident 19 with different teams. Um, we have a 20 second stopping, stop and hold for the 114. And then in bold, stop diving GTEs from that far. Seems like the, the 445 uh, Fiji Avant car has not had a good time with LMP2s. Yeah, fine Avant's. Uh, I don't think that's the first time I've heard of them being punted. Um. But yeah, uh, 04, Mugen, they're in second, a lap down. They had quite a battle with Iris in the opening stanza, but uh, Iris has definitely gotten the upper hand. Um, then we get to the Rookie Monsters, the two Rookie Monsters cars running third and fourth. There's a decent gap between them, almost a lap, if not a lap. Um, triple nine leading those two cars. Uh, Ashif Iftikar in the leading car. Uh, then we get to the number five, sorry, the number 160, the Hex Sim Racing car. Uh, definitely the better running of the two Hex cars. They've had a, they're doing pretty well. A uh, few laps off the leaders, but they're still in fifth, still in the top five, so you got to hand it to them. Uh, then you get to the number nine Epic Racing car, Bruno Sousa Ferreria behind the wheel of that machine right now. Epic has had a race. I will put it like that. It has been quite the uh, afternoon for Epic. Maybe one to forget. Alex Skinner! Founder of the Visc. Behind the wheel. Of number 89. Oh, he's associated with Epic and good friends with uh, I always forget the name of the uh, guy who runs Epic. I think he works for the NHS too. Seems like he'd be a stand-up guy. That's all I can say. Haven't, haven't had a bad encounter with him. We'll put it like that. Seems pretty nice. Uh, nut number 114, Revolution Sim Racing Car. Mohamed El Gariru behind the wheel of that one. I've gone back and actually watched some of his uh, streams. He's a pretty if uh, he's a pretty good, uh, pretty fun to sit on board with if you ever want to watch these races from a particular driver's perspective. Uh, then we get to the 150, the second 
X sim racing car. They have been in the wars, to put it bluntly. Then we get to our one DNF in this class. It's Demir Perutko, the number 69. They're in last right now. Then head on over to our good friends in LMP2, where Iris is leading yet again. Ooh, there we go. Um, right now, it's the number 77. Wesley Bookout's in that car. And Jonathan Jones is in the number 46. That car led most of the opening half of the race, but uh, I think in the last hour and a half, Iris got around them and put a lap on them, so you can tell the number 77 is flying. We get to the number 28, Bottling Motorsport. They had a pretty quiet intro to this race, avoided all of the carnage and fighting that slowed the cars ahead of them. They're running third for their efforts. Really good drive from the number 28 crew. And we get to the number 87. Carl Magnus Bore is in the number 87 in fourth. Uh, they've come out on top between the battle of four, between Iris and Valley in the midfield. Running fourth now, and that the rounding of the top five in LMP2 is the Valet VMS Sun Edits Racing number 11 car. Uh, they are about a lap behind. Oh yeah, not about. They are a lap behind uh, the number 87. Then we get to the RLR Abruzzi car, the number 52, Peter Hutchings in that car. Behind them is Sophie Jones in the Prime GP. Um, that car, I would say, has been doing a bit of a recovery drive. I think they were further up the order earlier on. Uh, they slid down in the first stanza, though, from where they qualified. I think they qualified strongly, and now they're in seventh, but they've been fighting their way back up the order. I think they were further down. Um, let me get to number six, Valet VMS Sunnets Racing Car. Johan Van Doren in that car. Had a few offs, but I don't think he's damaged the car. They're in eighth. Then we get to the number 66, Team Iris Car, a lap behind. Then a car we haven't talked about much is the number 75, Keshon Hall, behind the wheel of that GRG car yet again. Oh boy. Oh boy. There we go. Somebody somewhere has better production values than me, but uh, they were going to do what we can do, folks. Then we head on over to our good friends. Where the heck did this camera put me? Okay. Whatever. Make it work. Um, yes. Number 97. TGM having a really good run today. Uh, number 97 in the lead. Number 96 running in second. Uh, I believe that's the Ferrari in the lead. And then the uh, BMW in second. Then we head over to the Gem Ferrari. We saw Bartels has done a good job to get that car into third after a relatively uh, uneventful or uninspiring, we'll say, qualifying. But they're going really well. Another car with an uninspiring qualifying that is doing surprisingly well is the 360 he Hemsoft behind the wheel of that car. That car Which stormed Which just dropped up. down to fifth. Which just dropped down to by fifth. The way. Okay. Yeah, that. I was going to say the Fine Avant has been charging after it. The 445. They had another. They had a rough qualifying, but they've done well to get that car up to fifth. They're in fourth now. They've got an outside yeah. chance of the podium. I uh, believe they're faster than all three cars in the lead, but they're a lap behind and least. Then we get to the Logistical Nightmare by HSR Corvette C8. That car was last about two hours ago. They're up to 6th. It's been a really good run from the C8 crew in the last uh, two hours to get that car the outside of a top 5. Then we head over to the 777 Iris, who's had perhaps a the worst two hours that team could have imagined. They were leading, and by some margin, uh, I believe it was... What was the woman's name who was driving that car? I am so sorry right now. Um, get it. Mia Rose had an amazing few stints in that car, basically put the blinders on the field, had a disconnect, got in the car again, um, stormed back up the field, handed the car over to Ten Lauer, who caught the inside wall of Big Bend and seriously damaged that car. They're back down to seventh. Um, they can probably still recover something out of this race. Top five isn't out of the cards with the pace that car has, but they are further down the order than they'd like to be. Then we head over to the number 59 Prime GP. Kevin Viker still in that car. Uh, then we head over to the 754 Paul Street Boys car. They've also had a pretty rough, rough uh, last hour or so. They were further up the order looking at a podium. They're now in ninth. Then we head over to the 170 Hexim Racing car with Alejandro Paducci. They're in 10th. 
And then rounding out the GTLM order is the 753, the second Paul Street part. Sorry, another car with a rough bit of time. They were also further up the order. Running just outside the top five, they're now way out of position, to put it bluntly. And that is your hourly update. Took me a while to get through that, but uh, we, we pulled it off. But yes, uh, as Alex mentioned, the 445 is up to fourth. They got two laps to make up, though, to the number 90 GM car. But uh, with six hours, to, well, seven hours, sorry to go, uh, it's uh, it's in the carts. It's doable. It's possible. It'll be hard. They'll need some drama, probably, to uh, befall their competitors. But uh, Or maybe two conveniently timed code 80s. Could we'll go further up the order. Run by Alex Ackerel in the booth. Hello. And uh, yeah, welcome to the Visc. Twelve hours of Sebring. I did not update the commentator thing. Most of those commentators you see on that will not be here. Or actually, that's that's a lie. Tom Kent, Tom and Kent have both been here, but Matt has not. Jose might come later. Anyway. Any noteworthy things you have noticed in the uh, this race thus far? Things that have surprised you or you didn't expect or just generally you found interesting? Don't hit me. It's been very smooth since Daytona and <laughs> the roar before the 24. Mm -hmm. It's been just smooth sailing. Nothing, nothing has gone wrong at all. Um, I mean, things have gone wrong for individual teams, but... Overall, it's been a smooth race. Um, haven't had some big issues or anything like that. So I feel like I feel like it's uh, it's really good. Yeah, this has been, I think, one of the le this has to be one of the the least eventful, and I mean that like in a good way, like least eventful in terms of like there hasn't been a lot of code eighties. Uh, Sebrings, I think I've ever seen. Um, I'm quite used to these being uh, rear wing devouring uh, chaotic events, but not been. Uh, Alex Skinner doing quite well, actually, being an emergency sub. I'm not gonna lie, Alex Skinner pulling out all the super sub abilities he's got in hand. And uh, he's faster than some of the other DPIs, uh, sort of right in the middle of the DPI pack. So doing a good job, Alex Skinner, I will say. That, to me, I think is... Whoops, as I say that, Commentator's Curse goes off at turn four. But, uh, yeah, I, to me, the biggest surprise has to be, I think, the quality of the driving in this race thus far. Yes, completely agree with you. Lee Davidson, yes, it's Lee Davidson. He's the guy who runs Epic. Very sorry. Uh, I know Alex has done, uh, also done a set of course of competizione for Lee Davidson and the Epic gang. I have. Oh my goodness. I, I, I'm gonna stop focusing on Alex because I think I complimented him and it's been scary ever since. <laughs> Me? No, uh, Skinner, the guy driving on screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Name complications. Yeah. When's the last time you ran a race at Sebring? Um. Never. Never? Huh. We have both never run a race at Sebring. Oh, no, that's not true. I ran the test race for cert. Oh, right! I right. ran the test race for cert, um, which was at Sebring. Yeah. Cert's tragic. Bad timing, I think. Oh well. That's yeah, okay. We'll save it with radicals and civics. <laughs> <laughs> so, funny thing about that, there was a moment where um, Cert was going to run 
GT3 and touring cars. Well, it would have been Civics. I, w I would have definitely ran a Civic. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't think the, the problem is the, the there's only two R Factor mods for touring cars, like modern touring cars. If you wanted TCRs, you had to pay, I think it's like $30 for the pack of TCRs. Is that DLC? No, it's a. A guy who does, like. It's a guy who basically just makes that and one other thing. But he, he basically wow. made a bunch of TCRs. He basically made a whole field of TCRs from scratch. But you never see them run because they're too expensive. I imagine. Um. Actually, yeah. I might have to find out. Which was it? R Factor 2 TCR. But yeah, I think there is a. Yeah, Hit him up. Is. Make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yep. Found it. Oh, it's. What? Is it free now? At his free mods, but not his, uh... There you go. So the TCR bundle... No, it's more like $15 for the TCR bundle. There you go. No, I wasn't lying. It is it is 28 euros for the TCR bundle. Oh, that would give you them an... No, it's $15 for R-Factor 2. It's $28 if you want it in both games. So yeah. It would have been $15 to get the TCR cars in CERT, which I don't think people were willing to pay to run CERT. We went, with free, we went with cars people probably had instead already. Uh, as we're saying this, Alex Moore from Hex Sim Racing, the 150 is, uh, I don't know if it was a disconnect or if they just decided to call it a day, but they are uh, behind the wall, so to speak. Fortunate to see another DNF added to the list, suggesting they won't get a re- Let's quickly check and see if there's any mention of it in the chat. I was just going to say, if you don't mind, I'm going to run upstairs really quick and grab a bowl of cereal, because I have not eaten yet, so... Oh, yeah, Five go minutes. for it. No worries. Jeez. Um, but here I am, yet again, alone. I'm sorry, I'm just reading up, seeing what is going on in the Discord, and of course, you can always message us on Twitter. I've unfortunately not been keeping the Instagram up to date because of university. Word for that as well. Um, so, I will just point this out. Uh, let's see. What the minute cast is saying. There was some brief rain in the area expected in the next few minutes. I don't know if it will affect the game. It certainly doesn't look cloudy in the game right now, does it? I think you can see the stars. So we're getting to the point where if there's going to be weather, it's going to happen in the next hour. We'll have to wait and see. All to play for, still. Here's a particular person who's looking to move further up the field. It's the gem car. We saw Bartels behind the wheel. Running about half a second, seven tenths a lap faster than the next car up the road. And bringing down that gap to the number 96, Michael Rosemeyer in the car right now. Caleb Rosemeyer? Michael Rosemeyer. I feel it's Michael. Um, yeah, there are no stars in the sky, so yeah, it must actually be getting cloudy. No, oh, nope, there's the stars. I lied. Sorry to have misled all of you in the stream. Oh, 150 had a full crash to desktop, so I imagine they'll be back, but that has to hurt. 
I'll definitely put them out of position if they come back. We'll see. Um, I know they were running quite a bit of a ways down. I guess it's at those sort of moments becomes a question of like, how much do you care to finish? Oh, it's rough. I've been there. Um, yes, there's no big... Yeah, there's some rain coming. For sure. At least the radar is suggesting. We'll just see in Florida, but we'll see how and when it affects us. Should be in the next, as I said, hour if we're going to get rain. If we don't get it in the next hour, we probably won't. That would be my guess. I'm sure most of the teams have set up their cars for dry weather running because it doesn't really seem like there would be a long period of rain to justify the wet weather. Down to within five seconds now is Bartels of the number 96. And when you see that gap coming down, it just pushes you, man. It, it uh, helps you so much to uh, get in good, consistent laps when you see that lap coming, that gap coming down. But it's a dangerous game, though, of course, in turn, because you need to make sure you aren't overdriving the car, wrecking the tires, or missing your braking points and losing time. 5.2 the gap now. You head through the tower corner. You know what we'll do? You know what I'll do, chat? You can tell I've been watching Twitch and Stay Donuts. I'm calling you chat now. Um, but we will, um... When we get to the line, I'll do a commentated lap. Because I may not have run a league race at Seabring, but I've definitely done a lot of laps at Seabring. Um, I remember back when I first got R Factor 2, and there was a very good Seabring mod. At least it was for circa 2014 R Factor 2. I don't like that. Mod was taken down many moons ago. But, uh,. Here we be. Hello. Hello. I'm back. Now with coffee and cereal. Ooh, cereal. So let's do this onboard lap with Felix Nurberger from Bottling Motorsport because uh, they've had a quiet race and they deserve it. So, here we go. You gotta try and get through turn one as fast as you can without running wide. And you will see a lot of people running wide here. Now into turn two, three, and four. This part of the track, very important because you're coming onto the run for Big Bend. If you mess up that sector, you'll set yourself up to be passed heading into the hairpin. So there we go, out of Big Bend, underneath the Mobile One Bridge. Well, I would say look for the signboards, but they've been blown through maybe one too many times and they aren't there to help you. So you gotta just remember where to break. Out of hairpin now, through the Fangio curves, turn 8 and 9, flat out in all the cars we have here today. Up to Cunningham, a deceptive corner. Really separates the men from the boys, and there's a few lines to get through it. That's a pretty good line from Nurberger. Out of Collier there, up towards Tower, probably one of the hardest corners of the track. I think Tom said it was his least favorite. You can gain a lot of time in Tower if you get the line right, it can be quite a fast corner. Once again, I think Nurberger's got it pretty much nailed down. Through turn 12, or sorry, through Bishop, into turn 15 and 16. This is Le Mans here. Another one of the most important corners on the track because you want to get a good run down the Almond Straight. Leading after one of the other, probably the second best passing opportunity on the track. And this is where the cars will reach the highest speed they will reach here today, 281 for Felix Nurberger this time around. Now this is through Sunset Bend, one of the most famous corners on the track. An incredibly bumpy, oh my goodness, that Ferrari tightening up on him on the exit. Yeah, Sunset Bend. A few different ways to get through that corner, but the bumps can catch you up for sure. And that is a lap around the Green International. Welcome back. What cereal are you eating? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Respectable choice, respectable choice. I don't think I've had cereal in like three years, I'm not gonna lie. But I remember Cinnamon Toast Crunch being good. I remember when I was younger, 
like way younger. Like I must have been like seven, six years old. My cousin introduced the idea of putting sugar on cornflakes, and that was a dangerous discovery. That was like, uh, that was drugs for a, a young grade one me. Yeah. Um, actually, something about three years difference between eating foods. Mm -hmm. We went to the cake last night. Yeah. And I was sitting there and I'm like, looking at these steaks, I'm like, when's the last time that I had a steak? <laughs> hmm. It was three years ago. Wow. When my dad made it. So like... <laughs> And you know what? That was the first time having steak in a long time, and it was good. Mm. It was, like, really good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I never had the same love for steak, I think, other people do. I don't know. Been well, there. I love everything. It's just that I was just... One moment. Oh, go ahead. Um, I will say to the comments, first of all, here you go. I'm putting it on board a Porsche for you because I didn't see that comment when I was looking for a car to do a lap with. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll rest on this Porsche for a few moments. Um, yes. Uh, and defending up through Big Bend, yeah. It's, there's so much space there, and it leads right into the hairpin, so it's it's one of the easiest places to get an overtake done. You really got to be careful on your exit from turn 5 to not let someone get close enough that they can get it done easily. At least that you can force them to the outside of the air hairpin. And yes, uh, Cunningham is turn 10. That is at least what the track map I have tells me. I have no reason to doubt it. Not that I've been to Sebring, but that's what I've been told. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's where we be. An argument can be made that T10 is the apex. The exit is Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have had that argument with somebody. That seems, like, so highly specific. I don't know, man. <laughs> Not for Bisk's taste. Oh, no, we missed the pass. When did that happen? I screwed up. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, but the gem Ferrari has gotten around the TGM BMW. The car that was leading about two hours ago. They're now down to third. Uh, wow. Well, Bartels has to now look 48 seconds up the road. Maybe steal a win for gem here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. We're not even halfway through the race. I know. He's an H. Christ. Woo! Ten Lauer getting a little bit of a drift on. I'm trying to catch up to his... I think Ten Lauer and Kevin Vipers were teammates at one point, weren't they? Uh, yes. As was I. Going back. The gang getting back together. Right now, that 777 Corvette... Fast enough it should be leading, but uh, the cruel fates at Sebring have uh, elected for that not to happen as Lauer completely misses Sunset there. I feel like the Sebring 12 hours is not usually this dark for this long, my understanding. Woo. But I guess they're straight up just following British... Time, so that's why it's started this late. It is, uh, what, 7 o'clock around at night in the UK? Right yeah. Here? Meanwhile, on this side of the pond, in the same time zone as Florida, it is still very bright out. Still very much daytime. I say bright, it's... I don't know about you, but it's cloudy and gray where I'm at. I don't know. I've been in my basement for like <laughs> ever. I haven't yeah. even looked out the window yet today. There. The modern man trapped inside his home. Gonna refresh the overnight. Ooh, let's see VPI sneak by. 
There we go. Yeah, that uh, epic race in DPI has been in good hands since Alex got into it. He's moved that car back up to sixth. Doing a pretty good recovery drive for the team. Battle developing on the outside of the top, well, not outside, just on the edges of the top 10 in the LMP2. Now it's between Peter Hutchings and Johan Van Doren. Valet car trying to hold on to seventh. And just see just behind them the RLR car behind. They're heading towards Big Bend. Woo! He got on the grass at Big Bend there. That is not going to help him. He's going to lose a lot of time doing that. Put it bluntly. See the hotel back there. That would be a very cool hotel to stay at during the race weekend. Imagine it's quite expensive. <laughs> okay. Turn 10, Cunningham there. Collier and Toon 12 in the tower. Now we're onto the Flying Fortress straight. That was what I was missing. Flying Fortress straight, and then Bishop is the kink in it. There you go. Yes. Sorry about me leaving. I actually went to go and turn on the Xbox because I have a desk set up and then like I can look over to my left of the desk set up. Yep. And then there's just a 65 inch 4K TV. Because <laughs> like movie watching in the basement. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to hop onto YouTube on there and then pop up the stream. Ooh, that's so that's hard. Oh my goodness, watch that. Our, the, uh, Oh, into the pits. There you go. So that will end that battle. Darn. Hutchings. Way. There's another battle going on, though. Kevin Vickers trying to hold off a charging Iris 777. Number 59. Here's the 777 here. Aston Martin versus Corvette. You hear the growl of that sea. Whoa, he just lets him go. Does literally doesn't even try. I guess that's what happens when you used to be old teammates. You just get out of the way. Alright. We have been denied a battle yet again. Why does the fates mock us? Let me sit again. Allison back in the number 38 on P2 car. Now, sharing that with... Oh, it's just Sophie Jones and Emily Callison splitting that car. Okay. It's the all-girl squad in the number 38 running 7th right now. Pretty much right in the middle of the pack, pretty respectable in this really tight uh, LMP2 field. Especially given how much experience some of these LMP2 teams have with the car. I always say that's the hardest thing about getting into the Orca is the uh, experience. And I believe I was told that, I think, uh, I don't know if it's Callison or Sophie Jones, who, this is their first season running R Factor 2. Actually, no, you know what? I'm confusing. That's Rose. Wow. Good job, me. Just confusing all the women's backstories into one. Um, is this a it. bad time to mention that we're up to three noun votes? <laughs> I get it. I get it. We don't have, uh, Matt's... Canadian-ness here to carry us. But we do have two Canadians in the booth. Together we should have been enough to compensate. I guess people don't feel it. Oh well. We tried. Yeah, we tried. 19 likes, 3 down votes. So. We try, we aim to please, but we do not always succeed. Well, I'm going to upvote it, so now it's 20 likes. <laughs> we'll overpower the dislikers.
Okay, so let's take a look at some random people. Um, let's take a look at the 66 Team Iris car. Uh, let's go on board. Um, coming through phone. tower. Um, a little bit loose, but seems to get through it quite cleanly. Um, coming up to actually my favorite section into the third sector. Um, brakes down to third. Hard right, then to the left, then back to the right for Lamar. Back onto the front stretch, running a little bit wide, touching the grass on the exit of Lamar, but all is well. So, uh, it's Lamar and Valkar just desperately wants to go outside onto the grass on exit, and you're just like desperately trying to tell it not to. Sunset, always a hard corner. Yep. And down low. Nice and clean. Can't be me. <laughs> They're running outside of the scoreboard. This is probably not where the 66 would like to be, especially given their uh, teammates in the 77 are up to first right now. Noteworthy that the 77's had more pit stops than almost any of them. Well, has had more pit stops than any car in the top five. Two more. So, um... Could be a mix of things, but it's interesting to note that they've been in the down pit road more times than anyone else in the top five, and they're still leading. That's just how much pace that car has. Mm -hmm. Biggest mover, though. Wow, the 87's done well to get up six positions since the race started. Uh, Triple Nine has also done pretty well. They started quite down the order in DPI, and they're probably running third, so pretty good uh, recovery from Rookie Monsters to get a car into third there. I imagine the triple six crew is probably asking uh, what could have been, but, uh, yeah. Iris feels like a team almost everyone has a connection to. <laughs> Actually, um, what, uh, what team is it that... I've I, I have some beef with the team actually. Ooh, beef. Um, Le Buff. Let's Shot. see. Are they running? Are they, it's a GT car team. Um, let's see if they're if they're running here today. Um. Oh, geez, it's a Paul Street Boys Porsche. Oh, geez, there was an accident behind with it too. Which one a, was that? Is that at Sunset? Yeah, it was Vince Boros in the 753. I think he got collected by the Hex. Yeah. Let's take a... Let's take a gander. Not seven minutes. <laughs> oh. Go to eight in ten seconds. Five, four, yep, that's three, the, um, two, one. Gold 80 in Porsche. Okay, so I found it. Um, we're going to take a look. Uh, spun, just lost it. Hit a bump and just could, tried to catch it and just uh, bumped into the inside wall. It looks like. But did he get hit, though? That's the question. No, it's not looking like it. He's trying to get out of there, but cars keep... Yes, he is hit by the uh, number 170 Aston Martin. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gets into the not corner. in line with the street. Yeah, just a bit of shape. Didn't really hit anything immediately. There was a little tap there at the end. Then he's stuck. Tries to back out of it. Oh man, this is so dangerous. Yeah, and he just gets ran into the back. Alright, that's the 7. Which GTL Empire was that? It's the 170. Uh, the, is it the 170? No. Oh. oh, as we have Alex Moore retiring. You probably saw that way earlier. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's the Al Alessandro Peducci. Um... Yeah. Um, with the 170 hex. Damn, 
damage. It doesn't look like... It doesn't look like it. I wonder... So that actually isn't what caused the Code 80, though. That's what I was wondering, because they were right in front of the pit, so if that was going to cause the Code 80, you would think, um... No, because the Porsche went round. Yeah. The Porsche went round again. Do you think that... But the Porsche's in the pits now, so they wouldn't be under Code 80 still if that was... That. I wonder who... ...thing a Code 80 for them. Hm. cycle through the field to see who's carrying damage. The leading Iris is going to take the time to get a pit stop in, as will the 666 Rookie Monster car. No idea. Who else was in the Um, We have the 445 coming into the pits now. Um, It's not... The 360 did get very close to that 170. Mm -hmm. um, the 360, number 30, uh, that's Keith... Uh, so, um, the, uh, that person, no, who, could it just be the 173, could it, could it be the 170 Hex Sim Racing, but he doesn't seem, I'm going to be honest, does not seem to have he is coming into the pits. We'll see. Mm -hmm. It wasn't him, though, because the Code 80 would have ended. Well, yeah. We are going green in five oh. seconds. It was then. the Porsche. Huh. Three, two, it was the 173. One. We are green. Go. There you go, folks. That will put us up for a good battle now between Peter Hutchings and Emily Callison. Hutchings going very wide into the hairpin. Probably cold brakes on that car caught him out. A prime GP car trying to get back to probably where it should be on pace. An RLR Abruzzi car carrying some damage on the rear left. I don't know. Does R... Oh, whoa. Doesn't quite hit the hairpin. So with R Factor 2 and the damage, when you have aero damage on one side of the car, does it make the car not... Does it actually, like, have proper directional effect on yes. the aerodynamics? Okay. I think so. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that in ACC before, but I haven't in R-Factor. Usually when I hit something in R-Factor 2, it's, uh, I lose something really important. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm not exactly sure how, though, because, like, you can't have one side of the car going faster than the other. Yeah, because see, in AC, ACC, if you damage one side of the car, you might be able to turn right fine, but if you try to turn left, the car will just, like, understeer. I can catch yeah. anything. I think I think that does happen, but they they interpret it more as suspension rather than arrow. Yeah. Um, in R Factor Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had that for oof. Prime GP Aston way off. Oh my goodness. Ha! That's Nearly took out their be... LMP two teammate. Sketchy hours here. Yeah. Oh, Yikes! <laughs> I just saw, I just saw it again on the stream. I'm like, oh my goodness, that was spooky. Allison deep on the brakes. No. Cunningham. Nothing can be done there. Here we come up the tower. Not really a good braking zone, and she's a bit too far back. Oh, but she's so much stronger into the entry of that corner. And the 52 is. I believe that the light blue damage can actually be aerodynamic, and that can be a direction, whereas the dark blue damage is suspension. Okay, that's interesting. 
Um, here we go. Through Le Mans. Into the back straight. A bit too far back to make it work at sunset. And actually here, just hitting the top of the rev range there in the draft. We sunset now. I actually can't hear anything. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, but like, that's it. Oh, that's curious. I have no game audio at all. Huh. There we go, that's the Iris Corvette, number 70, uh, 777, sorry. Ooh, Callison looked for it, maybe thought about it in turn three, backs out. We're gonna have a Wall Street Boys Porsche through turn five onto Big Bend. That holds up Peter Hutchings just a little bit. Allison now in the draft. She's thinking about it, looking into the hairpin. Hard on the brakes. Gets the job done just like that. As easy as you like, and she's through at a sixth. Well, might have to defend, though. Still has the RLR Brutzi car straight on her tail. Into Cunningham. Nothing to be done there. This battle's still on. But I imagine she will eventually pull away, though, if she can get safe of Hutchings. Her tower. Gap's already going up almost towards a second. She's flying right now. Go into Gendabine. Up into Le Mans. On the Ullman straight. And yeah, Callison gets a good run out of that corner. She pulls herself safe with the RLR Abruzzi LMP2 car. Good work from the Prime GP driver. <laughs> Debate going on on what the damage... Uh, means in our factor two now because of what we said what we're learning is that nobody truly knows i think that i think that the different shades mean different uh severities of damage and then just yeah where it shows is where the damage is mm -hmm. It's a mod that came out, an overlay mod for a set of course that comes with the Tiana that actually gives you a breakdown on the damage to specific parts on the car. It'd be cool if our factor did that. Instead of giving you a color, like it actually gave you like maybe even just a gradient of blue instead of just light blue or dark blue. You kind of understood yeah. the implications of what happened. Because the thing is, you don't really... The visual damage doesn't convey enough information in this game like it did in our factor 1 even. Yeah. So if I just, like, saw that I was missing up, you could, like, visually see the damage, that'd be one thing, and then you could understand, like, losing parts meant you'd lose so much performance, but... In this Actually, game, it's just crumply. Speaking of weird damage things, um... <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Tom Dillon strong possibility hmm. strong possibility hmm. but yeah speaking of weird damage things even with damage turned completely off in a set of Corsa if you hit something hard enough then your wheel will still fall off Fun. Yeah, and instead of course the suspension will fail after a certain amount of pressures put through it no matter what the settings are. Which is so I don't know. Can sometimes lead to very comedic looking. I'm not even sure. <laughs> here's an interesting uh development. 
It ain't for points, it ain't for real positions, but right now, Emily Callison is faster than the DPI in front of her, and she's catching. Ooh. Oh, second to lap. Absolute scenes. Running 148s. Tom Parton is running 149s, high 149s. Oh, in Sector 1. Briefly, that could be anything. Sector 1 seems to be a constant force of penalty. Alright, not penalties, yes. No flags. But yeah, that uh, Hex Sim Racing DPI in front of her, that is for position. For an overall position, doesn't pay any more points, but hey, bragging rights. Racing under the stars at Seabrook. Please follow us at rf 2 visc on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Go for it. Oof. See how much more confident she is through these corners than the Hex car. And the Hex is just going to get a, enough of a gap in these straights that begin pulling away. Whoa! What? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What happened? <laughs> um... Got a DPI without a rear wing. Yeah. Should we change? Uh, was that the, uh... And then it has spun. Um... He didn't have his rear wing for a while before that, though. Oh, okay, so he lost it out of um, turn four. He lost it out of turn four. Um, here, uh, why don't you take a why don't you take a look at my um, at my Discord stream because you see already. Prime GPS and Martin off the road. Doesn't affect him though. Bruno Sousa Ferreira is fine. Gets on the curb and just completely barrels to the wall on exit. I don't know if he like killed the engine and had to restart the car there. Tries to get going again. Yeah, car died. And he just loses it again on his own. Take you on board for a second with that. What an eventful uh, first sector, we'll put it that way. Turn one. I wonder what happened to the uh, Prime GP Aston Martin. He comes out of turn five. Yeah, and just gets a little bit of grass on the exit and completely sends that car to the wall. I have your stream up, by the way, if you were to show me something. Losing it again. No rear wing. Sometimes you just get missed. I've been there before. What's going on for the stewards? Um. Oops. <laughs> Whoa! Lucas Lichten going off. That was uh, Cunningham, was it? Even the, the perils of in the, being in the lead. 
even, even dangerous for a victim, as I uh, have a bit of a increase. As I have an RF2 crash. Oh. Oh, jeez! Lichten in all sorts of trouble there. Another time to have a great screen freeze. Thank you, R Factor. Much appreciated. Very cool. Looks like he's all right, but man. We're almost a lap ahead of the Mugen. Gotta rein things in there, champ. All Street Boys car and the you can see the speed difference between a GTLM and a DPI. And that's the GRG 407. That's a car we've not spoken about too much. Cash on all in that car. It's four laps behind Mate Varga in the 66. Hall is. Boy, you can see that Prime GP Aston on exit there coming out. Force Hall and Lichten. Pick to the inside on turn three. Uh, where the epic went off. And here's somebody who's on the charge. Emily Callison. Looking forward now. Towards the valet. Tun Sunveld trying to get this Prime GP number 38 back into the top five, and what's been a pretty storming stint from Callison. Oof. Using all of the curbs through three, four, and five, getting up the exit. Now looking at Big Bend. See the Paul Street Boy. That's not a Paul Street Boy car, that's a Ferrari. That must be the GM Ferrari, I believe. Callison shooting through the ghost. No, that is the leading. I think that's the 97, the leading GTLM car. Very sorry. Indeed. Anyways, we are now looking towards Cunningham. The gap now within two seconds towards Sunnevald. You gotta imagine they put a fresh pair of boots on Callison's car for this stint because she is steaming through the midfield right now in uh, LMP2. Unfortunately, it'll be a lap to the next car, the number 87, but uh, I have to imagine if she keeps this pace up and uh, something dramatic falls one of the top three cars, a podium might even still be on the hands for the uh, 67, sorry, 38 crew. And it was here we go, through Le Mans, onto the back straight. Lining up the gears. Gives a flash to Sunneveld. <laughs> I'm going to get into the head. Of the valet driver going to sunset. Takes it quite tight up against the wall. Oh, thought she was going for the pits there. She's got a little bit of uh, over rotation on exit. Down the front straight. One of the most illuminated pairs of the track, probably at this point. And there you go. There's the Paul Street Boys Porsche. One of the two of them going to hold up. Son of a bit, but might hold up Callison even more. So they're heading to turn three. No! Son of a goes wide! Oh no, the Paul Street Boy Porsche comes up. I guess didn't see Callison there. Knocks her off the track. Can't imagine she's happy about that. What happened to the... Do the Porsche spin after that? Can um, my scroll wheel work? <laughs> um... Not sure. No. Got together, okay. It's good for them. But uh, now that car's going to be carrying some damage, so we'll see how it affects Callison's speed. Cunningham, yet again. What lap are these people even on? I do wonder. What does it say? Lap people are on. Laps? Oh, we're about 191 laps into this race. There you go, folks. So leading up to a, probably the first good passing opportunity she's going to get on Sunneveld if she can get Le Mans correct. She does! Absolutely storming drive! She's going to get Sunneveld before they even get to the corner here. Sunneveld already on the outside looking at Sunset. You can see the lights from Callison on the inside. Her nose just ahead. 
Gonna try and maybe take a wider line, get a better exit, perhaps, Sunneveld. Oh boy, he might have the overlap for it. Uh, no, it looks like Allison's just ahead. And job done! Excellent move by the number 38, taking advantage of a mistake from the number 11. And you got a match. She's looking down the road now. The lap to the next car. Anything could happen, though. Still got half the race to go. And on that note, you know what that means, folks? It means we're going to have to switch over the stream. Let me just get this for all of you. This is part two of the stream for you. Um, feel free to start heading on over there. I will mention this in general as well. Hey, just saying, you're linking to um, you're linking to part one in the description of part one. Yeah, um, there's a... Yeah, I, I screwed up in, when I did something. I'll fix that before I head over. Um... Just... Letting you know. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Um... If YouTube works with me. We'll get there, folks. One giant work in progress. Oh, now I can see the dislikes. That's odd. There we go. Fix that. Awesome. Should be good to go. All right, folks. Uh, so head on over to that one. I'm gonna give you live pictures there as soon as I can get my computer over there. You can see it is not... Oh, you know why it's not happy? I'm, like, hovering over our factor a bit. And it super doesn't like that. Um, yeah. Anyways, yes. I will. Closing this stream off, and then we'll head over to part two. We'll head on over. We'll see you there. <laughs> 